<laughs> so you'll get a knock on your door one day, and it'll be someone being like, oh, man, I just flew in from Milwaukee. Are you, you know, uh, Jim Savage? And they're like, yeah. Uh, you're I, my administrator. What do you want? Like you're it. my administrator. And you're like, oh, for your windows. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, man, it's so great to finally meet you. It's like great. jury duty where you just get given, yeah, like, you like, are now the administrator. You're like, oh, fuck. I gotta go find my administrator. You gotta go to that person's house and click OK on a bunch of things. <laughs> like, yeah, because, there you go. Yeah. Do you just <laughs> click here? Okay. Oh, thanks, man. All right. Can you give me right. a, a, a administrator back, and then you're like, I don't know if I should do that, man. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's a lot. I'll of tell power you what. If you up. if you need administrator privileges, you just come and get me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Six yeah. hour plane flight, man. <laughs> it yeah, will well, be better. How often? How often do you really need to be an yeah. administrator? Well, after seeing uh, after seeing surviving edge weapons, I wouldn't trust anybody from Milwaukee coming to my front door. I'd have to shoot exactly. them because you know they might they might have like a, a knife or a razor on their, a their cap or something. Hey, you you in there? You administrator? <laughs> I like the idea that <laughs> I don't the know. Computer's like, don't worry, your administrator is within your house, and you're like, I live alone, yeah. and they're like, yeah. and so the computer just smiles at you. <laughs> I ain't your administrator. Go away. It's oh like that God, old the front door's pasta. open. Someone's in the house. <laughs> The Better go to sleep. In the guy bursts in to rob now. you. The computer's like, that's your administrator. <laughs> <laughs> yes. De Father. Speaking of we uh, weird, bad horror, did you hear that Mike Flanagan is Hi, uh, is the oh. uh, executive producer yeah. of uh, uh, Suckmanized new film? Yeah. That's freaking weird, isn't Shelby it? Shelby Oaks. I have a, it's got to be like, a, not like really... No, he's I mean, he's, uh, <laughs> no, it's he's sad. He it, believes like, in the um, old stuck man. He wants him to. He's seen his journey, and he wants him to get. He was paid to say that. Not really, though. Rags, he paid yeah. to say that. I mean, to, let's put it this way: executive producers, like all, all the major studio heads at Bethesda, were executive producers on the Fallout show. Steven Spielberg was executive producer for the Halo show, so I don't really think that they put that much. Well, well he's lost his touch. It. The most it important detail would be that uh, he's you would have signed on to this long after Shelby Oaks was finished in production. As far yeah. As well. So you're not going to see any of Mike Flanagan's work in there, but he wants to oh, no, try the and support opposite. the stuck man, you know, and I think that's nice. I think Stuckman it's really just like a... Like joined him in the editing room to like give notes and stuff like that. So Maybe. he's somewhat involved at least. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that it's kind of basically gives the project it's basically throwing your hat into the you know the ring and giving the project some legitimacy for distribution i think that's pretty much what a lot of these ones like are quentin tarantino with hostile yeah kind of like that yeah well where'd we go i'm we trying to get us all on we're in the void it. now oh no <laughs> the thing is i have to where change it all every time Everything's... oh it's okay we're fine no. Uh, you can see the buttons beneath, though. No, I know. I gotta make it. It's, it's, it, it everything's horrible when it's like that. <laughs> Dude, this is ready for ten people, but we're at eight, which is good enough, I suppose. Looks a little start, spacious, yeah. but that's start. all right. I can't. It would be sinful of me to allow Rags Avatar to shift off half through the uh, through the thing. Rags, show the people what that's you right. can do. Hey, did you know that if you have a GIF as your Discord oh icon, whenever yeah, yeah you whenever speak. you've uh, whenever you chat, whenever you make noise, the the GIF plays. So look you at can that. do some look fun at stuff. Wow, look at him go! Great. Look at me, everyone. I have to remember. I'm a chatty Kathy. You know what's annoying? I don't know say. if this is probably for the best or not, but like I have to be clicked into Discord for that to work. You know, if I'm clicked off, it, it won't work. Annoying. Yeah, it's a shame. Oh, that's I a wish shame. there was a setting you could change yeah. to where it would just always play it, because, you know, it looks really neat. Really neat and cool. You showed that years ago. No, this is a brand new one, you fool. This is this is definitely I mean, very new. Hey, yeah, it's new to me. It was <laughs> really cool, though. Don't remember what the old animated rags looked like? Gosh. Might have meant just the concept, but, you know, it's... Very, very neat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... We're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. We're fixing all this. Uh, gonna have to get this ready for me. For watching um, Vidya, which we're gonna be doing today. It's gonna be great. No. Oh boy. Oh. Well, I can't right. wait. Be here. Ten people. Yep, that's right. Not gonna lie, I don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like videos. I mean, none days. No, I don't like videos. I swore them off for Lint. Oh. Damn. Well. So what are we gonna do now?
I guess well, it's we after could, like, Easter, so you should be good. God will be displeased with me. You could talk about something if you want. He already yeah. is, let's be frank. <laughs> what were you Nothing's up to? Changed. That would be funny, the uh, the conversation with him, and he's just like... like There was just a couple of things I didn't like. Like when you swore off uh, you, watching YouTube videos, what was that about? God would be very invested. Oh, I thought you meant like when God... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. God, you, 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 God's like, I need to speak with you, and you're like, oh god, he's gonna fucking, he's gonna say a bunch of shit about all these, and he's just like, nah, it's like, why did you stop watching YouTube videos? And then you explain to I him. I don't know what God would say that kind of thing. He'd probably be like, well, don't you want to know like the meaning of life? Don't you want to know if you, like, if you, if you, like, if you pooped and all of your poop was turned into bricks, and how long would the bricks? Span if they were stacked in a wall six feet high, you know. Are they like, stuff wait, like are they that. poop bricks or are they converted like yeah. material? Yeah, like if if all of the poop that you'd ever pooped was turned into bricks, bricks. How of long or... would the wall be made of those bricks? If that, I don't think if you need was... God to help you with that, I think you can probably you know, regular that people who science. can figure that out. Yeah, yeah. It, very important though. Anyone who can figure made... that out is not a regular person. Just so we're clear. <laughs> are the bricks made it's totally of poop regular. or does? Does God transmog them That's into fine. normal bricks? Like it's, or is it like actual poop bricks? Because I think my answer would be different. Does it matter? Well, I think, yes. I, I think if, so. if I the poop like... was turned into brick bricks, then that's pointless that they were poo in the first place. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, we're just talking I, about bricks. Yeah, I know, but it, it is God we're dealing with here. But I they're mean, of equivalent more. size. There is brick sized poops. So I don't think it matters. Yeah, I guess that's fair. If you're pooping yeah, brick-sized brick poops. poops, like... If you're pooping well, brick-sized, it's not just the size, it's the corners. Yeah, the co yeah, like shop. The yeah. corners really get you. Well, are bricks a universe size or no? Oh. I'm sure they're not. There's probably a standard size for bricks. There's probably several standard sizes. Maybe Ameri we'll brick go with size. standard American brick size, whatever that Maybe is. Maybe there's very tiny bricks. We've all had poops like that. Yeah. Tiny brick poops. Tiny brick mm -hmm. poops. Anyway, speaking of st speaking of endless shit, smaller. <laughs> it's funny you say that, Rags, because when I was uh, getting the thumbnail ready, do you know what I spotted that I didn't actually know? Um, the poster slash tagline for Fallout Show. Do you know what it is? Um, this show is very good. <laughs> you know, you're in you're in the realm. Like there's a, it's funny. It's um, the quote. An well, adventure oh. unlike any other. It's the tagline is the world deserves a better ending. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my goodness! <laughs> they knew. <laughs> they, they knew. Oh. Damn it! Because I agree, it did deserve a better ending. Speaking of which, I hope uh, everyone here we got a, a a bunch of wonderful people that actually helped make the Fallout video that was released on my channel a, a, a week ago in chat if you haven't seen it wasn't fond of the fallout show not fond we did talk about it on the efab before mm. that as well a little bit i mean indigo gaming is having a, a series of strikes <laughs> hopefully he'll issues. pop back at some point but yes uh we 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 are here today to talk a bit more about it i don't know if uh if anyone here has come to love it since i last spoke to them if you have you know raise your hand that's okay we welcome everyone here no, all right, just making sure, you know. Just, uh, no, I really yeah. love it now after you know after a week, yeah. Um, now totally with, changed my mind. With all the the different opinion, the Discord overlay is Tism. No, it's not. It's back to normal. Fine. What's wrong with the Discord overlay? Beautiful. It's fine. Look, yeah. look at it go. Uh, it looks the totally acceptable. The, the the as with everything that is controversial as an opinion, you get some really weird responses, and um, I've been like. Like, like, kind of shocked, but simultaneously, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out whether or not it was any worse than the Snyder Cut. That still, like, has the throne for the most embarrassing, like, response to my video. I don't think the Fallout people were ever going to be able to compete with someone telling me that I was killing people by making the video, you know? Like, that's... <laughs> that's peak. The high bar. Um, um, but... High bar, peak fire. There were comments floating around that were getting uh, pushed up here and there on different forums, including the old subreddit, and, um... Uh, one that I found curious was uh, saying it, it seems like now Muller has crossed into the into the era of liking or disliking a particular thing, therefore means all individual parts have to be either good or bad, depending on uh, how he feels about it. Because as bad writing in this series is minimal and wouldn't even warrant a five-minute video, 
Uh, many of his complaints are contradictory and are used to paint the series in a bad light. Now, before we get to uh, some of the responses, because I thought it would be an interesting way to start up, let people pour, pour in before we do any videos. Um, I thought that I did pay compliments to this show. I didn't say all of it was bad. I said that I thought the um, the sets were pretty neat. The costumes were, for, for the most part, pretty good. Um, the acting, yeah. I felt that Walton Goggins carried hard. And I feel like everyone puts that in their videos to differing degrees of uh, to differing degrees of how much do you think he carried. Like I would give him like ninety five percent of the show, like in terms of people yeah. enjoying it. But also, the reaction um, to this show is totally different without him. Yeah, and um, I would I would give that somewhat to Ella Pinnell as well. I feel like her bubbly nature has helped people really feel enjoyment with it. Instead of like, there's many ways she could have done that character, and I think people like the way that she did it. But I was already thrown, because I was like, I didn't say everything and it was bad. I just, it was mainly the yeah. writing. Um, but there was even, yeah. I admitted that some of the things they were trying to do was were difficult. And that there were some things that kind of worked. I even, um, I think the last person I watched it with was Rags. No, Fringy. Yeah. He, he was one of you guys. <laughs> but um, one of us. There, were, there were some scenes that when we finished them, I was like, yeah, that one's one of the good ones. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like the, yeah. you, you pointed that out in the video as well, like some individual scenes when, uh, like the the scene with Lucy and Hank in the in the first episode. Yeah, so like there's, that 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 was a good scene. there's moments that work, there's scenes that work, and it's like a shame because you know it'd be nice if we had a whole show of it, but we did not. So, um, yeah. I find it an ironic comment, right? That it's like Maul is in the year of he hates the things, so he hates all the pieces, and it's like you just did that to my video. You just said that all the pieces were bad because you didn't like the video overall. It's just like, come on, we gotta have some self-awareness when we do this sort of thing. No, um, no, no. But I wanted to share some of the interesting defenses, and I was gonna uh, make a bit of a broad point about the nature of figuring out Fallout. Now, uh, Goga knows this very well. I think everyone here has a, a bit of knowledge on this through either editing or speaking to me, but... Uh, I think Capital Opinion is definitely because we back and forth about this fucking ages. The, criticizing the Fallout show was incredibly hard because the people who like Fallout and the people who don't like it and the people who nothing it all disagree on what the fuck even happened in it. Um, who, <laughs> Always who, the mark of a good show. Who did what and oh, why yeah. isn't in stone. It's not clear. It's it's like there's a couple of things that people are disagreeing on. I've even read like you know the Fallout subreddit on loads of discussions. They all have different ideas on exactly what we were supposed to take from what happened. And the season two is going to clear it all up, by the way. Good luck no, with that. Course, yeah. <laughs> 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 totally will not make things worse. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, a lot of people who write shows thinks that when you get to the end of a season, it's like yeah. like, a, like a checkpoint in a video game and you can't go back and it's fine. It's good. All those enemies that are technically on the other side of that door, they don't exist anymore. Nope. So you can just carry on. Don't we loaded a new save. It. We're fine. Forward. Yeah. I'm sure they'll I'll solve forward. every problem by season seven. Oh, yes. Oh, course. yeah. So, uh, to give an example, who were the people that Moldova brought with her? Who were those people? There are two schools of thought. One is they are raiders she hired along the way, and the other is they are NCR members that she brought with her. And we'll Pretend like they're raiders for some well, reason. Well, so it's, this <laughs> is a moment of pick your poison because it's broken no matter what. But the problem is, whatever yeah. you spend time on criticizing, the response will be, you idiot, they weren't even X, they were Y. Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you idiot, they weren't even Y, they were X. I yeah. did hear a really funny excuse for that. It was, oh no, it was probably something like a story we didn't see. Like, Moldaver got captured by them and then eventually <laughs> said what? that, hey, I can tell you where this <laughs> vault is. Oh, Lord. And that's that how makes it even worse. What? I know, I was like, I was, I, was, I, was, I was like, dude, that doesn't make it better. <laughs> Not even a little. Yeah, so the fuck? that's like the tip of the iceberg for interpretation being wedged in as what what'll happen the the most common strategy i saw was like he didn't even get right that they were raiders not ncr members or vice versa because i criticized mm -hmm. them for both angles and um they'll say if he got that wrong then why would i continue the video he's gonna get everything wrong it's like you just decided <laughs> that was wrong <laughs> like it's, there's yeah. nothing i can do about that the, the show is not really clear on it and like it might be a mix of both or, also, you know, it's just like NCR people in Raider outfits for whatever reason, like it's... Uh, yeah. It seems like they would be NCR members, and there's arguments in favor of it, but the fact is, like, I saw a, an assessment on the Fallout server saying, like, no, they're definitely Raiders, because look at the uh, outfits they're wearing, it's like referencing Raiders, and look at their behavior. And I'm just like, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the fact that Lucy yeah, calls them that... Raiders, but I don't know. They, you know. Yes. They well, one up raids is a yeah. Raider. So it could have been anyone in the process of raiding, thereby yeah. making them a raider. 
Yeah, one you know, and, and the NCR weren't like all uncivilized brutes who take jet and like, you know, slaughter people for no fucking reason. So it doesn't really make sense for them all to be NCR. Yeah, why, why would she bring members of her organized and armed faction with her to this mission when she could go out to the wasteland and like, just like convince and or hire some random raiders with no loyalties or, or <laughs> just a barbaric savages to do this job for her alongside her? But also they take orders from her. Yeah, I've already seen two alternatives in chat, which I saw a lot of as well. I only chose the two main ones, but uh, that they're all fiends and that they're all a mix of NCR and raiders. So it's like what is a fiend? What is a cannibal? A drug addict. Yeah, oh, cannibal. Cannibal drug addict. Sure. Probably would have. They probably would have eaten people if they were cannibals. Well, they had some well, cake to eat. The show, they're cannibals. <laughs> like, hey, you know, dead, they were gonna eat the, the guy. I'll hearts, have you know, Hannibal, Hannibal ate people, but if he had a chance to have a donut, he'd, he'd do it. You know, like yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Why, <laughs> eat, why eat people when you can have cake? Yeah, they're not let them cake. cannibals. They can't eat other stuff. It's no, like if you go cannibal, you let them back. eat people. I, I didn't assume that they are only capable of eating people, but <laughs> I, I think that's 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 what a cannibal is. They can only only capable. Yeah. So only people. We also see later how they act in jail, and I don't really see that, that as NCR people, really. Like you know. Well, yeah, just... if they were in CR, then they would obviously say, we're in CR, the reason why we're here doing this is because of this specific personal close exactly. reason why we're doing mm -hmm. it, and we want you to know that this is why this is happening. We're not just going to randomly visit justice upon you in this way, and then, it's like, not ever explain to them why or anything like that. <laughs> Um, yeah. Like they would say, this well, is why, remember... because your your overseer somehow set off a nuclear device in our capital city, and everyone and in the vault would know. go, what the fuck? What is happening? <laughs> Do you remember what I think is one of the most notorious examples of someone getting revenge and not informing the person of why they are doing what they are doing to the person in recent memory? Um... <laughs> Anyone thinking about what I might be thinking about? Is this one? Oh, John Wilkes yep. Booth. <laughs> 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 yes, that bastard. Um, well, I mean, I was going to give a clue, and I was like, nah, that makes it too easy, but fuck it. I was just going to say it. Uh, golf Club? Oh, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, yeah. Phil Mickelson. The, uh, the slayer of the man who'd killed everyone in the world, you know, that, that scene, one of the things that baffled a lot of us the most was that she didn't want him to know why she was doing it. She didn't want to Which say, like, you killed my bizarre. fucking dad, you killed doctors, you <laughs> fucking idiot, you, you destroy, it would make so much sense for her to say, but no, she does not tell him any of that. And uh, it was baffling then, it's baffling now that Moldova didn't want to make clear, because that's another thing people talk about, is like, uh, obviously every action that takes place inside Vault 33 from the NCR side of things, quote-unquote, uh, is, is motivated by the fact that the nuke was dropped on Shady Sands. And it's just like, why didn't they want to tell anybody about that? Especially when these people are innocent, ignorant, and uh, arguably no less victims than the people of the NCR. It's, um... But she should know. Like, she should understand Absolutely. That a much greater degree than the average person in the wasteland. You know, so, that's actually what that guy was thinking when he was wiping his dick on the curtains. He's like, this is for Shady Sands. This is for Shady Sands. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't wipe my dick on my curtains. No, no. You, yeah, just, you only yeah, do that if you're, if you're, if you're uh, in hotels. Rags, virtue signaling again. Virtue signaling. <laughs> I'm just trying to get in, you know, good with some, uh, some of my peeps out there. So the, the the material and the fabric, it, it's like a plasticky kind of like that wouldn't work. God, this curtain rubbers. Part of uh, why I was describing it as a nightmare was the this video went through a whole bunch of changes and redrafts as it was being created. Like there would be sections that were complete, and then <laughs> it, you know it gets sent over to everybody. And uh, for example, Cap would be like, "But this part doesn't work anymore because if we believe this about this, and this part was here, and this woman was here, and knew this." Then the problem isn't X, it's Y. You'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I gotta go back and re record yep. and basically be like, however, if this, 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 <laughs> this, this, then the problem is actually this, just to make sure that's fucking clear. And that's what made the video go from, I think the initial idea was 40 minutes, then an hour, then an hour 20, yeah. then two hours, then 220. <laughs> um, the amount of clarifications that had to be made. To give you an example, right? So this person had a bunch of arguments for why the video had just fell apart. They were like, number one, Moldova 
Quote from Morlet. Moldava should have entered Vault 33 through its main door instead of infiltrating it by posing as Vault 32 dwellers. And the criticism of me is, I thought we complained about uh, frontal assaults in Disney Star Wars because Imperials don't think anyone would actually try it. Wow, that's Somehow. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> brilliant commentary. Uh, so how did they? What was their plan for getting into Vault Thirty Two? What? So, well, so this well, is the thing, well, right? Just to be clear entail. for anybody who isn't following, uh, they're referencing the um, what's it called? That base in Obi Wan Kenobi, wasn't it? Or, or was it somewhere else? What oh was... yeah, that's the that's the heavily the fortified fortress. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the Inquisitor triangle yeah in the ocean where they said like we don't need to put up our shields or they wouldn't put up their shields because nobody would be stupid enough to attack them mm -hmm. it's like wow that's yeah. logic <laughs> you know this, this resembles something we call logic i guess um but it was really interesting to see that sort of assessment of what i had said because i would never advise if i was on moldava's team i never would have advised a full frontal frontal assault of a vault that that's stupid it's like, what, what options do we have? And even if uh, we are going to go in through the front door, there's, there's approaches we can take that don't involve just going, brah, and shooting everybody or whatever. Um, that's what she did with 32. That's what we're told she did. She went up to the door, opened it, and came in looking yeah, for a but fight. Then, but the, the thing is that somebody would say, like, yeah, but there was no fight. So, like, I don't even realize that that was what she did. Yeah, they were strangling each other. It. Well, that's the thing. Uh, a lot of people haven't registered that that was her plan because it didn't work out that way. <laughs> yeah, which is kind of like the weird thing that happens sometimes when talking about stories. They're like, yeah, but that's not what happened. So therefore, all of the motivations that that character would have had based on the information that they had, like whatever their plan was, well, that's just like, it, it's almost like it evaporates, like it disappears into the ether as, as, as a point. Mm. Which is what, like, if she just went straight to 33, that's exactly what she was intending to do in 32. So I was like, what, you want to have two fights? Like, okay. And she learned her lesson like, from I'm, the first yeah. frontal assault, and then she it's was like, <laughs> subterfuge this time. Well, well that's the thing, it's not, a marriage. <laughs> it's, it's not even impossibility. It can work. It's not necessarily something I would recommend, but it's just funny to see this commenter saying, like, what a dumbass decision that didn't you didn't even a dumbass criticism you didn't even follow the show. And it's like, that's what she did. That is explicitly what she did with Vault 32. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you and angry at me for. <laughs> like I just I'm saying so what happened. So much he just knew that everyone would be dead in there, like pre going in for whatever reason. And, and uh yeah. Yeah, and, and just the, the criticism is easy. If you're going to do that with 32, just do it with 33. This is a, why would you assault two vaults uh, with huge mm -hmm. risk? Yeah. So um, then uh, they were like, in relation to the Wilzig stuff, uh, Moldava could have taken the raiders to pick up Wilzig on the way back from 33, but it's then faulted for leaving some of her forces behind. And in brackets, I'll note that Muller is still insisting that Vault 32 is near Philly despite being corrected multiple times or simply assuming she uh, should have done so and then faults the show for not doing this. I never actually say. Uh, I, I was curious to check. So I was like, why would I have said that when I don't know that for sure, that uh, Vault 33 is near Philly? All I do is describe what the show shows us, which it takes very little time to get from Vault 33 to Philly. That's it. Yeah, it takes like a day. Yep, and Today. relatively speaking, that's not so bad, considering you're going to the observatory anyway, which is much further away. So if you're going to walk mm -hmm. there, you may as well go on a detour to pick up the other hugely important component to Cold Fusion. Yeah. The other thing to add is that there's no way any of this plan makes any sense if she isn't in contact with Wilzig directly, or at least through someone else. So if she can make contact with him to make these plans, she can just meet him herself. Yeah, Wilzig knew to go to Ma Jun's um, shop. How did he know that? Mm -hmm. Must have been a message of some kind. And then if you can get that enough of that done, just meet him at the shop. The ghoul would have been exactly. fucked if uh, Moldaver and her team were waiting for uh, Wilzig in that, in that little shop. Unless the show just allows him to kill everybody, which is not actually <laughs> outside of the purview, to be honest. Um, they they could even possibly have met that at the, like, a closer location, depending on where he came from. Because uh, he meets up with Lucy like right outside the vault, basically, before he goes into into the city or the town. Considering he is more valuable than a number of people who could also have the codes, like you should go get him specifically. And if yeah. you need to use intermediaries to get someone else, like Hank isn't presumably the only one who has the codes. Wilzig is the only one with the cold fusion. So maybe don't risk your entire plan on one guy happening to make it 
halfway across the wasteland. You know? <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Um, then they go on to me being uh, pointing out Moldava. They've got it in quotes, loved Rose, as if the show is giving us a different interpretation that, in fact, she did not even like Rose. That was all just smokescreen. And uh, huh? the, I know. I don't even know what that's from. And then they say... Um, Muller is shocked that Moldava did nothing to save Hank's children. And it's like, Hank's children with Rose. Like, I don't even know why. <laughs> what are we doing here? And the, it's Rose's children. What? Well, so the, the point is that she wouldn't like those kids because they've got half their DNA belongs to a monster. Damn. Okay. I know, right? No, it's, it's like, <laughs> okay. Moldava specifically. I hope it's not dead. <laughs> Holy fuck. Never specifically notes that Lucy has many of Rose's positive qualities. Yeah. Yep, he still does. doesn't give a shit. Yep. So part of his seed. And uh, and then they bring up like he he faults her for keeping her Rose in ghoul status instead of Mercy killing her. These are all criticisms of the character's psychology, which is a very bad sign. Like no, it's about inconsistencies in characterization. You can't tell me. She cares for the well being of all of these people and then allows them to be potentially raped and murdered. And kept in mm -hmm. suffering ghoul status forever. No, that makes any sense. Sorry. Yeah, she loves her. She loves her. She loves all of them. I can't, I can't sure. even tell it's a, her at a this good point. guy. It's just like a <laughs> zombie. Um. So you got uh. He faults Hank for being a mere mi middle manager who has command codes for Vault Tech systems, despite acknowledging that this is the point of Vault Thirty One to create a race of super middle managers who will manage the human race. I guess the satire went over Muller's head here. Um. My okay. question was very straightforward. Hank is low level, even in that department of people, and he had the power to launch nukes. That seems unlikely. Yeah, that's like all that was pointed out. People would have their uh, have access to that uh, the broom closet where they keep all the yeah yeah. Launch keys. I would have thought it, it would be, be literally like a selection of maybe three or four people at most, and and you'd have to have all of them say go, you know, to launch a nuke. Mm -hmm. But no, he can just Several casually do it on his way back from Shady Side. He's like, could you just nuke that, by the way? He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Which we don't, like... <laughs> I don't, I don't, think, oh, yeah, I, man. I don't yeah. think this is in the oh, video, but it's just him. like, what, what's the process for that? Do they have, like, a little facility that can just launch nukes whatever Hank wants? Is that, what's... Maybe they each get one, like they each have get one nuke. <laughs> they as spawn a with one. Well, something that's like... a, that, I think Ogre got it, because I was thinking that it would tell people who don't know anything about Fallout that every vault has nukes that it can just fire. For whatever reason, like, <laughs> all right, yeah, like, because it's like, oh, yeah, and then he nuked the place because we were getting too powerful. It's like, oh, can how do they can yeah. they just do that? Can they all do that? And it, then he just, it like, just feels nuke. spiteful because, uh, like, they took his children away, so he nuked the place. Like, yeah, that's um, how Moldavo describes it anyway. Like, he burned that city to the ground because they took his children. They're gonna explain it in season two. Yeah, of give, course they are. Give yes. them a, you yeah. losers. There'll be like a million seasons, <laughs> and they're all gonna explain each other. It's gonna be great. Um, yeah. They move on to say his criticism of the Brotherhood of Steel for searching for Wilzig, but by coincidence, Maximus and Titus end up right on top of him. Isn't that the point of searching for a person? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, well, he's got you there, Molly. He's got me. <laughs> he's got oh, you there. That's it's not a, a coincidence they randomly found him. They oh. were looking for him. What was weird is like oh, I thought I made a completely it. random place in the middle of a forest, and they just stumble upon this location. Like, what the fuck? I always they're not think, even um, in the place they're supposed to be. I often don't realize what I need to make explicit. Sometimes, like, uh, they show five power armor suits and five squires. That's what's searching the wasteland, and our mm -hmm. guy gets sent to Philly, and they drop off early because they're bored, and they land right on top of Wilzig. That's amazing. They, they walk there in like minutes, basically. And it's it's just yeah, it's it's part of the section of just like everything feels tiny. There's like three places in this fucking mm -hmm. world. There's <laughs> some really funny oh, defenses there. popping up in the chat. Like one, for example, there's nuclear power all over the shop. He could have blown up their generator as if that would be enough to blow up a whole city. That's not how that works. Yeah. <laughs> also, there's fast travel in uh, Fallout. Yeah, fast travel, idiot. I guess you don't understand games. <laughs> Well, they have to discover. Yeah, they had they a, have to discover they that had, location first. They had they had a quest mark, you know, in marking his location. You know. Um, yeah, there's there's so so many sort of responses. The it's funny the video just couldn't have accounted for a lot of this because I never knew 
I would have to make like so many detailed ex explanations of like exactly how any kind of defense that involves making up shit could possibly happen. And um, what I notice is, uh, I was talking to Fringy about this, you never, do you ever see, what we see all the time is, wow, you didn't pay attention to this show at all. That's never levied at someone who was praising the show, no matter how inaccurate they are. Which I think is just an extension of the general rule of, if you say something positive, that's great. If you say something negative, you're opinionated, you're an asshole. It's, it's like that same thing when two sides of the same coin of expressing a perspective strongly will evoke very different reactions. And I think it applies the same way to... Yeah, it'll only ever be that you weren't paying attention because you were getting stuff wrong in the process of criticism. Far less so getting stuff wrong uh, for the purpose of praise. And I hear, you know, you hear so many times, right, the, you got one thing wrong, why would I believe you were paying attention to anything to get anything else uh, right? Yeah, that's, and then, a, that's a weird argument. No one will ever say that about, like, you got that point of praise wrong, I can't believe you were watching any of it ac with yeah, accuracy, yeah, like, why I would I watch the rest? Forward, again, it's still the positive negative thing, if it's positive, then it's just treated mm. better. No, it's treated perfection with or nothing. Well, pe people in well, general yeah, get yeah. more defensive about things they like than the things they dislike. Like, it's, uh, you know not that uh, not that weird really but yeah yeah well i mean <laughs> it, it's it's just um it's just fascinating in a sense that it's it's like to 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 say um well you got one thing right so how can i trust a single thing that you could ever well, say yeah. it's like would you apply that to their whole show. life or is you it live, just they live on an joke? island they don't speak to anyone ever <laughs> it's, well, because it's if you funny. speak to someone it's they it's might it, um, lie to you if you apply that uh, that view to their entire, you know, video, does that extend to every piece of media they've analyzed? Does that extend to anything that they could ever say ever? It's like, oh, well, you golly. got one thing wrong, so how would I trust you on anything? <laughs> how can I ever well, trust you ever again? It depends on whether or not they thought the How can I trust you good. that I'm meant to stop at a red light? <laughs> how can we allow you to live? Uh, you got this one <laughs> thing wrong. Or, uh, with the NCR, We're a danger to society. Right you have to be put down like a rabbit animal. Uh, I mean, did you even get it wrong in the first place? Like <laughs> another section of uh, of forums, undescribed person who said it, undescribed area, but they said uh, feels like uh, a review he would never normally do. Uh, it feels like he really didn't watch the show at all. If Moldava was to enter Vault Thirty Three from the main entrance, then Henry would have been notified, giving him time to slip into Vault Thirty One, and she would never be able to get him. You think he wouldn't be notified about Vault Thirty Two getting attacked? He absolutely no. would be. Or he Why would no, he not? not? They're not connected. They don't like converse. And and say, like, well, no, but you don't. You don't understand, Mola. They're all dead. Th this, why, this why is does what I mean. Have no, I'm not even joking. Why does like, have no oversight, and why is there no communication say, between like, the vaults? Like, what boy, the they sure are quiet over there. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's oh, another well. problem. But yes, uh, Free is absolutely correct by the implication. Someone would be like, "Wow, did Mola not watch the show? They're dead." It's like you're not understanding anything. Like, it's she does not know they're dead. That was a surprise. And it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. They should have known if they were dead for two years that uh, there would be no check-ins from the Overseer. That's fucking strange. They care yeah. a lot about management. It's weird that they didn't notice that yeah. they were dead for two years. Yeah, why Why didn't all 32 contact 33 as well? Like, they could easily have done it there and, like, over the computers they have. Yeah, especially but, when they learned the know. truth and were trying to get into Vault 31. Exactly. Why didn't they tell Vault 32? Why didn't they message, we know the truth, and then... Why did they just hang themselves, like a bunch of idiots? Why did they just hang themselves? <laughs> oh, That's a legitimate question. Why did they just hang themselves? Oh, when you say it that way. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, to, give, to give you another, just the brilliant kind of conversation that was started by all of this, uh, Mola calls Hank the mustache-twirling bad guy, playing off the that's how vault Tech deals with competition line in the show, saying that he's that because he doesn't want anyone alive outside of the vault, people, etc. Ignoring, of course, how... that's the point. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they did it on purpose, <laughs> you fool. Uh, so he's, don't saying... Why is it always <laughs> he's saying you're correct, but it was on purpose, so it's fine. Yeah. It's correct, but your negative implication upsets me. <laughs> Pretty much. This is like, Pretty well, much, okay yeah. then, I guess. <laughs> I'm glad I got that right. Uh, we just disagree on it being a problem. Uh, yeah, like, uh, why didn't Moldava go into 33 straight away? I don't know, probably because the dwellers would have fucking noticed the door being opened. 
Yeah, I guess the guys in oh the territory wouldn't have known it. <laughs> I no, just because don't you don't understand. understand. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> everyone also, is judging the show like, as though they're so already what? dead, and everyone knows. Yeah, she just knows somehow that they're all dead in there, so she can enter without being, you know, hindered. Uh. And yeah, uh, I had a lot the, of the just whole, because that was the point. The, the, that was the point argument reminds me of being in like art school and you have crits and you look at someone's short film and it's like, okay, that shot was really horribly out of focus. You probably shouldn't use that. And they're like, oh, it's on purpose. It's like, that's yeah, great. It's, it still right. looks awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, the, you got the classics uh, that pop up a lot, which is the uh, just because you don't agree with an action a character takes doesn't mean they wouldn't take that action. And all I can ever say to that is just because you agree with their action doesn't mean they should take that action. I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> gotta give me a fucking argument. Can't just say the random thing. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny too because this section ended with uh, you have to understand why a character makes the decision and then it's fine. It's called internal consistency, which he claims to love. <laughs> I, <laughs> ruse, which I was faking it the whole time. Right. <laughs> Grifter. <laughs> um, then someone said, uh, how could a pit boy from another vault open another vault? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps like they do in Fallout 4. And I was like, that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> I'm trying to highlight like the fucking secure nature of all of this. Why would it work that way? You, you see, because it works that way, any pit boy can open any vault. That means no, no vault is secure in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. We got people being sold Hanks in the shops. The vault and, you know, steal Hank? the people and go into any vault and, like, they're not secure whatsoever, yeah. If that's how it worked, Hank should have killed Rose for sure. If like, that's... You know what I mean? If anyone gets out, then they're a threat to everybody, so you that's should... Kind of... they, should have sent people... they should have sent people after Lucy to make sure she died. <laughs> like, well, the thing is, like, the, there were pit boys outside of those in the vaults, and then, of course, there were vaults that get cracked open and everyone dies and stuff, and so... To me, it's just like, that's a major design flaw. We need to make it so that at most, and I don't even agree with this, but at most, the specific pit boys to the vault open the vault doors. But even then, so I thought... a terrible idea, but it's better. Yeah, I thought the mm -hmm. Overseer would have the ultimate power related to opening the vault. And I thought with the vaults 33, 32, 31, that it would be the Overseer plus uh, Bud, unbeknownst to the members. Mm -hmm. you exactly. know, but yeah, that, that would make some sense to me. But no, it's like it says, any pit boy can do it. And it's like, wow. Okay. I feel like you might encounter problems like that, like some random fucking yeah. idiot with a group of raiders opening the door from the outside and killing everybody. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe not have hundreds of vaults with a bunch of random people that can, you know, open your vault when they get out. Uh, How much do we want to bring the games into this? Well, that's another thing, right? That the games aren't even, <laughs> across every one of them, consistent. And so you can yeah. pick and choose whatever continuity you even want from them. But um, to, I'm coming to sort of the end, some of these comments are just fascinating to me. It's like... Uh, why did Lucy get picked to escort the doctor? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because there was a murderous ghoul outside, so asking for volunteers was not going to happen. So they didn't understand what I was saying in that section, which was, what was the mm -hmm. plan? She must have access to be able to pay people to act as escort. Where are they? They're not in the room. What was the plan? Was she going to walk him there the herself? Light? Yeah. I like did this... point this out to you that people are gonna get this wrong because yeah, like he probably didn't have any options at the time, but the the plan as a start is fucked. Yeah. Like what the... I was trying to establish was <laughs> she has the capacity to put a thousand cap bounty on someone, so surely she has the capacity to afford an escort. Mm -hmm. And she's paid caps Escorts to do this job are anyway. Too expensive. So I don't uh... should have planned ahead for this. Like they should have had people ready to escort the guy before he well, especially even arrived. When... He is the essential, like, he is the one person that you need. He's yes. the guy with cold fusion. He He's more important than Hank. Like, yeah, you could find more someone than anyone. potentially somewhere out there who could do what Hank can do, but yeah. you need uh, that guy. So it's crazy how, how their plan seemingly relied on, well, yeah, he'll just get to that town, and then this lady, this old lady, will send him on his way. That's insane, mm -hmm. especially when we see at the end of the show just how many people she had at her disposal. You couldn't send two of them to go out and grab him. Mm -hmm. But then the thing is, is that with the nature of the writing in this show, if you got the two, they might have like slipped on a banana peel and snapped their necks. <laughs> and then that would be the reason why Lucy's got to take him and go on the adventure. But that's, that's satire. satire. Yeah. That's that's sad. I was going to say, it's you missed that. Satire, yeah. on the banana and and yeah. there is, a, um, there is a, an obscure side story in Fallout 76 where a guy slips on a banana peel and dies and he was referencing that, so... 
Uh, yeah. I, I find it so funny, like the 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 nature of well, it's satire when it's just like whatever the writers want it to be at any point, but a character makes a joke. You know, it's like they make a joke. It's like, ah, okay, right. So now there needs to be that. Like, there's no plot anymore. Um, or or at least like whatever happens in the plot is not of much importance. Even though, again, I find this so strange when Fallout is obviously trying to be dramatic. Yeah, it's yes. got a lot of jokes in it, a lot of attempts at comedy, but it's obviously trying to have real attempts dramatic, comedy, payoff, right, mm-hmm. yeah. real like dramatic tension. The, the uh, tone it, overall is really serious, especially in some scenes. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's weird that people treat it like as if it's if it's a show like Smiling Friends that is strictly chasing comedy. Mm-hmm. You know, as as if full as if this show is not doing the the big heavy dramatic uh, tension. Yeah, I, I, it, I, it's so strange. It's it's like it's this weird thing that it feels like you can get away with if you're doing something that's like it. it it's like they there's a there's a realm of like drama that has elements of comedy, but it's definitely like more skewed towards drama. You know, like seventy seventy five percent. If you wanted to do it in the most basic, oh yeah, rock easily terms of how skewed much it to is. drama. Easily well, so what I was serious. gonna say is, um, I think that the I think that something it feels like it's happened with a lot of shows like lately. I'm thinking of something like BoJack Horseman, where it's like you can have a show where it's like major- it, it, it is spending like so much time trying to do comedy. Uh, while still having dramatic moments that because it's trying so hard to do comedy, it doesn't get like treated as seriously as something like Breaking Bad, which is mainly trying to be dramatic. Where, where it's like, well, there's a sufficient amount of jokes you can tell where people aren't going to take your story as seriously, but they'll still give it praise corresponding with something that's um that's like actually trying to achieve, you know, internal consistency and and like and strong character development and thematic weight. It's just fascinating. I don't know. Like it's 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 a uh, it's strange. Um, yeah, the the sh- the show feels like the producers and everything were trying to make a dramatic show. Like they hired people, uh, at least not the the showrunners, but they hired like Ramin Javadi, who co- uh, composed you know Game of Thrones, for example, Westworld. So they like they took they tried to produce a serious show, but they hired a comedy guy as one of the lead showrunners. So it's like a really weird disconnect. It almost seems like they're making a show without telling the guys who actually hired the the people what kind of show they were making. Because like you listen to the score and it's like, wow, I'm supposed to be feeling emotions right now. But we just had a guy showing his butthole to the vault overseer like five scenes ago. It's just a really, really weird disconnect, I think. That is a very funny image you just posted, Goga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chat summary. People are so, discussing the possibility of making bricks out of poop. They are debating whether the poop would have, have to be shaped into bricks before it is pooped out, or if the poop would turn into bricks after it is pooped out. That's All a right, post about the Discord. Yeah, I think about shit. Quality may vary. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on your diet, yeah. Um Right, so uh, we're almost at the end of these, uh, the, the the sort of funnier ones. But they said uh, to follow up the the escorting the doctor. Why did Thaddeus give up the head after finding out he was a ghoul? Perhaps he didn't want the Brotherhood chasing him forever more. They'll get the, they'll kill him for being one. Something he literally says. Come on, Mola, fucking think. I said this yeah. in the video. Yeah, that's yeah, not the problem think. of that scene. <laughs> That's not the problem with the scene. No, it's the uh, he, of all the things that could have happened to Thaddeus, becoming a ghoul is pretty much the only thing that would allow the events to happen in that scene as they do. And the other problem I have is Thaddeus saying thank you for taking the head to Maximus, who Thaddeus knows full well is benefited enormously by having that head. It well, like Bruce, everything Bruce he wants. This situation is in the mm-hmm. first place. He was the one who crushed your foot. Yeah, he's the reason why you were in a position where you got turned into a ghoul. Like, yeah. you should not be thanking him. From nope. your perspective, all this guy's done is screw you over. It's also really convenient that he finds out that he's a ghoul when he does. Like, exactly at the correct time. Yeah, exactly. He, he this... sets off the trap, and then it, yeah, and it's like, oh, wow. It's just so convenient. This whole like, notion of, so many... um, you're not paying attention, right? They'd, they'd accuse that of all of us, especially uh, me with the video. Uh, especially all of you that helped me make it as well, you fools. Proofing it and approving mm. of it. Idiots. Uh, why did you? But... <laughs> why did you get all these people to help you who hadn't watched the show? Yeah, losers Just reeks of amateurism. And yeah, who, who have never played a single Fallout game, know nothing about any of it. Nope. Gosh, didn't pay any attention. Um, they're so mad at me for not paying attention that they they're like fucking creating things that I didn't even say. And I'm just like, this goes beyond <laughs> yep. not paying attention. You're just angry at ghosts. Like I wasn't even saying this shit. I made completely different points. But then we get to there's just two more really or three where uh it begins like this. 
So this is what it feels like to be on the opposite side of a Mola video. Every critique sounds like, can you believe this part of the story happened? When it's like, yeah, that's the story happening. It's like, okay, so let's see an example. <laughs> Quote, they just hung out every day with dead bodies all around them. And of course, Mauler is unaware that, that yeah, that's, uh, that happens in Fallout. If you ever played a fucking Fallout game, that's like <laughs> standard. Go to Trudy's Diner in Fallout 4 and check out the pre-war skeletons sitting right next to the fucking entrance. Oh my god. Um, Why is it always Fallout 4 they're referencing? I'm curious. Yeah, that's the bad... Well, what's, because they, yeah. what's funny about it is um, I'm fine, I think. I probably put them away, maybe in the closet, lol. Put it uh, with a skeleton versus a freshly dead body. Uh, you know what people usually do with dead bodies? They bury them. They, yeah, they well, why do they around. do that? What's, what's the reason for that? Is it a crazy custom? It has no benefit Disease. whatsoever, right? What? No, 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 no. Disease? Space, what is know? that? That doesn't exist. What's well, that? Yeah. Not a good no, idea no, no. to be around dead stuff. When you, um, like, it, it's baffling to a lot of people who think about it, right? Like, if, it depends on what the information is, which is another thing that's left ambiguous. How long did Moldaver and a team live in Vault 32? And if it's for anything longer than hours, maybe a day, which I think it was, it gets real weird. It's like, why are you just living with the corpses? That shit would smell, there'd be flies and all kinds of shit that would likely grow. It sounds and like a... Yeah. There's, Sounds there's like a sitcom, of, living with the corpses. There, there's lots of stories about this from World War One, actually, when they live in the trenches surrounding body corpses, and they're just, like, the entire floor is just covered with flies. Yeah. And, uh, like, the, yeah, they used to land in the coffee and every morning and shit. And it reeks of dead, rotting meat. Yeah. And they can't sleep it? because of the fucking smell, and, like, it's fucking horrible. Well, no, like, you don't want to be around corpses. Just it's light a candle. Thing. Don't be such a baby. Um, yeah. Also, I, I feel like if their plan is to impersonate Vault 30 tours, they should probably hide the bodies in case anyone turns up. If anyone yeah, walks through the, the door and wonders why it's been quiet, nah, no, no one yeah. do that. Nah. Also, just like the timeline is really weird. We don't know exactly how long Moldaver's been there, but nope. why did she wait like 15 years to do that? 215. Well, well, I mean, that, I don't know idea how she's supposed to be living that long, but like after, especially, no, this is all, it. we're supposed to be thinking that this is inspired by the attack on Shady Sands, right? Why did she wait until uh, Lucy is like 25 before raiding the vaults that she supposedly knew about? Is the, um, that the chance that surviving the attack on the vault? The assumed explanation is that this was the moment that Wilzig was ready, and so that means the plan... Like, we need the code now. Even though the tech has existed pre war, this... so the tech is 250 years old. Well, why uh, would this yeah. be the moment Wilsig is ready? Why is Will Wilsig? No idea. Uh, why does he not? But what's well, got to be in the show, this is really important. Why does he Well, it'll be in season two. It'll be the Wilsig story. Oh, oh, okay. We're going to do a flashback to the style. style. He's probably not part of the Enclave, I would imagine. He's probably, like, the infiltrated them it's or something so like that. Vague. It's, it's so really vague. It's so vague about what... Who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like, that's just what I'm assuming. Like, Maybe you know, there's he, no explanation was... for it in the show whatsoever. Well, do you... Honest question. Do you think Wilzig will be referenced ever again in Other Than Passing? Probably Maybe. no. In Passing, if that. If that. I yeah. would be surprised. I think it's a stretch on Passing. In passing. It'll be like, I Wilzig think, um... sacrificed his life for this. That's the most... I think that's already more than what they'll give how the fuck he infiltrated... It's like a, a thing that you just, you, you get a sense when you're watching a story uh, when something is done from the perspective mm -hmm. of the writers, not from the actual, like, not if you were thinking about what would make sense to be relevant in a story, you can just kind of like tell when it's like, the writers believe that they have resolved this conflict, they believe yeah. that this plot point is done, and I definitely get the sense that basically like uh, most of what happened in the show is considered resolved uh like that's the impression i get um that mm. that really what you would see in season two is mainly new things which means new problems oh yeah <laughs> probably getting created would be funny if they're like ghoul juice thing that they have to take every day and never comes up again like the that's something i could see, I could see them doing that like the fobs i could see them yeah. just not exactly. addressing it anymore and then maybe in season yeah. fucking seven they're like you don't i don't see you take that in a while he's like oh, i do between scenes Exactly. Yeah, he has his okay. supply now. He got he got this big yeah. uh, big supply from the from the. Well, technically, uh, 
I was going to say he did because they captured him, but then I guess you could have gotten it back after they uh, they got killed because they were retarded. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know. They yeah, totally would bring, bring that it's with like them, a video you know, game, the big yeah. bag of uh, drugs things. Well, it's like in a video game when you get captured and then the game's like, oh, no, you might go three minutes without all your stuff. And then it's like right there in a chest. Yeah. And it's all there. And you can yeah. just collect it right back up two seconds after you escape. My That'll favorite example fun. of that is in Starfield when you get... Uh, captured to work undercover for the pirates and they have you in an interrogation room they let you keep all your weapons <laughs> well that's because starfield is just like the games but they capture so, mad though <laughs> it's a reference to the, it's a reference to the starfield game where it's oh. really bad so when they capture mad though they let him keep his full armor set on Including his helmet. And they don't take off his helmet or anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, look, you guys are just right. Y'all are just too stupid to win any or live. You're too stupid to live. They would just take it to sell it. Like, it fucking, it's worth so much. They wouldn't let him, let him just keep it for whatever reason. Uh. Too hard to write that. Fuck you. That's, that's the answer. Yeah. There. It's very, very hard to write that, indeed. But then people will see that. Pedro Pascal isn't actually in there. So oh, that would be funny, wouldn't it? They open that up, but it's clearly not him over there. Wait a minute, imposter! Like, what's happening? Oh, what? with a guy with a mask on. Like, <laughs> it could just be like a just a random different actor, and they just play it straight. Like, yeah, nothing's changed. No, he has, like, he has a better shitty like paper mask on when it takes the helmet off. <laughs> it would be, it, really be really funny if they took the off. helmet off and it was Danny DeVito, and then in the next scene when it cuts, it's really short. Like, he's really, really short. <laughs> short like his, whole, his whole body has changed all of a sudden now that he's been unmasked. Oh, I'm just reminded of Spaceballs. You idiots, you captured their stunt doubles! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. When Spaceballs has a much more coherent story than the whole <laughs> show. Yeah, how did we get here? Actually true, fucking hell. <laughs> I have provided you fellas a uh, Watch Together link. So that you can jump oh, in nice. and we can begin this adventure. Though, I just need to sort something out real quick. I'll be right back. So you keep yourselves company. Talk about something, I don't know, not Fallout related if you really want to. If you're feeling frisky. Let's watch Kaminandes 3, Yamigos, Splendor Animation Studio. No. Let's no? not do that. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I don't know what that no. means, but is it good? It's the thing on the screen. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You come up with something to talk about then, if you're I, so I smart. Just, no. I was... I was just playing Hades. Anyone played Hades? It's a, it's a pretty good not game. Yeah, but I might Hades be able to some point. not just come out. Well, the thing is, I was going to start playing Hades 2, but someone in my chat was saying that I really need to finish the game 10 times so that I don't ruin the story. What? Oh, Lord. Like of the first one. Huh. So, the thing so is, are you though, doing that then? No. <laughs> I, well, I, I was. I got, I got my number down to seven left to complete. I, I beat what, it twice what? last night and once today. What? <laughs> Why 10 it's times? Is that a secret game. ending? Is it a secret ending it, or something? It's, so the, the premise of it is that you die and then respawn in the underworld and fight your way back out every time. And once you get out, you can only stay alive up there for a certain amount of time. So the character that you interact with, you're having a conversation with them and you get a little bit more of that talk every time. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've played all of I've I've played all of Supermassive's games, so and including Hades and I love it. I never beat it, but I just know if you you get a seek you get unique dialogue the tenth time i'm assuming yeah yo oh, every time at least so far and i've gotten three completions now but uh yeah i'm really enjoying it it's uh quite quite a fun game that's actually like a tangent but uh i actually love that about their games they made a rule at some point i don't know i think it was in their first game they make it so that every line of dialogue can only be played once so oh, well, out, out, outside of, outside of like combat grunts and stuff yeah i think as early as bastion they did that so You'll never hear repeat dialogue, so everything oh, nice. you you hear is like a, is the is pretty much the first and the only time you'll hear it, which makes the dialogue way more mm -hmm. refreshing because you don't get the same grunts, the same. Well, I mean, you get combat grunts and stuff, but any like line of dialogue is, is the unique. the narrator in Bastion <laughs> makes that game like it's it's so good. You got this like old west like <laughs> the the hero then walked down the road and got a, and it's it's kind of just going over everything you're doing in the game. It's a uh, Good. Yeah, Good yeah, he's Good he's dude. awesome. I think he's been in almost every one of their games, but they they didn't do dialogue for uh what was that one game that had like was kind of a sport a fantasy sport game? Pyre. Pyre, yeah, that was such a weird one from them. They didn't have any not played it. voice acting. It's interesting, but it was very unusual for them for sure. Hmm. 
Anyone, anyone else uh, playing playing any video games that then or seen I've been a movie? Playing uh, Stardew Valley <laughs> recently. Got them into. Oh God, me too. I started playing nice. Stardew Valley again. Yeah, I hadn't played yeah. it in like three years, and then I started playing again. Uh, Such again, a great game. Like that. How's that patch? Yeah, like that. How's that patch uh, going? Is it cool? I don't. I, yeah, I guess I haven't got. Apparently, there's a lot of stuff that I haven't got to yet. I'm just sort of playing the game, sort of normally mm -hmm. going through. Um. But yeah, Stardew yeah. Valley's good stuff. I didn't, yeah, I didn't play it when it came out, so I, I can't really compare. But yeah, the game is really great. Um, I just never got into it when uh, back when it came out, but now I have a bit more time to do it. It's a Didn't lot of Stardew fun if you Valley... can... Sorry, Didn't it go. recently add online co-op? Wasn't that like a big update it had? That was a few years ago. ago. That was a yeah, few years ago. Was that long ago? But uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. You can actually do it local as well if you have Friends. controllers. <laughs> <Lol, no. laughs> <laughs> Forever alone, but uh, that's a lot of fun. Game I want to play to single people. player, though. I don't, I don't want to play that in multiplayer. It would stress me out too much. Well, it's not competitive. It's, it's like you're all. Well, on no, the same I'm, farm. I'm just, oh, yes, it I'm, is. I'm just really I'm autistic. I want to be efficient <laughs> about things, and so when I waste my time, I get fucking depressed. <laughs> can can well, you pursue the same romantic interests and like fight over them? Yes, uh, that's like interesting. I did with I never... Peanut. Yeah, in Animal Crossing. Yeah. That's interesting. It's it's pretty cool. Like uh, my wife and I would play, and I would be a fisherman, and she'd be a farmer. And mm -hmm. early on, like fish fishing was awesome. You make so much money, but yes. later on, you get completely creamed by the uh, the Mayo Empire that she built. So it's just kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Fishing be strong early game. Yeah. Done a lot of stuff. Uh, to to, to Bill game. Sotherby in the chat who asks if oranges are called oranges because they're orange, or is the color orange called orange because oranges are orange? Yes. Uh, the latter. I thought they're called oranges because sure. that's what their name is. Uh, the, the fruit name came first and the color name came after. Huh. There's a little fun fact for you. Yeah, hmm. a lot of things, a lot of colors come from the things like rose and tangerine, things like that. Like, yeah. And indigo. Do you guys, and things do you guys know why they call British people limies? Why that's a yes, fact? Because, because of, of the scurvy cholera. and the sailors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, they usually eat limes color. instead of lemons because the Spanish prevented them from getting access to lemons. We, put we used to call them the coconut and drinking it off. Early America, we used to call them lobster backs because of their red coats. The British oh, military. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> we need to bring I've, that I've back. Been, that, back. Uh, <laughs> that instead of wearing red coats, they're just wearing big lobster backs, <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the big lobster outfits from the Amanda Show. Oh god, damn I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking like I'm just thinking like a, I don't know, like a lobster. You know, it's just like a big lobster shell, but it's for them, <laughs> and it's even got the antenna at the top. And they. I, I'm just picturing and, a Halloween lobster and, outfit in like you know. A bunch of Victorian people were wearing that. <laughs> and everybody everybody who wears the outfit, you know they're you... compelled to uh, go... <laughs> you know, every now and then. Every yeah. now and then. Good. So, here we Hello. are. We're going to be checking out two vidyas. One. This is a really good fursona. That was... <laughs> yeah, this is the first <laughs> image on screen. It's really good. I, like, I think it's really good, yeah. I was very proud, by the way. I came back and I was like, oh my god, I don't have to tell anybody to join the watch together after the first time. That was all I needed to do. It's a rarity. That wow. Never really very proud of all. I was ready all for it time. All grown up. So, uh, yes, we're, we're dealing with... We're going to check out two videos talking about how good the Fallout series is. Decided to go with one that was particularly contentious and one that was, what I can gather, the most popular. So we can at least get a good grasp on controversial and positive perspectives, which is kind of our our forte. We're in the opposite camp: yeah. controversial and negative. Sorry, mm -hmm. yeah. the worst of both worlds. Try and work on it, but um, I have yeah, done something sacrilegious. We are covering Jim Sterling, James Stephanie Sterling, as far as I'm aware, the current name is, and we're doing it out of anniversary style. Ain't that nuts? Oh no, oh, Mala, you didn't. You didn't. How you didn't you? say this before. Uh, I know this should have been a warning. I'm sorry. Sometimes <laughs> I feel like dropping the shit on you just to see what you do. <laughs> I I love, this it's... was not expected. I just want to see your little your out. little pixel art avatar scream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no! like, I was like, I didn't even I didn't even pay him to make that. It just did that. It's, the pixels not... <laughs> repulsed by Jim Sterling. <laughs> they doing their own thing. It's oh, not. Fuck. It's not too late to schedule a dental appointment. Just saying. <laughs> Because well, the bunny has yellow teeth? No, just to get out of the get out of talking Molly. about Sterling. That's just a tooth. <laughs> Look at it. Dental. It's a tooth that has a split at the back. It's a cleft. It's a cleft tooth. <laughs> <laughs> the 
so yes, oh, okay. this will be an interesting adventure, and it's um, you know, it's the kind of video that's going to have a lot of issues with uh, with people who are not happy with the show. It's more so oh, centered us. around Shady Sands, but the amount of statements that are made here that regard sort of the engagement with media, I found fascinating, and I think we are likely going to disagree at least with one or two points, maybe just the one. Maybe the rest of the video. I guess we'll find out. True. True. Boom. True. Is everyone ready? I am I'm so like ready to sure. agree oh, and or disagree yeah. with Jim Sterling. Oh, brilliant. Here we go. You get when you're obsessed with lore and references instead of good storytelling. You get a right to show. Say, oh. So, yeah, the, f the first question is what do you get when you're obsessed with lore and not storytelling? Which is kind of the foundation for this video that that's why people are mad because they're obsessed with lore and not storytelling. Which in is a fascinating. Weird way they're obsessed with lore, and in a weird way, they they hate it. Well, I mean, so it's, it's weird. Well, I mean, lore is storytelling. Well, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's a bit of a contradiction. So that doesn't. Yeah. We're already off to a really bad <laughs> yeah. start. Lore is storytelling. If you're just talking about the plot, the plot is fucking garbage. Like, regardless well, of its fault. You'll have uh, stories in the world from the past. If that is considered lore, then that is still storytelling. It still has meaning. It still has uh, relevance to the characters as they're dealing with with whatever they're dealing with in the story at the current time. Feels like a very unnuanced position to refer to lore as like ugh, dusty books of a bunch of Wikipedia articles of what happened in this world. Who gives a fuck? It's like, damn, that's really undermining huh. the notion of like a grand story, isn't it? Feels that way, but you know, maybe, maybe not. Especially if you're claiming to be canon with other stories. And what's the point of making an adaptation if you don't want to utilize any of the backstory? Because you want oh, to corrupt it with I, your bullshit. I think in this one, it's it, the more relevant one is you made it canon. So, like, you invited yeah. this. You actively yep. invited people to be talking about the law. Yep. I have seen plenty of this sort of attitude, though. Like, uh, the only problems with the show are contradictions in lore, when yeah. clearly there are many problems that stem just from the show itself. Yeah, Look yeah. at Night <laughs> Um So, uh, I don't know if, uh, would Kretosis be the best here to give context to this event that took place? I know about it <laughs> somewhat, but uh, if you want to take the, the mic on this one, what happened here? I say, before you start, I say, what, a, what an incredible pussy you are to say oh yeah this guy he's actually he's actually here he, no no he's not the guy doing the shooting he's just the one standing over there to the left he's like you fucking coward <laughs> you fucking coward i really really love this tweet because it's the best representation of how much of a shit writer ml is because first of all you've got someone inserting their oc into the original game oh hey my character was actually this guy in this cut scene like f fucking really man can you but, explain it for people like me who have no idea? He's not a bad no guy, though. He would never shoot. Is. He'd never shoot a Canadian. <laughs> okay, so for anyone uh, who hasn't seen the opening cinematic to the original Fallout, the uh, picture on the left is a screen cap from that cinematic. Um, it's about the American annexation of uh, Canada. Based in the 51st state. That's no! what I call Canada. <laughs> America is almost one state. Holy fuck. Uh, Canada. Northeast Dakota. <laughs> Northeast <laughs> Dakota. Uh, but, anyways, yeah, there's two power armored soldiers, and there's a uh, prisoner with his hands, I assume, handcuffed behind his back. And one hands the other his gun, and he shoots him in the back of the head, and then shoots the corpse to make a twitch, and they laugh about it. Both of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one highlighted in red is our favorite Fallout character, Nate the Rake. Why do they call him that? Because he's a whore? <laughs> Why not? No, <laughs> no, because he's raking all those leaves in Canada. Oh. The story People is, what? that oh, law oh, okay. isn't as meaningful. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's, uh, that's not very nice theory. <laughs> but, yeah, I love this because it shows, like, how incompetent as he is as a writer for uh first of all not realizing that this is a fucking war crime and it makes his his not character that he wrote look terrible <laughs> uh i had another point i forgot what it was but <laughs> well someone super chatted uh, nate's military service ended two years before annexation of canada he also received power armor training but never wore it this is impossible yes yeah, so that too just <laughs> uh funny well it's just the way ML writes. It's perfectly well, yeah, fine. So There's nothing wrong with it. Is that a is that a character in Fallout Four that we're saying on the left, was yeah. in that? 
Okay. Yeah, that's uh, one of the characters you can play as in Fallout. That's the 4. default male human. Yeah, I don't know why sure. I specified human, but that's the default male character. <laughs> so, uh, you the, never know the a human that you can play. The reckless nature of uh, Emil here is like, hey guys, I'm I'm in power when it comes to writing the story of Fallout. So this guy, this guy, are the same now. Yep. Yeah. That's, also, that's true they're now. criminals. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, yeah, that was my uh, other point. He doesn't realize he, the power he has as lead writer, and then people will take stuff like this canon. He mm. doesn't realize that somehow. Um, mm. I think the follow Oh yeah, shown. Nate from Fallout 4 is the guy in Power Armor laughing at the war crime in the first Fallout cinematic, and then they have to retract it. <laughs> Oof, I wanted to share what I thought was a cool Fallout tidbit without realizing how divisive it might be. I should have. I it's get dumb with it. Canadians is a little divisive. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I mean, mean you know, we Canadians so many Canadians. Well, just Fallout look at this. Fans. Like, I mean, Not every bit of Fallout info I share is automatically canon. Nate is not a war criminal. It's like too late, yes, bud. Yes, he is. You tweeted it. <laughs> you, just, yeah. you can't take it back. I mean, according <laughs> to Emerald, the Canadians aren't really people, so you know, it's, you know, it's <laughs> Yeah, he's maintaining this is canon and he's not a war criminal. Yeah, <laughs> that's an odd it's... combo. Yeah, <laughs> gotta clean up the streets of Toronto somehow. Yeah, all right. In, in the world of all the Canadians aren't legally people. You don't see this very hey. often. A writer sure. basically being like, "I I've made this happen." Everyone goes, "That's a stupid fucking thing you've done because of this." You go, "Oh shit, no, no, I was kidding. Uh, it's not Emil. true." <laughs> the oh, em Emil, why did you have them screaming "Land back" as they shot the Canadian in the back of the head? Why did you have him say that? Pull out for <laughs> got some weird DLCs. For, for for context, Emil was working at Adrenaline Vault, which was basically the IGN of the time when Fallout One was made and released. So he was basically a reviewer and a journalist. You can actually find old reviews if you look at an archive.org. So he this is literally fanfic. Like he had nothing to do with Fallout One or Two. Mm -hmm. And he, so like the idea that he's just like, oh, by the way, I'm just going to like rewrite this character into being the warrior that gets you know, the soldier that gets, you know, saved in a vault, cryogenically frozen is your, and is your main character in Fallout 4. Isn't that awesome? It's just, it's just so pathetic. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like it's, it's one thing if, if you get somebody like, um, you know, the, the creator of the Harry Potter series, like later on giving bullshit, you know, lore that didn't, wasn't in the books, but. He had nothing to do with this these two original games at all it's just funny to me yeah it's literal bad fan fiction to your writing well and so yeah. um this event is somehow going to support the idea that it would be stupid not to enjoy the fallout show uh oh. you'd think i don't see the connection well you'd think it's just like yeah. fallout ip related information well, I, I, I would go as far as saying you'd think that the, one of the people who has the most power on the writing and the course of the, sh the, the whole franchise, uh, making a tiny mistake like this in a tiny way has, has like had a big impact on how everyone dis you know, derives meaning from the content, and therefore you should be fucking careful. Like that, you know, you'd think that would be the cautionary tale. Like, don't just arbitrarily be like, lol, my character is there. Like, no, you can't. You got to think about this shit. You got to actually like plan it out. You can't just be like, oh, this is there, this is there. Yeah. But uh, no, that is not going to be the point. I'll um, I mean, I'll roll this every time ML every time ML talks. I think about Zorak from Space Ghost just yelling from off screen. We hate you. I hope he shows the follow up <laughs> tweet. There's actually it actually gets better. Um, after ML got completely lambasted over this tweet, somebody responded and said, "Okay, this is bullshit. Even if you accept that, that's uh neat." Somebody actually did like put the glasses on and did the well actually and did a whole timeline and showed that that was an impossibility because Nate served from like X year to X year and this was specifically during the annexation of Canada and it basically I forget the follow up tweet I could probably find it but it pr he proved that per the official follow up timeline that was an impossibility. Yeah, that's what the um the super chat said I think that I read out the uh, Davis ending two years before the annexation of Canada and that he wasn't even in power armor he didn't uh, he only received training for it or something so there's all these pieces that need to be tracked if you're going to actually move certain things in certain ways which you totally can people just want there to be respect for what happened before um but no, i've rolled it back so we can see the context of how this is being introduced to the court that is us do you know what you get when you're obsessed with law and references instead of good storytelling you get Maybe a writer crimes. saying oh yeah nate from fallout 4 is the guy in power armor laughing at the war crime in the first fallout cinematic and then they have oh, to funny. retract it because they were more obsessed with the law and making everything fit and go 
What? No. What? They, it doesn't what? make sense at all. What? <laughs> what's the opposite of that? There's no. What's the you meaning of being. That. Like, what's the great story that got ruined by everyone's obsession with lore here? There was no great storytelling. I, he just said that guy is I, this guy. That was the story? Yeah. This, this think... came about from him not knowing the lore. Like, what? <laughs> Am, am I wrong thinking that Sterling's reaction is, yeah, it was super cool that you made the protagonist yeah. for a war criminal, you changed it, you pussy. I, mean. I, I don't get this. Pussies. This opening is already baffling. It's like you've taken the completely opposite point of view. Shouldn't it be that you should respect law because it has direct effects on story? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And to the point that the Not writers themselves are like, oh, shit. Whoops. I didn't, yeah, okay, my bad. I'm retracting it. Yeah, Caring about lore just writing, gets yeah. in the way of cool shit like retroactively making this guy a war criminal. <laughs> Which is yeah, very man. fun and cool and based. Well, the tweet here where he says, uh, Nate's, sol Nate's soldier past is whatever you think it is, that is canon. I was like, that can't uh, be canon. Ugh. Everyone gets to decide what happens. Like, not how that, canon works. That can't be, yeah, that cannot be canon. If everyone mm. can have their own, then it's not the thing. Hashtag my canon. Everyone can have their own canon. My truth. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, uh, it's my truth. I mean, but it the right to bear cannons. <laughs> I, one one thing that I was hearing, I think it was Gary who was saying a lot of modern Star Wars seems like it's written like people doing Star Wars D and D. I wonder if it's him sort of framing writing for a role playing game as something that's whatever the player wants it to be. So he doesn't see the point of anything being canon because if you can make different choices, your story is going to be different anyway. So what does it matter? I don't agree with that, but I think that might be where he's coming from. Well, I mean, these two tweets yeah, here are just, like, they're kind of weird, because, like, the first one just talks about what it's like to write in general. It's like, yeah, got that. You speculated on, like, what Nate's history would be. Sure. And the third one is, like, it's a cool nod, which is not, you know, like, no. I'm, I'm all in favor of cool nods or whatever, but I don't know whether that's a cool nod, and wouldn't you be more concerned with story, with meaning, with substance? And then he goes on to say, uh, Whatever you think Nate's history is, is canon? It's like, wait, now you're just diminishing canon? Like, if everybody just, yeah. whatever they think is mm -hmm. canon is canon, it's like, well, then why do you even well, care? Why, well, in that case, why did you say so, anything about this character? Yeah. Why did you say well, anything? Why, why force canon? I'm wondering why... Canon, then, then why would what you say mean anything? Well, now, what's the difference between canon and head canon? Yeah, what is the difference between Nothing. canon and head Nothing. canon if the head canon is the canon? Yeah, I think stupid. he'd argue there this is the this lead is, fucking writer. I think this is <laughs> just a case of like you screwed up and now you're like, oh shit, what what the, what am I supposed to say to make everybody happy and leave me alone? That's what this feels like. You figure if you're gonna be the lead writer for Fallout, you should know the lore like intimately. You should oh. know everything that happens. Oh, in they the don't. Days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you should. <laughs> Fucking hell. When yeah. was that a requirement for any IP these days? Like, you don't well, even have to like the thing. Might be, you know, the reason for some of the problems we're having with uh, many of these IPs. Oh, uh, in... every... oh, sorry, I just posted something in chat. Before he got completely lambasted, um, Emil replied to one of the early people who replied to his initial tweet, said, somebody said, uh, I feel like you just made this up in the past few minutes or something. Somebody <laughs> responded, absolutely. Emil said, nope, with any fictional work, books, video games, movies, whatever, there are always little details that help build and flesh out the characters and world. People and places have histories that shape them. Just because you don't know every detail doesn't make them any less true. So that was so his initial response. Well, the the yeah, best so part, the response. Really answering the question. That's, that's just dodging the question there. The person that responded to him though, bro, you totally made that up a few minutes before tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you're lying. <laughs> It's funny because it's like, we know what you did because it's tempting to do. It's fun to be like, this is this. Mm -hmm. I control the universe. Yay, I made this a thing, and that's just true now. And then a bunch of the fans of it are like, what the fuck are you doing? You're like, oh shit. Maybe, <laughs> maybe yeah. have some restraint on that and maybe think about it before you actually do it, you know? Yeah. Make sure you're not ruining things. It's like a canon is implied, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Everything's connected, everything's like fucking Star Wars, where and then they have to retract it because they were more obsessed with the lore and making everything fit and going, ooh, ah, everything's connected, everything's like fucking Star Wars, where every grain of sand on Tatooine has to have a backstory. And if you keep. So, what's funny about that is um, it's, it feels like a mutation of what the actual criticisms that relate to Star Wars are, which is that it's not about mm -hmm. everything in Tatooine getting a backstory, it's that Tatooine keeps showing up, it's just a place that people go. It's not like we have issue with them wanting to make TV shows about every last character in Tatooine. Um, this just feels like a shut up about plot hole situation again. 
Well, yeah, but the, uh. it's so funny because Star Wars' problem is arguably the opposite. They gave horrible stories to many of the major characters that have the most meaning developed for them. You know what I mean? Like, that that's not quite the yeah. problem of just randomly grabbing at anyone and giving them full stories. Which, by the way, would probably be better than what we got. I mean, if you gave them full stories yeah. that were really good, like, nobody would come away with a negative impression. They would just say, oh, that's, a, like, a cool story that you made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, and I, do, I don't... I don't... Ex I, I don't understand, like, the the connection between, like, what happened here with this guy doing the, the whole, like, oh, yeah, this guy in Fallout 4 is actually this, too. And see, this is what happens when you get so obsessed with lore, is you do something really stupid. Like, does, anybody, <laughs> does anybody think <laughs> Star Wars' problem is they're obsessed with lore? No. 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 Nobody feels that it's way. It's insane. Like, that's not even close to the I problem. I bet the writers would say that. <laughs> we were You're all obsessed, like, damn it. You won't let us tell our stories. <laughs> Keep doing that. Eventually, someone's going to laugh at a war crime. This is to say that I explicitly went into the recent Fallout TV show with as little social media opinion getting in the way as possible. So when I just you say that, did you, did you say to somebody, I'm going into this with the least like, paying attention to social media as possible, since it was- you did it explicitly. I explicitly oh, well. went- oh yeah, I ex- you explicitly <laughs> went in with, you know, as little knowledge as possible, How come we only I told ever, everyone. That can only ever be negative, by the way. I get the idea of spoilers, that's the, certainly something explicit you'd want to avoid, but the idea that, like, I wouldn't want to know anything about anyone's opinions on this so that I don't go in- I, I know the notion of no expectations, but the notion that you go in and you weren't going to be skewed negatively on it. It's like, you could have been skewed positively on it. Like, which, by the way, mm. would be more likely. I know plenty of people yeah. who said they were skewed hyper-positively on this show and thought it was awful. Because like, oh, yeah. just the, the conversation about the show has been, uh, how else can you put it? Glowing. Not great, like, yeah. Well, not for us. A lot of, a lot of people. stream opinion uh, is very positive. Hyper-positive. Yeah. Shockingly positive. Confusingly positive. Unfortunately <laughs> positive. Mm -hmm. Expose myself to the same cringe circus we see when any geek adjacent media comes out anymore. A bunch of whining nerdsies. Um, uh, I think I, no, nerdsies. Uh, nerds. Nerds. Uh, what's funny is I was pausing because of copyright. I think I have to put up the shield. This scene's going on a little too long. Nerds. But uh, yes, yeah. uh, well, we just heard the word nerdsies. I don't think that. I think that is that coined here because I don't think I've ever heard that before. I mean, points for originality, I suppose. Is no, it, is that, that points for originality? <laughs> no points. Negative points. Fuck you. Is, <laughs> is, is there a Sterling but, really anyone to call anyone else a nerd? Really? Or a nerd <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah, forget <laughs> setting I mean, aside whatever Nazi abomination of what language that is. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say, like, the uh, there's a reason why nobody had said it before, Mark. <laughs> that is, uh, yeah, it's not something they didn't think you of. You care about the source material? Fucking naughty. Yeah, what are you? Crazy. <laughs> ruining media. Myself ...to the same cringe circus we see when any geek-adjacent media comes out anymore. A bunch of whining nerdses finding any excuse to complain about how woke it is. What are you talking about? People love this show. Loads of people fucking like praise yeah. the shit out of this what, show. Yeah, wait, what, what's, that, what's, also, what's that got to do with lore? <laughs> <laughs> And it, also, you know, compared the compared to other shit, the show is not really that woke. You know, if you're gonna, you know, argue that point, you know, and I the mean, kind of people who are hyper attentive to like or, that sorry. sort of criticisms haven't really been that hard on it. No, I don't think so. I mean, you know what I mean? About, I thought the, the, this was meant to be about law. Why are we talking about? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. action. There are very few people calling this show woke. Like They're I can think use... of one person, but. They're gonna use law to skewer it, Frankie, when the true motive is that ah. they hate it for being wow. Ah, I see. Right. Mm -hmm. Was yeah. this video Nazis. made before? Was Next this time. video made before or after yours? Uh, probably before, I would imagine. Oh, okay. So he's not talking about the 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 Mueller World well, on the, Fire one. No. Um. I don't think so. Well, because like this, this is the thing. I didn't see much negative coverage of the show. They, they existed. There's videos yeah, out it, there. It has, um, it has a lot of positive coverage. Like yeah. to, to even try and spin the tale that this is a show that's been reacted to poorly is kind of crazy. It's being heralded as one of the best video game adaptations of all time, both in terms of like critical appraisal and uh, audiences and fans. Uh, well, yeah. a lot of fans. There are some fans who don't <laughs> fall out who don't like oh, it. That's true, um, though. It's overwhelmingly positive. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's it, it, so like the idea oh, yeah, that there's even like a considerable amount of people who are shitting on the show is just that that's not the case. 
It's just not true. I saw one of the, there was like a viral post about how like, what's special about the Fallout show is that it's uh, satisfied critics and the audience, and that's rare, and that you should check it out while you still can, sort of thing. Like, you know, get this watch, this is a genius, awesome adaptation that respects everybody, and it pleases everybody. It's just like, jeez. It was awful. Watch it before people <laughs> like Mola Rooms. Impotent yeah, fury over positive. minor canon changes that don't fucking matter. Wanton misuse of minor. the don't matter. Minor. <laughs> Wiping out the Nukes. Nukes. Just don't don't matter. Well, you know <laughs> what? That's that's we tiny. Moved it so we could nuke it. <laughs> Nuking Shady Sand, nu damaging all of that portion of the entire world. Apparently, is is fine. B bit it all up. You know what? It's for story. So oh. Caesar's Legion wins now, canonically, because there's no opposition to them? Uh, well, right. no, they weren't mentioned. The I don't think they're canon anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the I NCR mean... and Caesar's Legion are both gone. There's just nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all empty. It's ready for Lucy and the ghoul to walk around in. I guess, if they... Emil just walks into the room, how do you do, fellow Romans? <laughs> if, be, I, uh... I feel like if they make it to Vegas in Season 2, they're definitely going to have the NCR controlling Hoover Dam, just so they can be like, yeah, this is the NCR's last stand, because I, well, I feel the like is... they wouldn't want to wipe out the entire faction. I'm, I'm not sure, maybe. Do you expect any compensation now that they've seen the reaction? Like, do you think they're going to try and be like, no, 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 actually, there's a lot of... All the things you thought were the case aren't actually the case. We're, it's fine. There's some things... Uh, they just like throw away lines to mention where people are and how they're doing. Um, I I wonder if there's going to be any no. attempt at repairing anything or if they're just going to soldier on. Like I said, I'm still in the impression based it'll on be the, worse. You know, based on the reviews, I, I don't feel like they'd be super motivated to try and like assuage people's concerns. Yeah, they probably think that they've done a good job. So I would think so. Think that That's actually true. Yeah, the most noise they would have right. heard is going to be hyper positive. I mean, look at Halo. Like Halo got torn to shreds, and they didn't change that much. Like really, when you think about it for <laughs> yeah. season two. Yeah, true. it's arguably that made no way an improvement. So. Also, yeah. I think Sister Lady is probably going to be introduced in season two, and there's going to be some like uh, uh, slave uprising happening with the the faction, and there's going to be an allegory for communism again, or some shit like that. And to, to go back to the point about like lore and, and how it's just the stupid nerds wanting to keep the lore intact, there people don't realize that you can look up all the people that are involved in keeping the Star Wars lore canon and everything together. It's like over a dozen people. Like they, these are actual paid employees yeah. that, whose jobs they do it terribly. I'm not saying they're doing a good job, but they <laughs> do, but they're all paid to keep all the stuff straight so that there is a cohesive universe. You can't just point to one one big multi-million dollar product and say that that completely contradicts the other i have no idea why they're not all fired and replaced because it's a <laughs> mess but, but at the same time like it's not just the nerds be complaining on online it's actually a job it's a function these people get salaries these people get benefits yep. to do this i imagine they just get ignored most of the time yeah, nowadays i also hate yeah, the implication that the only thing wrong with the show is lore contradictions I don't know fuck all about the lore, really. The show's still awful on its own terms. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah that's I, what I mentioned in the, in the start of the stream, yeah. One of the least familiar out of the, the group people who worked on it, and I had infinite issues with how the story was written. Um, it's broken as fuck. I think that was our first conversation, Mahler. You were like, hey, you know, Fallout show so-and-so, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, the lore is the least of its problems, but this, this, and this. Like, I gave you just a couple really, like, you yeah. know pretty major points but i was like yeah it's not that's not the biggest problem of the show but if you want to get into lore it's completely messed up too and they're in a unique position of being canon quote unquote to the games where if it was just an mm -hmm. adaptation they can get away with a lot of stuff minor canon Wouldn't changes that, that don't fucking matter wanton misuse of the term mary sue and declarations of the media what's success that got to do with lore what the hell i okay. haven't heard anyone call her a mary sue What's that, to one person to her mercy? <laughs> what's, what's that got to do with lore? Uh, Nothing. Most people no. like Lucy. Good question, Fringy. <laughs> but also, yes, most people approve of Lucy. So th this feels yeah, weird. So I don't even know what that's about, yeah. It's like, you're kind of creating this world that doesn't exist where people don't like the Fallout show. Not true. I've definitely heard people say that Lucy's the better Ray and Maximus is a worse Finn. Did say that, yeah. <laughs> Finn's pretty bad, so... There's something to that, but yeah. Sure. Finn, Finn's not as bad as Maximus, though, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I prefer Finn to Maximus easily. Yeah. Even if he's just shouting rail. Way better, way better person as well. <laughs> mm-hmm.
impact or failure based on its projected political affiliation rather than quantifiable measurements of what's success this, or failure. More? Quantifiable the, elements of success or failure? Do you just mean people watching like it? Like money or viewers or people talking about it? Or how many times? Yeah, because I don't care right? how successful the show is. Yeah, therefore that means that Activision's doing a good job with all of the battle passes and the DLC. Woohoo! Yeah, still. Yeah, like, how do you feel about that? What about the success of the that's premium that's versions? Yeah. Huh? It also feels a bit weird because this is Amazon, so it's like, ah, yes, the metrics of success for the Amazon-made Fallout show. Yeah. We even have Amazon metrics. It's going to be really happy about. Yeah, it's uh, like the second most successful. Uh, yeah, show on that's why I was repeating the point because I was like, what yeah. are we talking about? What was there something? I know yeah. that the show was seen as successful. I just don't know. I haven't got any it, numbers. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, well, I'd say it's pretty obviously successful. Um, like it's massively, massively successful. It's more talked about than most things that come out. Um, uh, I was, I saw it yeah. everywhere. It's so, better yeah. reviewed than Rings of Power or Citadel, <laughs> the second most expensive show of all time. Well, I'll tell you what, it dwarfed Silo's discussion. Nobody was really talking about that. It's like I mm. watch Silo. It's good. Yeah, no one has Apple funny. TV. Watch Silo. I should watch that. Yeah, it's a better Fallout show than this. If you don't watch Silo, you're stinky. Apparently, I've been watching stinky. Too, right? yeah. Apparently stinky. season two is happening as well, which I was excited about. Yay. To When's it coming out? Uh, uh, it would be like next year, I think. Maybe? Early next year, hopefully. All right. I don't know. Right. I just I'm excited. I'm excited. Of the media's success or failure based on its projected political affiliation rather than quantifiable measurements of success or failure. For fuck's sake. I'm not sure how much- Name them. Give me them. If you say so. I, I don't, don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. And if it is just, look how many people are talking about it, it's like, yeah, sure. That doesn't- Yeah, look at how many people are buying battle passes for Call of Duty. That must be doing something, right? Yeah, such a stupid <laughs> metric. Is your point? Tough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know how look how many people are watching the show is a response to here are my criticisms of the political like subtext of the show. It also, seems what's that got to do with law? Well so I, so if I trace it, it was like the Fallout show. being critical of the show for imagined political leanings as opposed to looking at the objective numbers of how well it's doing. Yeah, like Imagine political yeah, leanings. I, I was gonna say, like, isn't that what anything. you guys do all the time? Like, why, would that, why would that mean anything? Why would it mean like well, I have these issues with uh with the content of the story? Yeah, but it was successful. Like, oh, <laughs> that feels like not a response to what was said. I didn't realize the. So I don't even have like, what's the point in a, a reviewer analysis if all you're going to say is it reached an arbitrary line of how successful yeah. it needs to be to be good? There we go. Did it. Therefore, yeah, so Transformers like, you know, Revenge of the so, Fallen you know, was good. Views of Legend of Zelda, you know, they don't mean anything, like, given it, like, a whatever. I can't remember what Sterling gave Legend of Zelda. Seven. I know it wasn't like Breath of the yeah, Wild. Yeah, like that doesn't matter because uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are some of the best selling games on Nintendo Switch, some of the best selling games of all time. So those are just the quantifiable metrics of success. What are these arguments? I don't know. Much of that, or in what ratio, has actually happened over Fallout. But I saw all the discourse around that Lord of the Rings show, the discourse around every single Marvel movie, the discourse around any non white actors that don't oh, show up. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. True. Yeah, any non white actors. Yeah, we're doing the thing. Wait, 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 wait. Can we rewind this? Yeah, we need to go through this one by one. <laughs> Because holy shit, yeah. the amount of the amount of conversations that just got bulldozed no, I think, over. I think you have to go. You have to go <laughs> even further back than this. All right, we're we'll so not. We're, we're in movie ball territory. Of, this this is a long thought, you know. Like we'll we'll. Yeah. Uh, Romeo yeah. must die happened a long time ago. Okay, no one had a problem with it. Let's see here. Mary so and declarations of the media. I may have to go further back than this, actually. There's still midpoint with this one. <laughs> we see when any geek-adjacent media comes out anymore, a bunch of whining nerds is finding any excuse to complain about how woke it is, impotent fury over minor canon changes that don't fucking matter, wanton misuse of the term Mary Sue, and declarations of the media's success or failure based on its projected political affiliation rather than quantifiable measurements of success or failure. You enjoying this English? What? Bring? Um... <laughs> What well, are these really long sentences? <laughs> it's yeah, incredibly right. difficult to decipher yeah. long ass points. It's very poorly it's really paced long. in terms of its cadence as a sentence. It's the way that you're meant to write, you're meant to write your sentences in a script like you're writing legislation. That's how you meant to do it. <laughs> it reminds me of Movie That's Bob. Yeah, I said it. It's, it's, it's definitely like Movie Bob. Uh, I, I honestly yeah. want to test my comprehension of it. Is, is Sterling saying that because there's political things in, people are distracted from realizing it made money? 
Well, no, I want. I the thing is, is I want to know what the next point is because it sounded like Sterling said, you know, well, I haven't really paid that much attention to what people have actually said about Fallout. That's what I wanted to hear. Whoa! Wow! Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's oh god. See this. For fuck's sake. I'm not sure how much of that or in what ratio has actually happened over Fallout, but I saw all the yeah. discourse around what? that Lord of the Rings show. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> so all of that was just blowing smoke up our ass. Like, that's nothing. Yeah. So are you, why are you He's just like mad that? about nerds so, being mad about shit. Mad about the, so the are... ghosts of nerds. Those yeah. are his criticisms, then. I imagine the group of people and they made me mad. There. Yeah. I hate those even know if that's the nature of the conversation. You need just to get going, a, well, people did it with Marvel. They probably did it with Fallout. What the hell? <laughs> this this actually reminds me of one of our last episodes I was on, where we found that one guy was complaining about the reviews that were kind of copy and paste uh, format reviews on Steam, and then we find out they're all from the same guy. So it was not even a point to begin with. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's like it's just like looks, creating looks a straw man. Video, one, <laughs> you know, really fascinating. Like, if someone said it's, like. It's like I haven't checked whether or not it's happened yeah. for this, like it did for Rings of Power, Endgame, and Star Wars. I'm like, you're dealing with so much history and conversations you don't even know what the fuck you like. Rings of Power, Endgame, yeah, this and like just sort of throwing your hat in the arena yeah, TLJ, because like, it's a topical thing. We're talking about different consuming. eras, different histories, different fan bases having different problems different for different reasons. Bases. Yeah, and different reactions. Yeah. I mean, Rings of Power, even though it apparently got viewed a lot. Um, like is and, not is not held in high regard by Lord of the Rings fans. Meanwhile, Fallout seems to be generally well received by most people. Well, and even if we went broad, like, right? Um, the reaction to Rings of Power overall negative to the point where people, even that you would expect, like usual suspects to defend it, were like, eh, wasn't so yeah, great. Nobody was that much um, excited to talk about it. Then Endgame, before. beloved by almost everybody, but dropped off real quick. And it just started like, yeah. you know, nobody really likes it anymore. And then TLJ, it notoriously split one of the biggest fandoms in history directly in twain to the point where it's now crippled. Like that. Mm -hmm. the, these are three very different things that happened. <laughs> like, but you know, yeah. if you go, nah, it's all nerd sees. You're like, Okay. Yeah. How much investigation did you think he actually made, and, or oh, like, did no. he just ran and well, he post says, about it? <laughs> well, he I mean, says quite well, specifically he that he doesn't know whether this even yeah. happened with Fallout, yeah. but he's already yeah. mad at them for it. Yeah, could no, you I mean, imagine writing that line? The, the other, the other stuff, but you know. Oh, well, yeah. I presume yeah. it might do any at all. Of, I've seen arguments, so I presume that this is what the totality yeah. of the conversation is. Yeah, someone told me about nerds being mad, so that must have been what happened. Like that, that's yeah. basically what I get from this. Yeah, could you imagine writing that line where it's like, I'm not sure if this is a problem, but the Council of Fall Tards, I'm going to make that video. It's like, oh, no, I, I it's mean... It's like the first thing you do. That's, that's, that's the title I thing. gave it. <laughs> that's oh, a... oh, that's, a, that's yours. Okay. <laughs> what I, is... I see it now. It's on your, it's on your account. I thought, I thought what that was What is the actual <laughs> title? I'm curious now. Uh, it's something to do with Shady Sands. The reason why I've cut them is so that I don't have to move from video to video. And there's, like, f there's fluff on Sterling videos that I get rid of that's, like, meta that's or... That's fair weird about other stuff like uh, all i wanted was the substance of the arguments which okay I already it's find... just called shady sands that's it there you go so yes uh it's just funny to blunder into all of these conversations um it reminds me of so many other critics who are like you know what happened with all of these things that i've never got involved in in any way shape or form it was this it's like right exactly yeah. <laughs> you got it over Fallout, but I saw all the discourse around that Lord of the Rings show, the discourse around every single Marvel movie, the discourse around any non-white actors that dare to show up in Star Wars. The I like the so. Yeah, oh my God, as <laughs> hey, as yay, yay. Uh, so what's funny about the the anger yes. toward any non-white person showing up in Star Wars? Really interesting image to choose when the discourse about this moment was oh sexual assault. And um, not to mention, Rose is an awful character. We like Finn. Please give Finn more, better story. Yeah, I feel like at this point, yeah. the general consensus on Finn is, man, you wasted that character. Wasted, yeah. he, could yeah. like he, could, he could have been a good character. This is, the immediate, this is the immediate aftermath of what could have been a decent moment for him. That's what people are mad at. Yeah, among yeah. other things. It's so interesting he because got robbed of, a, of an emotional payoff. By when you got the um the old brain rot, you look at this, you look at people talking about it excessively, and you just automatically assume you just hate everyone who's non-white. You're like, what are you talking about? You have no it's idea what people discuss. Your head. 
in your this, head that you've now this moment is one of the possible. funniest moments in all of star wars because her point is like we can't win by attacking those who try to kill us while they kill you in the I, background I it's yeah. the funniest <laughs> shit it's, it's it's actually quite ironic right is it's to non-white people on screen ah they must be because of the colored people pe that other people hate this like what I mean, so fucking weird with... like it's, it's just yeah. blundering <laughs> into a conversation weird. you got no yeah, context for just... It's I just really weird stuff that's in your head that you've made part of the conversation. I think. Exactly, yeah. People like so Finn. It's one of the most commonly agreed upon to things. Do, to do with that. John Berg is and a really good actor. With... Everyone was ready for him to have a whole trilogy of stuff to do, and they you got nothing. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. I just listen to like, the revisionism about Nerdsim, because I, you know, growing up with Star Wars as a kid, I'd get the action figures. This is probably like the second generation Star Wars stuff, but still it was like, like probably the fifth or sixth uh, action figure I got was Lando. He was awesome. Everybody loved Lando. No, you hate. There's him. no problem with that. You're in the. Uh, I, I mean, internally, I hate him. Yeah, yeah. I, I must. Yeah, yeah. This this <laughs> definitely feels like a case of. Do you know like about which characters <laughs> people like in Star Wars? Do you, do you know, know anything about, about any of these Lando? topics? Any well, because did you hear the disdain for the descriptions? Like the rigs of power, Lord of the Rings show, uh, yeah, Marvel there's, there's movies. Very, uh, you're like the genre is kind of fascinating. It's like holy shit, calm down. <laughs> Well, have you seen any of these things? Do you know if they're even good? Do you not like anything ever? <laughs> like, is it possible for any of these things to be bad? ...that dead show up in Star Wars. The discourse around pronouns in Starfield. Great. Uh... Why is there a bad... Why is there a bad thing on his head? I don't know. I don't know. Him did he hurt him? Did he hurt himself? There isn't in the original video. No, no, no. Is, is not there one in his uh, PFP? Uh... Oh, it could be that, yeah. I... Oh. Ah, that's, um, <laughs> Good yeah, it's a beautiful image, captured forever. Fucking boring, <laughs> boring. And it's all the same fucking shit. There's only one discussion yeah, about the dancing food. Yeah, why not? He's just doing all dads. Look at him go. And it's all the same fun. fucking shit. <laughs> he's he's having a good time. Yeah. He doesn't know what there's video only, he's in right now. There's only one discussion about the Fallout. I TV wish I was show. a brick. No. <laughs> uh, and we're back. I actually oh. paid attention to as it blew up to the point where it was everywhere and I actually do have a fair bit to say about it. I am of course talking about Shady Sands. Here we go everyone. The oh, main okay. event. Can I, um, can I just point out how stupid it is to put a population that could vary from like month to month on your billboard? Oh, wait, why? That's <laughs> all, that's all the they always do. It's the exact population though, like down to the well, last digit. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what the population have, is. Uh, Just to be clear, this is the normal that. thing that every sign with. Yeah, I figure it happens. It probably gets updated with every. It's a road sign, though. It's every sense, a road sign, not a, not a yes, billboard. Yes, that's where signs are. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's on like the side of the road, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it's, it's, like... we're, it's not going to be on the road. I mean... That's where we drive. <laughs> right, right. Would, I'm saying wouldn't like that just a little. Like, for... <laughs> wouldn't that just say thirty-five thousand people and like you know round it out? No, Does it would it... say thirty-four thousand eight hundred and fifty-two yeah, because they, listen, they don't round people, it up. Because that's the point never, of a census. My, well, I was going to say my assumption is it gets updated I... with every census, which is yes, it yes. gets updated I, over time. As all right, people are born and die. Here's my here's my point. Here, I'll I'll post a real one in real life. It's a little sign on the side of the road where you can just paste over it and like. Yeah, yeah so with often. this one with a billboard, yeah. you just go up there and you put you some paint, paste the new one, yeah. Paint and then you, yeah, and then you put the new and number that on. And that one you it isn't rounded up or down. You, no, it's not rounded well, up. It's, no. it's, well, it's, it's, it's round. Sorry. It's rounded up from thir thirteen thousand and seven. Well, they, they must have <laughs> fucked up because nobody went up there and painted zero 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 up there. So that's. What I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to mention where I live. Public they services do went to shit it. after the nuke. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just say like one million people live in this city. Well, yeah, I mean, no, th th this is that. not a, like a shock to me or anything that, that they would have done this. It was just a minor yeah. point. I'm just being nitpicked. Yeah. It's okay. Well, there is no nitpick. This is I think it's, I think it's just the biggest problem. <laughs> this, this is reality. Now, yeah. <laughs> this is reality. You're nitpicking the This world. is just how signs work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We don't the outraged this over, response yeah. from some fans to how it was portrayed in the live action adaptation. A response that shows Not to adaptation, me. Not adaptation, live action continuation. Get it right. Um, oh my god, it's Jim. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the term adaptation does relate to, like, it's you're moving it from a, one medium to another, but also, like, because like, you wouldn't call. I was just thinking, like, adaptation, does that include the notion of uh, continuity ever, or is it exclusive? I, I, I don't know. I actually don't know now that I've said that. I need to... I don't think sure. it does. You I don't think most people things. would assume it does, anyway. Because yeah, one could like argue, it, like, they're I, adapting the Fallout 
IP, then you're well, like, well, well, yeah. Here, yeah. This way, you know? Or like they like, made Halo, Halo the Fall of Reach would not be considered <laughs> yeah. a Halo adaptation. Right. The Fall of Reach is just a novel. You know, you wouldn't call so. it an adaptation of Halo. Especially when well, and in the same well, vein, you I could say, like, Ahsoka is not yeah. a Star Wars adaptation, it is a TV show, whereas the other stuff is yeah, a movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, or the, the video games are video game adaptations of, uh, of Star Wars. That just sounds weird. Like, They're to say that Star Wars of the Battlefront story more is a... I think it's because we're so yeah. used to um, anything, any film or TV show that's made when the thing is primarily a game before it, we just call it an adaptation. It feels comfortable doing so. Meanwhile... If we had an animated show from Star Wars that was canon, I don't know that we'd be calling it an adaptation as Probably opposed to just... Calling it an adaptation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess there's a difference and... in an adaptation of a story and an adaptation of a property from one medium to another. So, like, Fallout well, being the traditional medium for games, it is adapting that IP into a TV a new, show. A new foray time. into another medium. But uh, I think Freddie might be right. I'm not sure how we typically... What the category for adaptation can I would just mean. say colloquially, I, nobody yeah. would look at like Star Wars Jedi games and say those are video game adaptations of Star Wars. That would be weird if people yeah, from, said that. From what I understand, adaptation means you take the same story roughly and turn it to a different medium rather than a new story in the same universe. That's right? how I typically well, that's know to the use colloquial. It, yeah. That's yeah. how it seems like we all refer to it. Yeah, so adapt means make something suitable for a new purpose, modify, and you can expand on that from like like if you took a book and turned it into the Game of Thrones show. That's an adaptation, but this Fallout story is an original story in the same universe. So it's not Correct. an adaptation. The difference between wanting a story and wanting service. First Ooh. of all, let me explain. When, when of course, service. I think we would all argue that the show gets away with it, so to speak, because it provides enough service rather than story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. a big factor. Uh, no, I fucking love the Fallout TV show. As a Fallout adaptation, it's not just got neat additions to the lore. He, he fucking some... loves it. Loves it. Loves oh, it. Remember, Rags, that's the oh. normal opinion to have. We're the weirdos. It's such a yeah. shit opinion. <laughs> I, I hate it. I actually hate that everyone's like, oh, it's so good. How could you possibly have any issues with it? Well, do you know it's about so satire? It's so wacky and fun. People liking it is satire. <laughs> <laughs> Satire, it's not just got neat additions to the law with some very fun references, but it's impressive. Why, why would the additions to the law mean anything, though? Yeah, I thought we just went over how fucking. I thought it's terrible. Yeah. 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 So why would there be any good? Middle is stink about the stupid law. They'd be like, it's pretty cool how it adds to the law. <laughs> like, fuck <Yeah>. you. <laughs> yeah, this, this one, I, I, just an anecdote. Uh, this one really got me because I had a friend who specifically hated all the Star Wars new content, but praised Endor as being like an actual good thing that Disney produced. And he also let's love the Fallout show. And maybe he just wasn't familiar as much, but. Even well, still, I mean, even if nobody even 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 if you knew mm -hmm. nothing about Fallout lore, just thinking about the show, there are some major Look, major. We are all human, okay? We all like plenty of people liked this show. I've already seen people in chat say they were fond of this show a week ago, <laughs> but they're not really <laughs> fond. Of I, it I enjoyed parts of it, but you know the, the story is fucking. But then the long man came in and stole their dreams. Yeah, the long, the <laughs> long tribe. I had uh, that video never would have gone out without the help of all you fellas. So of course, thank you again yeah. for that, but. Yeah, I mean, it will change minds, probably, a video like that. Uh, it'll also enrage minds, as it was should. mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> if it doesn't yeah. change minds, at that point, you just can't oh be God. reasoned with. You're just oh a not reasonable God. person. Oh, no. Well, there oh, were well, 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 <laughs> Like, I, I, I oh, went over yeah. the video. They, if, they, if they contextualize the experience of watching the show as they do with something like a Austin Powers, imagine Rags, it would be insane, but... Someone watches Austin Powers and says, like, this doesn't make any sense. The plan from Dr. Evil doesn't even really make sense. Like, is it is it really feasible to get a laser on the moon? Do you understand how difficult that would be? It, you know, we will be like, um, mm -hmm. what? And that's how they see a lot of the kind of arguments we make. But um, that's why you have to draw the them back is... into understanding the difference between satirical content and tone and how you execute it and how... Exactly. This show, there's no part in Austin Powers that's not ultimately played for a meme that has like serious music <laughs> and people crying over like people dying and stuff. Like the reveal yeah, of them being brothers is played for a meme, even though it's like super serious. It's a joke. Oh. That's like how you do it. Austin Powers is a fucking great base play or, or a blueprint for how to do it. But this show, this show has its cake and eats it too and then fucks up everything. Mm -hmm. So the law with some very some fun references. And, and as we said at the beginning, like it feels like there's way more serious stuff in this show than satirical or funny or um, easily yeah. absurd. It's far it's away. A, it's a serious show with satirical elements to it. Yeah. 
who does number two work for? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> to the law with some very fun references, but it's impressively reserved, holding back on a ton of like impressively reserved. It is not reserved. It is not fucking you know, reserved. When, when, when the, the show with the chicken fucker. Played, yeah. I was like, man, this feels like a, just a yeah, just play 50 song. You know, just every mm -hmm. single opportunity it has, play 50 yeah. song, even if it's like for like 10 seconds. Not like, I enjoy the good music, song, but the way okay. you do it. <laughs> no, they, they are good songs. I think they're really good songs, but like that yeah. definitely felt like wet Fallout. Fallout is like 50s mm -hmm. American stuff, so play a 50s American Just shove song. it in your face every and second people, you yeah. get an opportunity. <laughs> Even, yeah. And if it's the thinnest connection possible to justify it, even if it... Because I remember there was one. It was the one where... um. Where uh, Cooper was, uh, he was driving to like the observatory, and it just played for ten seconds on the radio, and then it was done. Yep. It's like, oh, that the was very are, worthwhile. Cab, I think we talked about this at one point, but the uh, they would play a song, it would fade out, and then it would fade in for about two seconds and fade back out again with ten second gaps. It was really strange. How they um, use it is very strange. They would like have it fade out like it's done and then they're like for the sake of some sort of comedic beat or whatever. And then it would come back in once you've forgotten that there was a song playing. It's very strange the way all these pieces are edited into the show. I'll have to I'll have to nerd out for a second, but the whole reason that, that music exists is because um Basically, the original creators of Fallout were trying to capture the retro futuristic thing. And basically, what would the future look like if it stayed exactly the same kind of fashion and style of the 50s, but just was, had robots and stuff? And so yeah. they landed on the ink spots. They actually wanted to, to license, uh, uh, I don't want to set the world on fire, but apparently they wanted like $100,000 to license that song. So they end up Jeez. looking through a bunch of old records and they landed on Maybe by the ink spots, mm -hmm. which for whatever reason was a lot cheaper. And the yeah. really, really cool implementation of that song is that it shows in the intro where you're just like flipping through an old TV, you know, uh, car commercials, things like that. And then, you know, war bonds, whatever. And then the annexation of Canada. And then as it pans out, you realize you're not in a living room. You're actually in like a quarter of a living room that's been completely bombed and you see the desolate wasteland. And as, as you zoom out, you realize the TV is not even plugged in and that the, it was, the TV was never on. And the music kind of just fades out, and and all you hear is just like the static noise of the wasteland, and and, and the, the song... tone of that music fits perfectly as well. Yeah, too. and what's even more cool about that is in the beginning, it sounds like kind of a hope, hopeful song, like maybe you'll think of me when you're all alone. Exactly. And at the end of the game, sorry, I'm going to spo spoil a 1997 game. Sorry, chat. At the end of the game, uh, depending on the the ending, you basically end out end up walking alone in the wasteland, and the song repeats again. Maybe you'll think of me when you're all alone. So it both plays like a kind of hopeful, nostalgic tune at the beginning, and it also is kind of haunting and dark and desolate and and lonely it's, at the it's end. It's both hopeful and tragic at the same time. Uh, like yeah, that's and, the, the tone of and, okay, but what if we just it's play them all all, all the time? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what but if it's we like just my... do slow motion with with the song while people are shooting each other? That's like, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, the whole point was to play they play that one song, basically one song twice, and it completely contextualizes the emotional journey of the character. And this show just completely ruins the effect of that because it uses it so yeah. often. Is, um, it feels cheap to me, like uh, what was just mentioned there. The whole, it's like, we're going to play a song from the 50s or 60s, or whatever, that you definitely don't associate with people viciously killing each other. But look, people viciously killing each other. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, doesn't that make you That's think? Isn't this satirical? Didn't they play one during the raid and, and the yeah. observatory too? That completely undermined yeah, the emotional of weight of that scene. Yeah. Yeah. There's was one enchanted evening, I believe. Yeah. Uh, that was in the first episode, yeah. Because you're not entirely sure what they're going for. It can be a bit odd. Um but then, you know, sometimes you get good performances that really sell a like heartbreaking, you know, trauma inducing tragic moment, or lol the jelly, get the jelly out of here, man. Yeah, You're like um, okay. Yeah, I still can't get over that. So yeah. cringe, and Colin the deliveries Colin. are bad as well. Oh yeah. Content rather than drown you in appearances from death claws, robo brains, and super mutants. If that we're being honest, the adaptation two. just wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. shows more restraint and respect for the source material than Bethesda did when it plundered, <sighs> called back... I don't give a fuck if it, it has more respect than another thing that is worse or something. I you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not getting into whether or not Fallout 3 did a better or worse job than the show of dealing with Fallout laws. Like, we'll be here forever. I just want to talk about how the fucking show was terrible. It's like, 
Mm-hmm. The the idea, if we concluded, yes, the show was better in a way than Fallout 3, we're like, what does that even mean, though? <laughs> it doesn't really help us with anything. It's just uh, I mean, going how fucked the Fallout franchise is. Yeah, just touching on that, though. Like, Fallout 3 is not, not great, but it's probably better than the show. I would imagine. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I think I think all of us who played the original games in Fallout Three would say that it's definitely got some problems for especially, but the show kind of takes it to a new level. I mean, yeah, you know, I yeah. wouldn't. I enjoyed the hell out of it when I played it back in the day, but I had no context for what Fallout even was. I'd only played this. Yeah. I think was... the game is enjoyable, but but the story is kind of shit. In Fallout yeah. 3, I would say. Thing is, I remember that being the case at the time. I don't remember people praising the story. Yeah. They were like, the story's a bit... The, this, <laughs> the ending is fucking retarded. And, like, yeah. Like, they they, they did change yes, no. it eventually because of the, the backlash <laughs> it got. So. Wow, you're so obsessed with lore that they had to change a thing instead of just enjoying the yeah. story. Why are you bullying companies? <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> to, and sometimes misapplied every single little thing it could for Fallout 3. Okay, so we don't like Fallout 3. Jim agrees. Fuck Fallout 3. But the Fallout show's chill because it's better than the Fallout Three. Like you understand yeah, that you could just flip this and be like, "Why are you hating on yeah, Fallout yeah. Three just because it didn't get the lore right? Did you not appreciate the mm-hmm. story it was trying to tell?" Yeah, you Nazi. <laughs> Nazi. There's more restraint and respect for the source <laughs> material than Bethesda did when it plundered, called back to, and sometimes misapplied every single little thing it could for Fallout Three. I love this, like you know, it misapplies. Like yeah, the show didn't misapply anything though. Don't you worry. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. As a comedy mm-hmm. show, it's fucking hilarious. Com- I, no, it isn't. It absolutely is. Jesus Christ. Christ. In my, in my little opinion, I didn't laugh. I don't feel like there's <laughs> even enough, whether or not the jokes were good or bad, there's not enough of them. Like, anyway. Because I didn't think they were I, I think I chuckled, good. like, twice in the entirety of- I, I laughed at the show a lot, but, you know, the, of the jokes, I think I chuckled twice during the entire season. Yeah, this has been one of those moments of uh, agree to disagree, I suppose. As a comedy show, it's fucking uh, hilarious. Comedy is subjective, so if you disagree <laughs> with me, know that you're wrong. Well, yeah. uh, uh, low standard for right comedy, back I see. At you. Uh, no, I'd never state your opinions for you unless we're talking yeah. about Dragon's Dogma, but personally, I laughed more with Fallout Jumpscare. than I have with any other comedy I've watched in ages, though in the interest really? of... Wow. Wow. Really? wow. That's Holy pathetic. fuck. Do you watch any comedy? <laughs> I mean... That is kind of my question, is how many TV shows do you watch? That would be my question at that point. Disclosure, I should point out, the comedies I've watched recently include the 2005 Bewitched reboot, but... I never saw that. My guess so is it's that more funny than the Bewitched film. reboot? I guess. My, my guess yeah. would be... I stand it, film, I would laugh at it more than uh, I did with Fallout. I will say... Probably laugh more guess. about it than Fallout, yes. Yeah. I laughed at Fallout, but it was... Ironically. It was oh, yeah. not in the way that the show wanted me to laugh at it. Which doesn't yeah. count. The show doesn't get points for that. I was laughing a lot at the serious scenes in the end, yeah. Yeah, shit like the water pump joke, the brilliant naive- Whoa, 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 whoa. Water pump joke. Okay, the, 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 joke, the joke, joke of the joke? don't tell- well, tell everybody we're all a team here, and then he tells them, they go, oh, don't speak. That was the funny, funny joke. The funny thing about this is, like, the water pump joke, as opposed to the incredible plot point that gets completely ignored, that's significant. And yeah. mm-hmm. It's just- you know what, you're probably right, it probably was just there as a reference, because they couldn't help themselves, and a joke. It wasn't there in any way, shape, or form. It's funny because you'd be like, oh, you complained about the law. It's like, no, the story. The story. Yeah. This isn't lawyer. Yeah. The funny thing is, like, the water chip is basically the, the Death Star of the first Fallout game. It's the entire mm-hmm. reason the entire plot happens. <laughs> so it's just yeah. funny that they never reference it past that scene. Evity of the Vault Dwellers, the mileage they get out of Power Armor Slapstick, this guy. I- you oh, that? you thought that was yeah. funny. Power Armor Slapstick. Yeah. That's just what a Fallout fan wants to hear, isn't it? We got a lot of power on a slapstick on the way, don't you worry. Yeah. I'm gonna fall down some stairs. Oh, this, this, this guy, this character... These ones this, were funny. This character, oh, yeah. This, yeah, you should this, this guy he was, he was hilarious. Yeah, this, guy, this guy did get a laugh out of me. I swear I was watching, like, a Seth Rogen yeah. movie when that, when that scene came up. It was so strange. Yeah. Power Armor Slapstick, this guy, I think the show is a genuinely good comedy. As a story, I was honestly hooked on it. Every episode built towards the next with just enough questions hanging to make me need to see where it was all going. Oh my god. It definitely had questions it asked, but they, fuck, the answers were horrible, (laughs) so... I would say, I find find this appraisal pretty vacuous, like, there's not really much actually... It was really good, I liked it, it was funny. 
this is all like this is like generic movie review things of oh yeah there was a mystery that kept me guessing with every episode it's like yep boring boring you're not telling me anything well it's just like a common this element jim right? sterling you should know better yeah. a lot of recommend like people would recommend you write shows that way even movies just like yeah throwing yeah. some intrigue on top of comedy on top of drama just just all of the things you get a little bit of everything mm -hmm. but you know have a focus blah 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 it's it, surely we should be judging how well they came through on those things Yes, not whether or not you had questions, because that's the good old, you know, the mystery box leaves you with questions. Yeah. That when, by the time you're done, you're like, oh, yeah, we learned so much, but there's still much more to learn. Yeah, but those answers, man, they gotta be really mm -hmm. good. <laughs> there, certainly were, there certainly were a lot of mystery boxes in the show, too bad all of them were full of shit. Mm -hmm. It's actually uh, pretty much like a, a 101 um, how to write a pilot for a, a show. You always set up the characters, you always set up a, a general conflict. And then you drop a big old mystery bomb right at the end, right, right at the end of the, <laughs> of the episode so that people want to watch the other ones so you can get green, greenlit for at least one or two more seasons. That's like the, the whole point of it, basically. And there's like every pilot up into through like the 90s. They kind of stopped doing it so much when uh, shows kind of became greenlit as, as a whole season, you know, especially when streaming because you didn't need to do the pilot thing anymore. But yeah, it was, it was definitely a thing that is intentionally done for almost every pilot. With just enough questions hanging to make me need to see where it was all going. It draws from the game's disparate plots while telling its own story that moves the overall Fallout narrative forward in- When you say it draws from the game's disparate plots, you're talking about the fact that she's looking for a dad? Or, or is it like that the MCR even exists in the show? Is it, I, she's is looking it, for a dad, she's a courier for the Cold Fusion head. I'm wondering if it's just like, yeah, there's the Enclave and there's the MCR, they're in it, so that's moving the story forward. And look at Ghoul, that's like the games. Yeah. Ooh, mm -hmm. wow, I remember Ghouls from the video games, from the Fallout video games. I yeah, like yeah, video games. Video games, I had yeah. Ghouls in them, like, like the show. Moving the story forward, we're bringing back the Enclave a fucking game. In ways not yeah, this seen feels since like Fallout. a regression in every way. Yeah. Did you oh, all wait. see that tweet from uh, Chris Avalone saying that uh, Todd Howard had a hard on for uh, the Enclave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know yeah, who all those people are, he has a hard on for the brother who does steal than the Enclave. But that's you know, the super both. hard on. That's the yeah, exactly. mega hard on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the overall Fallout narrative forward in ways not seen since Fallout New Vegas, though not quite as dramatic. <laughs> Is that Copeland? <laughs> just, just Jesus Christ! Just no, like, like this, this is like Fallout New Vegas. Like, wow. <laughs> Okay. That, can we repeat that? I think I missed that. That'd yes. be like saying Rise of Skywalker is like fucking Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah, similar, similar, you know. Plots while telling its own story that moves the overall Fallout narrative forward in ways not seen since Fallout New Vegas, though oh, not quite as dramatic. No. Oh, no. Not quite as dramatic, okay? <laughs> you know, or well written, or well constructed, or supported. Oh. Or like it in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> yeah, know. exactly. That. But at least the result is terrible. an original piece of Fallout media that, aside from a handful of continuity snarls, fits right into the series. Yeah, just a handful. A handful. A handful. Yeah, only a few. Nukes, yeah. shady slands, but whatever. It's just, just one. It'd be that meme. Next I can't hold all these continuity one. issues. They've got so many. I'm just it's dropping all over the floor. <laughs> Deserving, in my opinion, of canon status. Again, it's more. Oh, is that how that works? You get to be. You earn canon status. I, I wish it was that way because then Star Wars would just, just be the OT. <laughs> like, <laughs> they didn't say, in my opinion, though, Mother. Oh, okay. Respectful and yeah. fitting than a lot of Bethesda's <laughs> stuff. Also, Walton Goggins is in it. I don't have enough good things to say about Walton Goggins. One of the best. Yeah. All right. He's mm -hmm. great. I mean, yeah. Yep. <laughs> the one thing everyone agrees upon whether or not you hate the show things the show does is despite its abundant humor it really highlights how fucking horrible the wasteland is no it does not i think nah, i think no. it undermines it no. considering how yeah, consequenceless all the major events are no it doesn't this yeah. this is a perfect example radiation comes up this time and then is gone like yeah. you, you, she gets the the rat away from Maximus, and then we just we're not dealing with radiation again. We do we don't we don't do that sort of thing, you know. It's like remember when Thaddeus is like, oh, what do I need to go? And it's like, oh, you gotta go. With that it's like, isn't that hit by radiation? It's like, yeah, but you're a ghoul now, so it's fine. It's just like, what the? When did what? I? <laughs> like, what? I need to point out too. He, they're talking about Shady Sands. It's irradiated as shit. Where Maximus and Lucy were standing for twenty minutes. No, that's mm -hmm. fine because they're also temporary ghouls in that scene. <laughs> Maybe that's why it had to be 15 years later because they needed the shot of them walking into Shady, Shady Sands. I mean, Moldaver has our entire base there with, you know, all, all the people, so. 
so More many more than that though like i mean there's old people like isn't that kind of evidence that it's it's probably not that hard to stay alive out here if there's a bunch of old people out in the wasteland what I mean, I don't feel like this is, this is very inconsistently addressed. It, they're using this yeah. visual for this, whoever edited this, because it's like, this is one of the few examples of it looking pretty rough, but it's all, um, it's all got, like, specific purposes. It's not built for, like, flavoring of how difficult it is to live in this world. This is to make her mad at the ghoul, to try to run away, the finger thing happens, and then, you know, will she, will she kill him or will she spare him? And then she spares him. That's, that's like, what all of this is for. I, I, I feel it feels like I'm to live in this yeah, world. Yeah, it's all temporary. <laughs> I'll be surprised they fucking remember radiation by the time you hit, like, season three. Oh, fuck. No. Nope. <laughs> Demonstrating with cruelty what it does to a person in just a few days. And it's not really what the wasteland does to a person, but what the ghoul no, is doing to her. Having... Yeah, she would just get water. Well, sorry, I mean, like, change this... over the course of a few days. He's been doing this for 200 years. Well, and there's people who are as was mentioned, there's old people who are doing well. Like, you know, the, the idea is like, look how difficult it is. It's like, well, she got captured by him. This is unique. <laughs> this is a really bad thing that's happening to her. Also, like, I mean, even just boil the water. Like, you could try that. Might well, not I don't think that removes the radiation. No, but it would actually remove some of the bacteria that could also that be super good, yes. bad for her. Yeah, that she should do regardless, water. but yeah. Yeah. Showcasing how fragile any form of respite is in a world gone apocalyptic. And this brings us to Shady Sands. Okay. Does it bring us right. to Shady yeah, Sands? Right. I feel like this is another non sequitur. Uh, yeah, that just, didn't really. Yeah, we just, we're just sort of wandering. We're wandering this wasteland of a video. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> One of the most iconic locations in the Fallout universe, Shady Sands' importance as the birthplace of the New California Republic, as well as its representation of hope in the post apocalypse, can't be overstated. It was the closest the wasteland came to thriving in that game, a place that maintains a semblance of peace and has even bothered oh, with farming as opposed to merely scavenging. In the brutal, unforgiving, fucking hard world of Fallout, Shady Sands has always been a welcome respite, for as much as the Wasteland could ever offer respite. By the time of Fallout TV's story, Shady Sands is a car. Respite scene. in a lot of places in the games, just to be clear. Yeah. Well, it's just funny yep. to introduce it this way, because I'm like, where are you going to go? <laughs> like, yeah, that's yeah. Like, that defense is like, you're going somewhere with this. I can see with the, like, ah, it's a... It's for, it's hope, and I'm guessing it's something to do with, like, yeah, people are upset that, you know, like, the world changed, that this place that was hopeful got destroyed, because that's the point, is that the wasteland destroys things. You can see yeah. it's, like, it's it clearly ramping up to something. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. One of the most pathetic uh, defenses I saw of Shady Sands was that they included the well. Like, if you, in the ending of the original game, if you end up saving Sh Shady Sands or you do a good, a good job, you see like a close up of uh, Shady Sands like well, and they kind of included that well for like one second in the flashback of Shady Sands before it gets nuked. Wow. And people were like praising that as some sort of, I could, I could find the imagery, but yeah, it's like, you can barely tell because it's way in the background, but you know, that that's that's the uh, Shady Sands that is portrayed in the flashback. And this is the well. So if you look really closely, uh, in the oh center, like bottom center, you see the well slightly, like in the background, and people are like, "Wow, they put so much detail in! It's so amazing!" It's like, did you miss the part where they fucking nuked it and also got it three hundred and eighty <laughs> miles approximately? But the well, the that way. well, <laughs> you're you're gonna, look at the okay, well. so Shady Sands, <laughs> it's, it's, like else. it's great. <laughs> Shady Sands's current health is law. The well is story. So you need to make sure you know what you're caring about. All right. Yeah, it's a bit ridiculous a bombed out nuclear crater and here we come to what's really pissed off a good sector of the fan base in this now viral tweet the fate of shady sands has been presented as wanton disrespect a slap in presented as yeah <laughs> it just is i mean it, it is, is. Yeah. I don't, I don't, exactly. I, tell me your tweet. interpretation then you could have said the story anywhere uh, in, in the full of the universe you could have said this on the like... coast is the argument of this video going to be that people who are obsessed with lore refuse to allow their stories and their world to change? They're unreceptive to any changes that may occur in the lore. They want everything to be rigid. Yes. And they don't understand Probably. that storytelling is dynamic and fluid and changes. Is that well, what the, the only reason be in this I, I think what this was pushed back on that? And, 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 and then the continuation would be like, and this is the reason why when people complain about something that's a retcon, it's actually them being a bunch of babies that just want things to stay the same way forever because they don't realize that the world changes 
and I need to grow up. Am I like, I feel like, I, well, what I would that like it's, it's very it's accurate, not, yeah. Not understanding why people don't like ultra nihilism. Be like, yeah, it's moving forward. It got fuck nuked. that. We don't, fuck need to go, we don't need to go that far. Like, you could just talk about how much this doesn't make sense as a decision, not from just potential, but also from what they tell us happened in the world. Hank blew this up with a nuke. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And it's like, well, because vault tech are retarded clowns. You're like, that's crap. Make a better reason. <laughs> I, I guess part of it is I wonder how much of this is going to be meta of like, and you see, this is reflected in these people. Like, they just can't well, grow so up, you know? Like, they, your assumption they of... need their world to be a nice, cozy place, and this is reflected in their political positions or something. Like, I, this, that's, I don't know. I feel like that's the direction it's all heading in. Your assumption of what's happened means that uh, there's going to have to be a really good position of defense for the meaning and the substance that came out of the decision to destroy yes. Shady Sands. That's the only way that can work. You've got to tell I, us why no, this I, was a I, really good storytelling yeah. decision, and it, mm -hmm. and it quote-unquote, whatever damage it does to the law is irrelevant it, because of the it meaning might, it provides it now. It might just be that it's change, that it's change and change is good. Uh, and that, like, this is regression, though. Not you change. might be right. We'll see. Let's I see. like that what's included in these screenshots, though, is the, the quote there that says, if it makes you feel any better, it didn't work out. It's just such a <laughs> depressing state. It was like, Shady says, didn't work out. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> it's like, okay, didn't <laughs> work out, I guess. Bye. Yeah. I and all also of a sudden, I heard that... a thousand Fallout New Vegas playthroughs cry out and suddenly be silent. <laughs> mm -hmm. The other strange I... thing is, about, like, the map, the timeline we see on the chalkboard, it says, the fall of Shady Sands, and then there's a nuke, which seems to imply that it fell and then it was nuked not it fell because it was nuked well so that's the Maybe. big that's the big conversation that happened and the the evidence in favor of it being nuked in 2077 is the fact that it's the only image on the whole board that doesn't have a date on it so it makes there's you a, think it, like there's like, a surely... few arguments there's Sorry, well, there's uh, numerous uh, references. To... Go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, Sorry. people say that, like, the one date that you would probably have ironclad and certain of is when it got fucking nuked, if you were studying this yeah. as an event. Why wouldn't you put the date of it on there? And then the, the sort of intuitive response would be, well, because it happened in 2077. And that's what that means. It's like, Shady Sands fell, nuke. Like uh, the, I understand how people draw that conclusion, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. The the thing I wanted to mention is there's multiple references throughout the show that uh, imply the nuke was in 2077 as well. Or sorry, 2277, where um, in episode four, Lucy references the uh, the plague of 77, where people starved, including her mother. So that's when uh, uh, okay. Hank uh, told. Point. Yeah, that's when Hank told his children that uh, the mother died. Why would he tell her that if this is one of the cope arguments, by the way, if he nuked it several years later for some reason, if she's still alive in 77? That genuinely, okay. like, uh, part, I can of, believe part, that. part of the problem with that is like, I have no idea the mechanics of him nuking it. I don't know where the nukes come from or who authorizes them or how he, you know, like, I can't say how long it would have taken him to do that process. I don't know how easy it is, but yes, you're right. That, that would naturally, the time he spent away from home until he was back, we assume he nuked Shady Sands. There's also, um, I don't know how much people want to take this as evidence, but in one of the end credit sequences uh, for episode five, I believe, it's zooming out from a locker in a school in Shady Sands, and you see the ruins of Shady Sands. You see skeletons in a bus. The book it's uh, zooming out from has a bunch of dates stamped on it because it's a, it's a library book, and the last date in that is uh, 76. Hmm. And and also like reference to Fallout the, seventy six, the, the fall <laughs> multiplayer role playing game uh, from Bethesda Game Studio. Also, like the fall of something usually is a historical term because you don't know that something is falling until until well after it did, right? You don't you can't yeah. select the fall of civilization until like 30, 40, 100 years later. Like, oh yeah, that's when that's when Rome fell, you know? Because I middle, mean, when it's happening, that, you don't that... really know. But but like any sort of uh, societal collapse would be overshadowed by a million times by a nuke destroying the actual city so yeah. the idea that there was some sort of societal collapse in 2077 oh and by the way they also got nuked is hysterical <laughs> like obviously the date the fall would be the nuke there no amount of societal collapse before that would matter compared to the actual city being the obliteration of everything I mean, there 
it, it, it yeah. could also just refer to a city being, you know, taken sort of thing. You could say the fall of, you know, Constantinople or something like as the city being taken that day. Yeah. So it can actually be it's like so a specific weird to phrase it that way. Just but, but when the, you think yeah. the nuking of shitty sands. And then, and but then, uh, if it did actually fail before it got nuked, why would it get nuked? Why would why would Hank go through the trouble of nuking a failed state? So they or can't take the children again. To make sure he hates them that much. Yeah. Well, it, it is actually said to be that he was a petty fuck, and he did it because he was like, "I don't like you. I'm going to nuke you." It's like, what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and then that, that's how away from that's me, how so we'll take deals with city. competition is the quote. Yeah, yep. but, but but you know, Brotherhood of Steel with their, like their giant airships and mech suits and stuff like that. that no, NBD, but you know, oh, you've got a well. Fuck you guys, right? <laughs> <laughs> I also, nice. I'll make a reference to the. Uh, sign again uh it says it's the first capital of the ncr and that kind of seems like a um there were later capitals yeah that, that yeah that there are later capitals and that oh the capital of the ncr hasn't been nuked it's the former capital that's been nuked but new vegas which takes place in uh 2281 makes multiple references uh to it still being the capital including yeah. um in freeside the ncr are giving out uh supplies to their own people and you have to pass a quiz. Dude. One of them is, what is the capital of the NCR? The answer is Shady Sands. Could well, you imagine quizzes, so what now? Could you imagine if Bethesda <laughs> released a full update for New Vegas that switched out all of those references? <laughs> no. Oh my Could you god, fucking I wouldn't put it past no. them. <laughs> it's probably, it, it actually might happen. No, no, we're not, we're not wrong, we're not wrong. Yeah, yeah just was... like dub over the voices, like in the, in yeah. the year 2265, it was you know, <laughs> it's the obvious, audio, yeah, the obvious robot voice. Twenty-two, sixty-nine. Oh, it would also In break this all the fucking tweet, the fate of Shady Sands has been presented as wanton disrespect, a slap in the face to Fallout fans who wanted a Fallout show full of Fallout stuff for Fallout fans. They got Fallout stuff. It was full of Fallout stuff. That's not the thing they wanted. Yep. They wanted respect. It was, it was crammed full of it. You could say. Don't give a fuck. They go, oh, you, you, you know what? Who cares if an entire fucking area was destroyed and all the stories were set to rubble? You've got your pit boys. It's like, okay, oh, thanks, that's bro. Fallout. Fallout is pit boys. Yeah. And to recognize from Fallout, personally, mate, I fucking love what happened to Shady Sands. Here we go. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> What's wrong with Shady Sands? Hmm. Why does what's wrong? What's his uh, problem with Shady Sands? Represents Why? hope. Oh. He's a nihilist. I don't, I, well, oh. I guess we're about to find out. It's just the the nature of like I I love what happened to it. It's like getting destroyed. All right. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah. Fuck it. I, I love Look, there are a number of reasons for this, and we will go through them. But as I do, I want to ask you a question. What do you want from your video game adaptations? Do you want something that contributes? Same thing I want from all my stories. Fucking coherent. And substantive, meaningful. Making sense for starters. And mm. It's so hard to respect the thing that you're trying to make money off. Please. Give it a chance. <laughs> Just try. It's to the story and moves it forward. Even make or do money. you want a theme park ride of references and in-jokes? That's exactly what the fucking show is. And you know what? That's not even the worst yeah, part yeah. of it. Like, the fact that it's a theme park that shows off Fallout stuff would be forgivable if it could actually be good as well. Yeah, you can have good mm -hmm. roller coasters. Designed to pop that. a niche audience. And, by the way, both are valid. Both can be great. But I do ask you think about what you want and if that's all you want. I'm a fan of the anticlimactic. If it's done right... Uh describes your channel. What's funny is I don't think that was done right in that movie. Uh, well, maybe that's... I. Is this an example of it being done right? Or is I this assume the that's... opposite of that? Well, okay, I guess there's room for that. Why I'm assuming this the is... Because it could be uh, ironic or know. something, I mean, right? I could, I could say, yeah, I could say that. You could, you could try and make that way, but I was going to say, like, what always bothered me about this was um, that thing, the power level on the, it's called the the Widowmaker or something, right? That that missile. Uh, I think. Oh damn! What I can't remember what it's called. I think I can't uh, remember because it's um, it's Justin amazing. Hammer was describing it. How amazing! It's like yeah. the the, you know, the the greatest thing he's got. It's going to just annihilate any foe that you want to. Oh, the ex-wife is what it's called. Okay. Um, <laughs> the thing is, Tony and uh, War Machine are right there. Like, like I guess they just don't yeah, care don't about the nature of its much. friendly fire. It and then really secondly, amazing. they're like about to they load it up to fire it. Um, Whiplash keeps his mask down. It's like, yeah. what the hell are you he doing? 
like i guess i guess i presume he he must know that it's not gonna work well it's the thing it felt like everyone was in on the meme <laughs> watching that yeah. scene we all knew it wasn't gonna work it's like all right i guess mm -hmm. so we just did it for show a big monster heel losing a wrestling match in one punch after terrorizing their rival for months is an anti-climax but with great storytelling it can be a poetic end to a great story it's one of my favorite tropes i also like a bit of a tragedy okay. i dislike the constant okay. need for a happy ending in media none of this has anything to do with fallout sorry yeah, I, of, yeah it's, it's just to do with fallout or the destruction of shady sounds. i don't i don't even want to unpack that but like if it's satis if it's a satisfying ending i don't know that it's an anti-climax but let's we'll, we'll just move on mm -hmm. yeah the fact test audiences hated the original amazing ending for little shop of horrors because the plant one really bloody aggravates me the fall of shady sands okay. makes sense as a tragic reminder that the wasteland is a fucking wasteland Okay, but if so, you make it not a wasteland, then it so, won't be a so, wasteland, okay, you so I don't even... My impression... <laughs> I, I thought that the point of, like, the good Fallout games was that they actually showed a meaningful progression in the, the wasteland. That it doesn't yes. just keep reverting back yes. to the same state. That you start to get new societies with different perspectives on, on like, governance and, and the structure of the society. And so, like, the whole point of Fallout... The idea of war never changes isn't meant to be the idea that everything keeps getting reset to absolute chaos. It's meant to be that, like, you just keep seeing new conflicts arising yeah. between differing perspectives on the way that the world should be. Yeah, everything yeah, that so made like, the, the will. The reasons for war present. remain the same, Mr. Still, still present. present. And so, like, in, like, Fallout New Vegas, it's like, what are the ideological differences between, like, the NCR and uh, Mr. House and... Uh, and um uh, the legion and and like the and and how that like creates conflict and whether or not that's born from like nostalgia for the old world misconceptions or like misunderstand like the essentially that it's not meant to just be yeah the wasteland is terrible and everything keeps getting destroyed constantly and there's no progression anytime that there's progression it gets reset so that you can just have it be like raiders running around and it's just chaos. Like, if anything, that's kind of yeah, raiders, monsters, expanses of land, boring. little like yeah. like rundown places where spooky people will live or spooky creatures will live, and then vault exploration or you know ruined cities exploration. Then a couple of settlements that are really, really like rundown, small, and yeah. just full of characters you can't trust because everyone's and, out and for and themselves. As yeah, far as we'll ever go. A shallow, a shallow perspective that yes, to progress. To progress the story of the potential downfall of the NCR is just to have it get nuked rather than, well, the NCR falls apart because of problems that they struggle with, like about, you know, whether they're stretched too thin or whether there's corruption within the NCR. Like, instead, it's just, yeah, it got nuked. And see, that's yeah. really good. Like, that's good for, that's thematically potent in Fallout. That well, and... It's not that anything will get destroyed because of any of the actual problems with, like, the institutions or with the government. You know, it's just, well, one guy got really mad, so we blew it up. And then that's it. That's the end. Nothing gets any better because nothing means anything because I'm a nihilist and you having hope is stupid. And and just for perspective, like this isn't like the nukes dropped 10, 20 years ago. It the nukes dropped almost 220 years ago per the mm -hmm. Fallout canon, if you want to treat it that way. Shady Sands, uh, as of the date of the Fallout show is supposed to be set, would be ninety-nine mm -hmm. years old. We got so, it from the, the horse's mouth. Yeah. Like, he explicitly said in those interviews, he does not intend to allow Fallout to get past a certain point because it no longer would be the genre he wants it to be. That's what mm -hmm. he said. He's, and he yeah, applied I mean, it to Deadwood. That, that's he was just like, fucking if, stupid. If Deadwood has insurance or cars, it's no longer Deadwood. So he can't, he can't be doing that. It's like... Yeah. And it's just funny because, like, it, I, I saw some photos. That the town I live in is actually not that old. So I saw some photos of 100 years ago, like in the 20s. The, the the 1920s right and it was like dirt roads model tees like it was legitimately looked like some sort of dusty western town 100 years ago and obviously you can accelerate that by having technology and you know cars and whatever imported into this place but the idea that shady sands wouldn't be wouldn't progress after five generations is crazy like it would be a lot more advanced than just a well and maybe like a house or two it's just it's just yeah that i i guess yeah you're just it's almost like uh hank was like the stand-in for the a grammar whomever uh, said that where it's like i don't i don't want to have it progress i just want to nuke it back to the wasteland because i like westwood or westwood the, the thing is if you want to have Deadwood. that story set in this universe you could have it set at any time at any place in within the u.s you don't have to have it set in california yeah, yeah, why not set it in a totally new place where you can exactly. have everything be totally new? Like, why, why set it in a place where you will necessarily start to tread 
on Fallout 1, 2, and New Vegas? Yeah, and yeah, I, think, I think the answer is pretty straightforward because it's funny because Sterling's like, oh, well, yeah, they don't, you know, like they actually were pretty reserved. It's like, you know what would have been more reserved? Setting it in like Chicago or setting it in Seattle Doing or something. something new with this yeah. amazing somewhere Or Texas, 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 like New Orleans, actually, yeah, something like that. Yeah, Florida, just somewhere that isn't where we've seen before. And then there's yeah, time, since, man, timeline too. there's a lot of... And yeah, exactly. actually you could just, you, you say like, this is happening at the same time as Fallout 1 or whatever. Yeah, yeah like, that, that would be fine. interesting. But yeah. that would be... Another issue that Jim seems to be having is he's he's confusing the descriptive with the prescriptive again. He's saying, "Oh yeah, of course bad things happen. It's a wasteland." It's like, "Well, no, it's a wasteland. <laughs> yeah, it's a wasteland." Well, yeah, yeah. It really happened. Happened. If the show yeah. opened with every single character got shot in the back of the head mystically, and I just go, "Well, it's the wasteland, man." Well, it's a wasteland. Bad things happen. Yeah. It's just a wacky, <laughs> crazy wasteland out there. I mean, this yeah. is just the thing that's that a, sort of happens. Instead of because events. of all the events and because of everything, it is called a wasteland. I, I would also argue, too, that uh, the whole perpetual wasteland thing is a problem with the Bethesda games. It's it, it feels like an active problem that none of the world is progressing, even in the areas that they're showing. Which like is 200 weird. years, yeah, well, 200 years because, after um, the road, uh, war, and people are still building shacks out of scrap metal and wood. I think you it's could have a game uh, series that's set in like 2270 or whatever. You could pick whatever date. And every game could take place in that year, just in very different places. Yeah, we're gonna go to up here to going. Seattle. We're gonna go down here to you know Las Vegas, New Vegas. Yeah. Go over here. Oh, oh, it's Little Rock. Yeah, we're gonna go over there. It's Savannah, Georgia. You, you, totally different places. And the plots aren't like super world changing, so you can have multiple games just forever that are in basically the same time period. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll say it's kind of a bad habit that I think Fallout Two introduced. Fallout Two jumped eighty years after the original. But that that is still applicable because you don't necessarily because the wasteland is going to be a lot more disconnected. So you could just go to a different location and do a different time, and it would still be like the your, the the, the three hundred or so uh, square mile radius that the game world is set in is still going to be that's that's going to be your whole world because you don't have the internet, you don't have air travel, you don't have any of that stuff for the most part. That so you could still tell a, a unique story that doesn't have to be perfectly connected you to know, all the timeline events of the other game. Something I just realized, and I kind of wish was in the video now, there's no um, recognition, remorse, sort of um, funeral proceedings or anything for all the people who died in 33 or 32. Oh, nope. yeah. Yeah, fuck them. You'd think yeah, they didn't even the bodies. The off. They yeah, don't they even the go to bury the bodies. No. Nope. Like, how fucked up is that? The, the, that's all their beloved mm. friends and family that they would have known better than some of us know each other. So like, like the cousins you see every summer they, growing up or something like that, yeah. They must have some way of like dealing with the bodies and the deceased. Like, well, the well I was going to say, like, sex you with. can make arguments about the nature of respecting the dead of 32 from 33's perspective that they saw them once per three years or whatever, but I'm talking about the people who died in 33. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. A lot yeah, of them right. died and nobody gave a shit. <laughs> they didn't even, we didn't yeah. know their names. Yeah. Also, where are the children? Where, where did they go? They all disappeared. They're, they're, cra they're trapped <laughs> in the schoolroom. <laughs> <laughs> it almost feels like, a like in there. <laughs> it almost feels like there was like an episode cut actually because mm. doesn't there feel like a, an entire story yeah. between the initial battle and them being all imprisoned all the all the raiders in prison and all the bodies like you don't see the bodies again you don't see any of the original aftermath like there'd be a lot of grieving remorse what how could this well, yeah, happen no, it's like the there, yeah it is a was... strange part of the episode i i noticed when i was watching it how quickly they get over this yeah. The most traumatic thing that could pretty much ever happen to a lot of people. Yeah, and I don't buy the whole like retarded thing in response, incredibly... you know? Yeah, sad. Yeah, stupid people get sad. Yeah, stupid people get really sad. No. Stupid no. people <laughs> perhaps get way sadder than they ought to. And, and, and the, if you're going to play them as sheltered, naive people, then this should absolutely destroy them. I mean, they're oh, yeah. literally yeah. sheltered. Shatter literally their sheltered entire people. perception of the world. And as mentioned in uh, in chat, we know that they do burials. Like uh, it was mentioned about Rose, right? So it's like, so we, the, the, that must have happened. They just didn't feel like showing us, which I feel like could have been a really effective Ooh. scene. There, there is yeah. one very quick shot of them dragging bodies down to an area labeled compost, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> that's a little weird. <laughs> didn't even catch that. Oh. Remember Silo? It's Mahler? a very quick shot. I do remember Silo. It was better. That was neat. That was really nice.
<laughs> I also got a shout out to another good another good show that I, I remember enjoying it. It's from 2006, so it's like a little old. So you'll mostly just notice it when the music that they pick. But please don't say ever... from 2006 or a little old. Please don't don't. I'm sorry. Don't I'm sorry. <laughs> Matrix was only What's 10 years rag? ago. Matrix was only 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> what? Um, Jer- what? Has anyone else, did anyone else see Jericho? I Sounds read, familiar, uh, but I don't I think I saw it. No, I've seen Wasn't that. that like, there's something with like a nuke going off, and it was like post-apocalypse. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, it's like a, it's, it's like a over. mid-apocalypse. I would say it's like a mid-apocalypse because it, it starts off before the nukes drop, and the the cool thing is it never goes above like ground level, meaning that it's only you only see the apocalypse from the average person, the average civilian's uh, viewpoint in a single town. So they only they 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 don't even know what happened at the beginning. They they don't know, even know really that a nu- that they thought it might have been just one nuke. Then they get a call later like that was interrupted, like a, a voice message that was interrupted with a nuke from like another town. Then they realize then it's oh it's an international threat. So things like that, like the, it's like a slow discovery of the the gravity and the scope of what happens. And I thought it was a really well done show in terms of that. And that it actually tackles yeah. it. It does tackle a lot of these similar themes, like the idea of like you know who nuked us was it even another country we don't even know things like that yeah Mm because how would you find out that an an apocalypse even actually happened yeah some of them sometimes they could legitimately be very subtle if you're living in particular areas yeah yeah so i recommend that show if you want to kind of more it's not a perfect show but i definitely like the aspect where it's like you don't even you know zero all you see is an explosion and the power gets cut off and for like the first two couple episodes, they're just trying to restore power and order because people are freaking out because so much is built on the infrastructure. So it's a really interesting premise, at least. It's got uh, Morgan from The Walking Dead and Skeet Ulrich. And then I think it's also the girl that was um, the, the chick from Uncharted, the blonde. Uh, Sorry, my puppies are going nuts. <laughs> yeah. nah, right. But you're right about yeah, yes, yeah, Skeet, Ul- Skeet Ulrich. I think that's his best role, actually. And yeah, it does have the, the guy that was oh, in The yeah. Walking Dead. A huge part of the story is the erosion of Vault Dweller Luce's naivety and Shady Sands. Eh. Except for the three times it's reset, but. Well, it just bounces around all over the place, really. It's not very. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ending an off screen tragedy is the exact kind of heart sink to punctuate that. To really make her question herself. To question her belief that there could be something good built up there. What? Are no. we meant to think that there's no. literally no way to build anything good? Is that like actually Dude. what you think the takeaway of the show Dude, is? That ain't like the games at all, just to be clear. I don't even she... know that that's what we're supposed to take away from Lucy's thought on it. She said, do you remember? Yeah, it's like... so weird. She says when she first finds out about Shady Sands that that was what her job was supposed to be, was to come out of the vaults and build society. And then she finds mm-hmm. out that it was yeah, all she's... destroyed. It's like She's it... just thought about it. Yeah, it's 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 weird though. It's like, wait, Lucy, are you upset because it happened without you? Does that mean you think it wouldn't work unless you were a part of it, or do you find it to be less meaningful that now that if you were to do it, it's it's not the first time it's done since the nukes? I didn't like, get that at all. Well, they don't explore any of it with her, and so now mm. uh, we've got a conclusion here that Lucy's wondering whether it's even possible to build anything nice because this was not ni- like. Listen to this; such a weird take. Sans ending an off-screen because Hank tragedy is the. Ex- <laughs> Well, that yeah. kind of heart sink to punctuate that. To really make her question herself. To question her belief that there could be something good built up there. What is that? What do you that's mean? Not what, that's not what the yeah. show is saying. Like, like it, <laughs> Hank will always nuke the nice things. Oh, like, stop. What, what's... No, it is not. <laughs> I like, I legit am lost. Like, what do you think was happening? That she thought, oh man, the fact that Shady Sands got nuked means there probably wasn't anything good there. What are you talking about? This is why oh, we that's, can't that's have nice things. Right now, that's the what the she's imagery, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. The imagery that was used in that was her realizing that her mother was the ghoul. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's safe to say that that was what was happening in that scene was that she was yeah. upset that her mom was a ghoul. No, Fringy, oh, wow. she was thinking this is why oh, we can't well, have nice that. things. Yeah, yes. and, and or never change. Is mom like, like that's the yeah. that's the part there. Well, see again, her skeleton if, mom. If we're dealing with a video that was critical, everyone will start saying, "Did they even watch the show?" But now I feel like this is positive, and we're not even thinking about that. But it's mm-hmm. true. It's like, did you even watch the show? <laughs> like, what do you? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> it is indeed the drama of the piece. It's also Im- no. I don't it think isn't. it is actually. The <laughs> no. I'd say the big realization is Lucy's notion of who she can and can't trust, and the fact that she's yeah. against her father at the end, and she's for the ghoul at the end. That's like the big thing that the writers were proud of themselves for. Is it possible mm-hmm. some of this is the editor's fault? 
Um, I don't just not not. No, I mean the, the, right the, the my the bit, my main issue wasn't even the visuals there; it was the statement because I don't mind using yeah. Lucy being emotional to support a statement about how she realized something. You know, I, I would prefer an accurate visual in terms of a scene that matched, but there, there isn't one, so it's not the editor's fault. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't think the statement realized. realized. Yeah, you can you can trick the the video a little bit by showing a, an unrelated scene yeah. that kind of expresses your what you're trying to convey. Even if it's not 100% well, accurate, like if, but yeah, the statement is wrong. If we made reference to off-screen, they killed a robot, and you showed Ultron getting destroyed, and someone said, like, that's not even the same fucking IP. It would be like, yeah, I know. <laughs> just, just, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, but, I, like um, I, I did that I did that in your video a little bit, where I, I, uh, I showed the picture of the guy wanking in the Brotherhood, and then I showed a, the awkward close-up yeah. uh, when they take the, the, the hood off of uh, Maximus's armor, and he's like... Ooh, and I mean, yeah, perfection. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Just referencing wanking, but you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was not at all related, but it was funny. So. Important to note that Shady Sands' relative safety was always rocky, was always on the brink. In New Vegas, yeah, the end was on the brink. brink. One, one really I... mad guy just. It was, it was, yeah, it was always on the brink of one nuclear explosion. I mean, yes. yeah, that's true. Was like, Literally the most peaceful the place in the world. Yeah. It, Hank, Hank's issue with Shady Sands has nothing to do with the entire history of Shady Sands. Nothing. Yeah. It's all to do with his yeah, girlfriend, like it, it, his it wife was walking off. Role. That was it. Yeah. It, you yeah. took my which, children. Which the nature of like what's lame about it, right, is that the destruction of Shady Sands and the NCR has nothing to do with the NCR and what it was and what it represented and what its potential flaws were. It this was is... just that some guy got big mad and then blew it up. This shit's <laughs> downright sneaky, because what's happening here yeah. is the argument that everyone else who hates it is making, saying Shady Sands' issues could very well have led to something cataclysmic that shut down a lot of significant portions of the NCR slash Shady Sands. That could have happened, could have been nice to see. That's precisely what can't happen because you wiped it off the map. Yeah. Yep. You said it's out of you play. Fi you, you figure if his problem was, you know, just the NCR being a thing, they would have nuked it a long fucking time ago. There's so many layers, too. Like, I actually forgot about this lore. Uh, Shady Sands was actually founded by Vault Dwellers. Uh, vault 15 left Shady Sands, or left the, left the uh, Vault and founded yeah. Shady Sands partially, right? But you know what actually led to Shady Sands' growth? And this is com completely antithetical to the Fallout show. Caravans. It's mm -hmm. a, it was a trading town. So... Literally, capitalism restored humanity, but we're meant to believe that capitalism <laughs> <laughs> ruined humanity. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, this so reminds me of like I know that fast travel. Yeah, I know the show thinks that Hank nuked the NCR because, like, no, we need to destroy civilization. That way, we have a blank slate when we start over. But like, there are so many other places where people are other than Shady Sands. A lot he of hasn't other made that his own personal vendetta to just us like oh new vegas i'll nuke that as well no he doesn't do any of that and so the only way to interpret it is he's mad about her leaving him that's so the only interpretation yeah. he was he was big mad so he blew him up <laughs> yeah huge <laughs> cuck yeah, energy it's so stupid <laughs> It really is. He, he got cucked oh. by Shady Sands, so he nuked it. That's how upset he was. He didn't, because he didn't go to the like Enclave and say, uh-oh, it looks like civilization is still kind of, like, creeping up again. We should redestroy everything. Mm -hmm. Even Which though is that is explicitly do. something that Vault Tech will take care of somewhat eventually, right? Like, we're, that's part of their goal, is we got to clear out everyone, because only us, the super managers, are allowed to you know, take care of civilization <laughs> to flower it. Yeah. Which is so Even there's so much we're wrong with it. But... Vaults all over the US, not composed of super managers, but whatever. And uh another another spoiler, but uh, there's a certain game in the in the franchise that addresses that the idea of wiping everyone except for yourself off the map. And they use basically a variant of the FEV virus, but they inoculate only the people they want to save. So they inoculate themselves and then use this virus that could spread through the air. Like they could they could release it in like off the coast of the West US and it'll eventually spread throughout the world and kill everybody who's not pre-inoculated. So that was like, that existed I think a hundred years be before the events of the show or something like that, like 80, uh, mm. maybe not a hundred, but some... like several decades. So like that, that was a much more effective way to basically wipe the slate clean, so to speak. Oh yeah. This but, reminds yeah. me of if someone said like, what a shame that they lasered the New Republic in a scene and we don't get to see anything else for them. And someone responds, you think it's impossible for a planet to be destroyed by like a Death Star laser? Yeah, that was the like, problem. Why, uh, 
why did not address the and then you, and you refocus you re-explain and then they say you think it's impossible for like a governmental system to collapse and you're just like i'm just gonna go home <laughs> i'm gonna go to sleep i can't it's do this also anymore tiring like, and, and just all this having to be like, you know, the NCR wasn't perfect. There was actually several moments of, you know, uh, maybe corruption or uh, instability that could lead to all this. It's like, why are you even explaining any of this? This isn't relevant at all to what happens in the show. None yeah, of it. It's just deflecting. Just, it's, it's just Hank Nukna because he's a little cuck. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, simultaneously, you're a nerd C for caring about the lore, but here's a reason why it could yeah. make sense with the lore. Yeah. Here's yeah. a lore reason why it actually all makes sense, yeah. and you're wrong yeah. to point that out. I don't even know why you brought it up, actually, which is what you did. But lore is dumb, so that's But lore is very, lore. very dumb. Yeah. <laughs> TR was Man. spread so thin that whatever firepower it might have had, it could barely govern for shit, and violence was always its answer to most problems. It could, it could be argued that rather than a curveball plot Wait, just like, is he describing the NCR? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because he, right before the pause, he said they were always on the brink, which, by the way, no, they weren't. The they brink weren't. of what? They this... Hank Nukin? They had, them? like, they had, like <laughs> taxes, <laughs> man. Nukin. They were, they yeah. were, like, taxes were back. They had that shit figured out. They had an mm -hmm. army. They had a well, president. All, I feel like no. all that it's pointing out is, uh, yeah, but the thing is, is that what you get in the show is not, maybe the NCR would fall apart because of problems with the NCR and competing ideologies. It's the NCR falls apart because a really big mad guy nuked the capital. Well, yeah. If I went to the Roman Empire and I set off a nuke in the middle of Rome, it's like, well, and, it yeah, matter. and then you'd be like, well, yeah, the fall, you know, the fall of Rome and like the overextension of the empire, and the, and it's like, well, no, it's it's the a big big mad nuke. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. what happened. Like like the NCR wasn't you know one hundred percent stable. It had problems and all that, but you know it wasn't on the brink of collapsing. You know, does the, the show way, even yeah. bother trying to explain like what the rest of the NCR does in the immediate aftermath? Nope. No, they just turn into the crazy, weird. They all turn into raiders. Scavenger raiders at the observatory or something. <laughs> who yeah. fucking? That was kind of the reason why I brought that up at the beginning. Who knows? Nobody knows. All the people who yeah, like this yeah, show yeah. argue over it every day as to what the fuck was going on there. Uh, and as to the big mad nuke, I feel like he would have had that emoji put on it. The uh, the angry yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, yep. one of my big problems with the show, the too, angry though, one. Is Regardless of Shady Sands being destroyed, we're still in the heart of NCR territory and they have no presence. What the fuck? He, um, they are gone. The notion that mm -hmm. Season 2 is going to clear all these things up as well is just like, Season 2 is going to have its own shit to clear up. Gonna make up just a like bunch the later new... episodes in this season was gonna clear up the the earlier episodes, right? Exactly. We got well. I mean, episode eight cleared up episode one for sure. Yeah, it really did. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Twist the uh, destruction the, of Shady I, Sands. I gotta, and I gotta point out the kind of just the the kind of quaintness and simplicity. This is obviously some written by people who never left LA in their lives. Thirty thousand people. That was about the population, right? On the banners, like twenty to thirty thousand people. Uh, yeah, thirty-four like, thousand. I find it hilarious that the diagram up there shows like library, courthouse, like as if these are like the two or three monuments in in the entire place. I I found I looked up a just looked up a listing of a I don't mean to go off the weeds, but I just looked up a listing. This is a thirty thousand uh, population city called Los Banos in uh, in big town. In, yeah, that's a huge town. It's that, thirty thousand people. Is it's thirty thousand people. They've got right. like a cinema. They've got they've got the library too. But they've got like seven Seven Elevens, Targets, Walmarts. They've got like yeah, because it's <laughs> thirty thousand people. That's it's like... not like it's a it's not like some podunk hick town and New York City. <laughs> yeah, I just I just find it funny. It's like they 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 treat it like a little like a little west western cowboy town. It's like you know. 200, 400 people or something like that. But no, that's actually like a city at that point. But have oh, you yeah. considered Deadwood is a good show? <laughs> well, it's only yeah. good if they don't have insurance or cars. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Lapse of the NCR is the only way things could have ended for them. 
Oh God! It's the only <laughs> way. It's the only way. way. No, oh, the only way Lord. is a nuclear device would explode in the capital. I was gonna say, let's, let's, say, let's, let's boy would nuke them. Yep. <laughs> let's play it again with full consciousness to make sure that's what was just said. Because holy fuck! I a power it might have had. It could barely govern for shit, and violence was always its answer to most problems. It could be argued that rather than a curveball plot twist, the destruction of Shady Sands and collapse of the NCR is the only way things could have ended for them. And narratively, yeah. honestly, this what? is good for the NCR. CR, I mean, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Why? What the fuck? The only way yeah. it could have ended was nuclear. Abortion. It was not only Absolutely. the only thing that could happen; it was good. <laughs> I would what? love to it hear. It was good for the MCR that this happened. What, what Jeez, the fuck I'd are you talking hear, about? What's Jim's opinion on Caesar's Legion and what they have coming to them? Don't know. Oh my god. Jim's relationship. What can you even say? Mr. Like. House will use my pronouns. The it person good, everyone died. What the fuck? <laughs> the person advocating hardcore for the nuance and substance of storytelling just said, really, the only thing that could happen is Hank comes along and nukes it. Yeah. The cuck boy, boy was bound to happen at some point. It was just bound to, yeah. You kind of, if you just yeah. look at the law, it's just bad. It's like, I thought we didn't care about the law. It's like, no, but if we <laughs> do, law, yeah. if we do, <laughs> though. Did you know that so cucks many... existed before the events of the show? There's so many cases of this where it's like a real failure to imagine things any other way. We see this a lot on EFAP, yeah. It, yes. It's very, very, this broad swath of <laughs> people who should be very creative and willing to think outside of the box and Isn't... problem solve, but they have tunnel vision. Like... And mm -hmm. they say, well, the only way it could have ended is nuclear explosion. I thought that, uh, I like... but isn't, isn't the idea in like New Vegas is that you can choose, you can choose, right? Like whether you want to side with the NCR or yeah. the Legion or like Mr. House or yeah. if you want to make it independent. And that the whole point is that there's meant to be a level of like, well, it'd be interesting to see what would happen in any of those endings because there is a possibility that the NCR succeeds or the Legion succeeds or Mr. House succeeds, like in, in terms of, in terms of achieving their objectives. Like yeah, it's not necessary. Like the point of Fallout New Vegas isn't meant to be where well, the NCR's doomed. Because if that was the <laughs> point, why would there be an ending where the NCR wins? If anything, it's the oh, safe yeah. choice is the NCR. They're the safe choice. Um, yeah, yeah. It's but like New Vegas gets into like this, the big trade-offs of you know libertarian versus authoritarian and security versus, um, like uh, I guess danger. You know, do you want to live in a more dangerous but free society? Or do you want to take it to the other end where you have a relatively, like, very culturally stable society, but it is very much super authoritarian to the point where there's slavery and women are, like, legitimately oppressed as a gender? But um, you get like to wear a really like cool gladiator outfit. Very true. And you can cosplay as a furry <laughs> in the army, so sign me up. <laughs> Fold them. Uh, and narratively... Go ahead. Sorry, I just want to steal man his point quickly of... Shady Sands being destroyed was inevitable. He he's probably referring more to like destruction in general rather than it being nuked, and that's still yes so something but, well, I highly disagree with. I know that with, we're making fun of him because a thousand things. this whole yeah, speech well, is supposed just... to be advocating for how you shouldn't be mad at what the show did because it was an inevitability of sorts. It's like no, Hank nuking it was well, not it a was fucking not inevitability. Yeah. yeah, it was not inevitable that a cuck would get really big mad. <laughs> <cuck energy laughs> and exactly, and like, like <laughs> if. If the whole season was about the fall of the NCR through all kinds of logistical, like, individuals and, and corruption, all these yeah. kinds of things just all happening, I feel like people would be complaining a lot fucking well, less. I mean, I mean, I feel like uh, the tweet that he showed, right, with the whole monkey poor curls with, like, oh, yeah, yeah I wonder if they're gonna... Like, I don't think that the point of that tweet is, yeah, like, they, they blew it up, that's it. It would be, like, they blew it up, and here's all the reasons why, and you didn't get a story continuing to develop, like, the NCR that's from why the, you um... saw them last. It's the Star Wars dead end. It's the Star Wars comparison because it's like you think that whatever Han, Luke, and Leia, you know, set up would just last infinitely. It's like no. Well, it's just but, all of these false dichotomies. Yeah, like, just because I hate the, just because I hate what happened doesn't mean that I wanted the absolute antithesis of everything was happy, nothing ever went wrong ever, no development, no continuation of the story. Because I mean, I think. I think it's just silly to even believe that that's what people want. Like, it feels like you have to be very, very uncharitable to people to assume that all they want is... Yeah, so what they wanted to see for, you know, the sequel trilogy is just, like, Luke running around doing flips and chopping things with his lightsaber. Exactly, People want yeah. to see a continuation of the story, not a dead end. We don't want to do that. Fuck that. Let's blow it up. And so that we, then we can do our own thing. That's just lame. 
That's lame. Yeah. You can't go and then retroactively go, well, yeah, but you, see, you got to understand, like, the New Republic, I mean, in a certain sense, it was destined to get blown up by the Starkiller base. That's just stupid. Exactly. And I feel like the idea that it's like, yeah, I'm just responding to the people who want those extreme things and I'm countering them. It's like, you're not really, because I don't see any fucking people saying it. Meanwhile, we don't have to show you comments or quotes of people saying it. God, God still is saying it right now. He's just saying yeah, all this exactly. shit, like, verbatim. We don't have to... There's no lie happening here or some invention of an insane argument in order to provide an insane counter. We're just playing clips of... of what, what can you even categorize this as? It's like, oh, you're so mad that they broke law, even though if you look at the law, it was inevitable. It's like, yeah, that's what? Funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> The, uh, the, cool th the cool thing about New Vegas, which is going to be completely ruined by the season two if they end up at New Vegas, is that they did this really cool thing where instead of just making like three basically different cutscenes that play exactly the same, like in games like Mass Effect or whatever, um, they actually did slides. So it kind of would generate a uh, almost like a PowerPoint presentation of what all your actions did to the waste to the area, and somebody did the math <laughs> there are over one quadrillion different combinations of ending slides that you can get at the end of new vegas because they've got about something like 200 different slides and there's like a few different Neat. variations for each each uh like depending on what you do for the ncr what you do for the legion what you do for house and each individual area each individual quest each individual town so it basically generates a unique ending for every player like there's probably more you there's definitely absolutely more unique uh endings than there are um times people played through the game like you pretty much get almost a unique ending every time so just that that aspect just kind of really defined your experience and the freedom in it and you know they're going to totally lock it down to one specific <laughs> way it happened or 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 i don't know if they're going to play around with like oh we don't really know what happened maybe this happened i don't know but there's definitely going to be certain things that are going to be decanonized in the in the second season i'm sure Honestly, this is good for the NCR, I mean, not in-universe, fucking sucks for them. In the show, we right. see that they, like the Enclave before them, are fallen but still clinging on with a compelling sympathetic storyline, that bit's more NCR than the Enclave, that winds up far more interesting than a mere continuation of their inept democracy. Um, you are not referring to the blood-drinking Ash yeah, people, yeah, are you? Um, and also, Jesus. it's just like, oh yeah, the sympathetic Mole David going into the vault and just killing all of the innocent vault dwellers. Yeah, what? Yeah. Like, what are neither, we talking about here? Neither of those elements were interesting. They were insane. Why is it that all the Shady Sand survivors get together to drink blood and talk about how, in order to bring it back, blood must spill? What does that even mean? That's just... It, it relies on being insane, like, oh, yeah. quirky. It's just, no, it's just, How is that I interesting? Mean, just... There was no story there, no characters. It was just, look at this. Isn't that weird? How uncomfortable do you think Sterling would be at that party, though? I don't think fairy. No, I'm sure he thought it was pretty cool. Well, the, the other thing is just, yet again, it's another failure of imagination. It's just like, oh, if they just continued being the NCR, how boring is that? And it's like, just because you can't think of anything interesting to do with them, doesn't that doesn't mean that anyone with any talent for writing at all couldn't. Mm -hmm. ...stick, which we've seen already. Of course, there's more to Shady Santa's destruction than good old-fashioned societal collapse. There was none there's of that was in there. It. It's just <laughs> it. That's, that's like, it. that's close to a lie, as far as I'm concerned. Like, for anyone who hasn't seen the show, that's not in the story at all. No. Nothing. Yeah. No reference to Shady Sands falling because of that. It's strictly Hank and his nuke. That is it. The only vision we get of it is that it's basically utopia and yeah, everybody's exactly. like dancing it's in the exactly. background with corn anything. and everything and like there's, well, there's and if a you, blinding them out of sun because it's so beautiful. There is absolutely some cinematic language happening where in every portion of every part of the show we're shown ghouls aren't trusted or liked and they're shat on and nobody likes them, they're scary, they go feral, blah 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 blah. We get to Moldava's uh, observatory settlement which is the, you know, spiritual successor to Shady Sands. And they show us the ghoul is just hanging out with everyone else. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, look at that. See? Moldova takes care of everyone. You're like, what the fuck are you doing, show? Did you see episode one? <laughs> Did somebody else make that? It's like, what the fuck? So weird. It's like, don't worry, she takes... Because it's, it's the same ghoul that got released in um, episode four from the Super Duper Mark. Oh, is it? Yeah. So it's, it's supposed to just be like, oh, look at that. See? The, the efforts that Lucy made do have an ultimately good effect. And there, there they are. How great is that? And I'm just sitting like, what the Which fuck? Yeah. Which which brings up so many questions. Why were the super duper mark guys keeping ghouls un 
unferalized. Um, uh, like what the to, why to, would they ever need to do that? Or, because it's fun. Sell them for slaves. Dude. I don't know. It could be anything. Super They're just weird. having a good time. Having a good time. Yeah. It, in this universe, I mean, like in in the actual Fallout games, like ghoul, most ghouls were probably. I'd say most ghouls weren't feral, but they mm -hmm. always had. Well, they're I, waiting I, I, for the Atomic Wrangler to be founded so that they go. have a bunch of crazy, wacky ghouls to work over there. They're going to take them on, on tour. They're going to do a little fun clown show with all the ghouls. So to speak. One In the funny... series finale, we oh, learn God. that it was Lucy's father, the freeze-dried Vault-Tex scumbag Kyle motherfucking McLaughlin, personally orchestrated the annihilation mm. of Shady Sands over some siphoned water orchestrated and corporate... feels like he, he didn't do it because of the siphoned that's... water. That wasn't why. Yeah, wasn't it was why. all because he was a cuckoid. Uh, he was yeah, cuck. He, he was the cuck. Yeah. He was angry. It's also interesting to throw that in. It uh, looks like you didn't pay attention, Sterling. Yeah, you weren't paying attention. That's right. Uh -oh. yeah. You should pay attention if you're going to review We didn't actually find out how the fuck the war even got siphoned. That never got answered at all. We have no idea, but no, that was not his well, motivation. We don't know how he fucking was able to nuke a city. Yeah, we don't know how they he did it. They just say he did it. Yep. Like, how? They shot, the how? What? They shot down his threesome idea and he was pissed. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> Violation of Shady Sands over some siphoned water and corporate sponsored eugenics. And you know what that makes the show's emerging lead? You know? It wasn't even, it wasn't the vault tech motivation really either. It was mainly, uh, you took my kids over there, that. fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone who lives there, because it's yep. their problem now. now. <laughs> right, yeah. It's not like he, yeah. he didn't nuke everyone who wasn't, you know, Vault 33. He nuked them specifically. Villain? An absolute fucking cunt. What really frustrates me about the way fans view Shady Sands as a slap in the face is that it suggests they never wanted a story and instead were focused primarily on the meta narrative. They didn't want to see what the writers Laura had to is say. A meta narrative. Them. Yeah. What? But I guess Laura that's is the like argument, literally not. They were, they were obsessed. That's the problem, Rags. They misunderstand the purpose of lore. They. I guess. By by virtue of Fallout 1 to 2, they want it to develop and change. That is, They are beloved, and Shady Sands is not the same in 1 as it is in 2. So, why are you going to argue? Because like, you're clearly going for the frozen sort of in-time aspect here. It's like, if you're going to address the Fallout fans who are being nuts over this, like you've got to address them as they are, which is, they wanted to see it develop and grow and move in some kind of direction. They didn't want to see it nuked. Whoa, wow, idiots. But clearly edging toward the perspective that they just wanted it to be functional. Like, that, 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 and that apparently is the meta-narrative, which I feel like is, uh... You're gonna lose your audience here a little bit. You gotta, you gotta bring us back. Merrily on the meta narrative, they didn't want to see what the writers had to say for themselves. They wanted to see how they treat the source material. The viral no. tweet. No, you, you can, you can do your thing, show. Just don't have it be shitty and lore breaking. Well, in, like, did, why did they have to blow up so Shady Sands to, to do this story? Why does Hank yeah. have to nuke Shady yeah. Sands? And if that's because what they wanted to do, you. then I that's shitty. I don't like it because it's shitty, not because it's what they wanted to do or whatever. Could have been in a completely different area with completely different characters, and Hank goes out and stops Rose for, and finds out she went to the town of Big Whiskey, and he's like, fuck you, and blows it up. Why'd it have to be Shady Sands? There is no answer to this question uh, other than starting to speculate over motivation. Don't look at me, Mahler. I wasn't even looking at any of you. Answers. I was just uh, yes, you were. staring, staring bullets into Sterling over there with these half answers as to why any of this stuff happens. Practically states that was their motive for watching the show. And if watching a show simply to see how effective a Xerox it is entertains you, by all means go for it. But clearly it's leading you to be disgruntled with your... Yeah, what a fucking crazy idea to watch the Fallout show to see if it respects Fallout, the IP. What, a, what an idiot you must be. What's the like, point? What a What's crazy, point? crazy thing you... Why would you even do that? This is, like, such a... Like, ironically enough, this comes across as so incredibly, like, corporate defense mode. Mm hmm Yeah. He's like, he's defending Amazon. Here. <laughs> it's I was saying like, oh, the fans are upset that they ruined a bunch of the lore and it's, shit. It's like the meme of the 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 with the source. yeah. <laughs> stay away from the stay away from the multi billion dollar corporation. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's a point you made in your video, Muller, that is unique 
specifically to this show because we can we look at the silver timeline or what do they call it on the Halo show and we're like, wow, that's dumb, but it doesn't ruin anything in the games because it's not it's it's canonically not even only like in a meta universe. sense. Does it, yeah, it does it have taint? Yeah, like it has. It, it has it, like, oh, it sucks. It's, it's gross. Like, it has this like Ugh, <laughs> get away from me sort of thing. But yeah. it is but, nice. But, that, but at least yeah, yeah. At least they had the decency to say that they were the silver timeline, not the gold timeline, because that'd be kind of like <laughs> they kind of just they knew that they were second rate, but it's actually amazingly bad how much the wikipedia sites of the fall all the fallout franchises have had to like incorporate this new lore into there like i'm looking at shady sends right now it says uh shortly after the events of fallout new vegas which was set in 2281 shady sands was destroyed by a nuclear bomb they don't have a date for that they have a date for when it's founded when each game uh, occurred when certain people were elected they have a, a points in time where this happened that happened that happened they have no date for when it was nuked because there is no date for when it was nuked because all that we have is uh todd howard saying oh it was after new vegas it didn't it didn't ruin anything trust me <laughs> yeah it's like uh -huh. didn't ruin anything trust me because there is Wait. no date because there's because that's all this is all based off of todd howard saying oh yeah it was after new uh, new vegas so it couldn't have when. been in 2077 when it was nuked. It's almost well, like I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Well, well, it's like a the, mess. People but noticed, saying... people noticed that 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 time uh, on the on the uh, blackboard. They noticed that time, saying, "Oh wait, that could that can't be right because New Vegas is yeah. set after that." And then I think it's just Todd Howard saying, "Oh well, actually, you know, well actually, uh, it was nuked after." But he wouldn't give a year yeah. because they don't have. That's, a that's the big schism. They're, they're those... Is the it comes across as another example of, oh whoops, we fucked up the time on that, and then you're like, yeah, you did. And they're like, uh, it's fine, actually, don't worry about it. It's like, why don't? <laughs> it's much. like why don't you guys like storyboard this? Don't you do a little bit of planning before you, well, you know, before you spend these hundreds of millions of dollars? Do you think you should sit down with like a piece of paper sh and like line those out dates the time takes is? fucking seconds, like. We got a great example out of the beginning of this video, the the tweets that Emil put out, where he's just like, lol, this is canon. And then you go, no, it's not. And he's like, oh shit, no, it's not. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I want to point out, Bethesda always does this, even with Elder Scrolls, where they'll just... Uh, oh. Pete Hines is quoted as saying, we're, we won't be beholden to something someone wrote 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's as a ton of that like, thing, uh, old writing is bad. Of the value of that thing that existed from exactly. 20 years ago. Why you There's a ton of that in Elder Scrolls Online, right? Like the lore of retcons to the lore. Yeah, it's it's one thing to say, yeah, 20 years ago, yeah, some guy yeah. wrote this one thing in this one little book as a note, and we're going to go against that in order to create something else that we think is da 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 da. That's one thing. It's another thing to say, we're going to nuke Shady Sands because fuck yeah. you. And, it's, and it's, it's, um, you don't get to benefit. The benefit of a sequel is that you get to extract all of the juice that existed in the story from before. Yeah. But the trade-off is, well, you're in continuity with that, so you have to. You are changed to, to it. The rules that were established in that. You're, yeah, exactly. You don't get to extract all of the benefits that you get from being a sequel while ignoring all of your responsibilities as a sequel. Because yep. that's that's probably a way of thinking about it. Is you have responsibilities to the prior story. That's part of the deal. And that's part of the reason I get so frustrated with what Jim Sterling is doing here and people like him where it's like, oh, stupid nerds complaining about their lore. Why establish the lore if you're just going to shit all over it or ignore it? And yeah, why make a Fallout show unless you're trying to appeal to people for whom Fallout means something? Yeah. And, it, and yeah. There's, some, like, there's some more things that, like, for example, like, when when did light bulb get invented you could say that edison or whomever did this patent and at some point it was officialized like that's a little bit more kind of wishy-washy you don't you don't quite have a, a exact time nailed down we know the minute that the bombs dropped in the fallout franchise 9 42 a.m mm -hmm. october 23 2077 <laughs> You would know the day. You know the day. <laughs> that yeah. the biggest time. You'd fucking the know the year. Town. You know <laughs> the year. <laughs> when Syndigo brought that up too, I want to mention quickly that they fuck up the times, uh, the time the bombs drop in the very first frame of the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because because yeah, Saturday, October twenty third, twenty seventy seven. This is at canon as of the games, nine forty two a.m. The bombs drop in Boston, which would that be is... six. 47 on uh the west coast yeah the the entire the entire war lasted two hours right so you have a little bit of wiggle room but essentially it'd be really 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 early in the morning 
on in Los Angeles. Like, but they were you nerd sees you nerd afternoon Nazis. birthday party, but like <laughs> Shut whatever. Up. <laughs> but yeah, like afternoon birthday party would not have happened. It, it basically it w- the West Coast was was wiped out in the morning. They were a little so, late on that particular area for whatever reason. Um, yeah, a couple couple hours later. <laughs> someone in Amazon chat Prime, we know, and it just doesn't arrive in time. Someone in yeah. chat got me quoted as saying, "Full of shady sands means it was nuked. It simply can't be anything else." I was like explicit in talking about what very... people <laughs> believe has happened as a result of the imagery on the board. In my video, I literally say at the beginning of the accuracy of the game section whether or not they fucked up that date. I want to go over like the things that connect with it. Well, that's the thing. Stop making said. the people who like the show look so retarded. Come up with better arguments. Listen, you're not paying attention. You're not. You're. You're. You're not paying attention to the TV show that is our criticism. All right. So that's right. Gotta get it right. Gotta get the mm-hmm. law right. And if you got one thing right, how can any of your arguments yeah, from if you... henceforth be <laughs> of any value? You can't listen to a single thing word I said in that sentence. Then I can't trust you've listened to anything I've said. That's right. That's you right. by all means go for it, but clearly it's leading you to be disgruntled with your media a lot. What I-, I like the implication of that statement being if you care about Fallout as an IP, you're obviously going in being disgruntled. Like it's gonna happen because they're obviously gonna <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> like, okay. Wrong with that. Yeah. Would, yeah. Would, it's not, doesn't that feel like you? That's a stupid thing to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What I mean to say is that if you care about the story being told, the person you need to hate for the fall of Shady Sands is this asshole. No. I'm going to hate the no, writer. Uh, yeah, the exactly. writer's, the the writers, writers made him do that. The Listen, yeah, that is Kyle McLaughlin, and he is a nice, sweet He's a man. saint. This is right. an actor <laughs> who's been forced, probably against his will, with a gun to his head, <laughs> <laughs> to portray this construct of a story. There's, there's, no, way. there's no way that Sterling has been consistent on this. There's got to be no. a time. Oh, fuck no. Like, He's Sterling. No, you got it. Would have been levied at a story, and 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 the argument. We already have, have an example for you. Out of the character. The Fallout uh, Three yeah, criticism true. that was thrown earlier. That's it's like, true. oh, Fallout Three yeah, fucked it up. It's like, hey, be well, mad Fallout at the villains 3, of that story. You be mad at the characters, exactly. Yeah. Be mad at the general yeah. guy. You yeah. again, that guy. Be mad at him. And if you're so mad at the writers, <laughs> you know what? You're just being a nerd. See. That's exactly. right. Yeah, exactly. And and you're going into it with a bad attitude, where you're going to make yourself unhappy, and that's not good. That's very. I bad. love that he's known as the you again guy. <laughs> you know oh, how you're put you over a villain in a way that not only makes him a threat but a cowardly petty vile piece of shit who you want to see get his ass handed to him have him take away something good completely and in the most loathsome way possible i hate this cock but i thought you're you... glad that shady Sands. I'm, I'm confused yeah, now, yeah. Yeah. signals here you said it was a good thing why this no, is like this is like, was, who, this is like a storytelling <laughs> sense and yes. they hate the character because Sterling buys into the narrative essentially. But yeah. it's not that I, that, what what's that? This should be the argument of like he's essentially pulling a the man who killed Hitler is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's just no reason to listen to any of this portion because it's basically just if you just take what they say is true for granted, then you'll it's what you want. You know what I mean? Like, like, just well, engage know, with it. A lot of bad shows. And that's uh, what you wanted, yeah. It's pretty much. It's weird that usually with a good story, you can just engage with it like you would with any story and enjoy it instead of having to do all this weird mental gymnastics, like, like personal indoctrination into liking it. Yeah, all of life's great good decisions. I saw the you know, like, rock, like the tortoise and the hare. You don't need to do like mental gymnastics to make that story work for you. And then That's this not really doesn't. Viewer. This really doesn't make Hank a good villain either. It just makes him a fucking no. clown. Like he's a clown. he can't, he's he's can't a clown fucking clown. take him seriously after this shit. I can't yeah, even. I can't even be mad at him and hate him because I don't believe him as a person. A, yeah, yeah, exactly. Just a little yeah. clown cock boy. <laughs> <laughs> His screen time in this first season is limited, and for almost all of it, his villainy isn't even apparent. But within 10 minutes of seeing who he really is and learning the pathetic motives for nuking an entire. It's so funny Wait, to what see. Do you mean the you like the. It's a positive. Shady stands. You said that there was like. You know, that there was actual reasons, it, you know, for that character, not just petty, because that's one of the big problems is like, yeah, that's stupid. There's yeah, exactly. nothing meaningful about the destruction of the NCR if it's just he was petty. He's that, saying that, this is a positive argument yeah. that 
Sterling made. Sterling made the arguments that, that don't even correct. exist in the story, which is the destruction of the NCR like, based on what the NCR is. Now that he's in the Pringy, section of judging Hank as a character, he's allowed to be more honest about the nature of this situation as opposed to... Because remember, yeah. this was introduced as actions being like, outside of like the issues that led to the downfall of Shady Sands, we have the person who nuked it. And it's like the, the first part had nothing to do with what happened in this show. <laughs> I think what you don't understand, though, is that all war is started by petty men who are just uh, acting out, peeing on the wall, as it were. As it were. <laughs> um, I, I, so can't, I can't believe that line is real. No, no, well, they the, the wall. Moon. How about this the fucking the horseshoe the theory, though? Points. You have the one person saying, like, this is so poorly written because of how petty and pathetic his motivation is compared to the position he holds and the interests he has. And then the next person says, oh. God, I fucking love this show because how much it makes me hate this villain for being so petty and pathetic, especially related mm -hmm. to, like, the way he was built up, you know, in the first episode. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I okay, guess. Okay, I guess. Yeah, I guess we like, agree. Oh, I don't all know. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Higher population, he becomes one of the that? most detestable bastards in the entire Fallout universe. Fucking Hank peed on the wall of Shady Sands with a nuke. He really did. Scorpion. Mm. Oh, what the hell? What is happening? I don't know. It's not gonna be important. Mmm, the delicious taste of Scorpion Energy. A Creedle and Crab Nuts product, now available in wet. Am I having I a stroke? Is this just ignore, ignore it. Ignore it. You can be a yeah, smart and blame the writers, or you no can care about the story subway. being told and hate this piece of shit. Have you never hated the writers? He ever? Is the writers. The writers made him. He's a construct created by the writers. Why can't I make this argument for everything ever? Well, well, why is this not a recognition? Because usually when this happens, it means that uh, someone screwed up in the writing process when when it, 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 it like goes from you can't even take the characters and the story as a, as a set of events that are actually happening, that it, it's just like, you see the script, you see the intentions of the writers, the really bad intentions, or like the dumb ideas. Like, it's not the, it's not the audience's fault that they can't not see the hand of the writer messing with everything. That means that the writers screwed up. It is their job to hide yeah. themselves. But but this is saying this is a positive though, like, he likes that the Hank is an irredeemable piece of shit, fucking clown boy, whatever. Like he said, it, it, was a, it seems a good to be thing, the idea that, that um, it's the idea that uh, you as a viewer, um, you're incorrect for being mad at the writers. You should be mad at the character oh, right. for making the decision that the writers made him make. Yeah. But the whole point of what the writer's job is to make a believable world. And when they do something so stupid that I don't, I can't even believe it anymore. And I'm like, like thrown out of the story I'm watching and now I'm just thinking about the writers and the really dumb motivations and all that yeah. sort of crap. It's a failure. Some I'm just baffled by the 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 shield being provided here of like instead of being annoyed at the writing, why don't you just take it for what it is and engage with it and hate this villainous character? What why don't I do that all the time? Why doesn't everybody always do that? Because we fucking Why don't you just choose to <laughs> We like have it. a POV why don't you on just what's turn happening. Your brain off? Why don't you just do a thing that you literally do not have control over? Well, what's interesting about the turn your brain off, like at this point it feels like a much more, as opposed to people saying turn it off to enjoy it, this feels like turn it off to become an automaton that follows exactly what is told to you by this particular person. All hail Amazon. Yeah, oh, it kind of. Like, you're not allowed to actually engage with yeah, the don't story. Think you freely. have to accept don't, everything. Certainly don't think artistically. Not, yeah, believe what Amazon tells <laughs> there's, you. There's no Fallout. way that when anybody says that, there's no way that they can be consistent on that. There will always be a story where they got so annoyed with the with with it, or thought it was dumb and stupid that they didn't just accept the story for what it was. Shit. And hey, if you really need the fan service, they had that shot on New Vegas. At the that's not. That's fan f well, nightmare that's fuel. Fan uh, that, 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 it <laughs> is. Yeah. Be this is what's coming what next. <laughs> Yeah, it feels Fan like service. they're showing it because it's like, hey, this is what we're going to ruin next. It's like, God, exactly yeah. now. Yep. It looks yep. already ruined, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that's, it does, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely a problem I have. The city looks like it's in ruins. I, I, that's why I specifically did that last shot of the video game section that I worked on. So I, I got the angle, roughly the angle and the skill that I could from the intro of uh, the New Vegas and lined it up and you saw like neon lights and shiny buildings that have been built post-war and everything like that. And yeah, yeah, there was some scrap and stuff like that, but this looks like really decrepit and potentially yeah. destroyed compared to what we saw in New Vegas. Uh, well, 
to reference the end credits again, I don't, again, I don't know how canon you want to take them, but the end credits for the final episode, uh, episode shows the city in ruins. And no power. That's the thing that kind of indicated to yeah. me, like, this is sunset. You'd have lights on already. Like, yeah, you that would turn too. Lights on, uh, like, as soon as it starts getting a little dark and like that, that tower in the center, it's kind of like Space Needle or maybe that tower, kind of like that tower in, um, well, probably there is a tower like that in Vegas, actually, but kind of reminds me of the Space Needle. That All the proportions up. are fucked, though. I mean, really look at this. It's a mess. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, None I've been on the space it. needle. Unless, unless most of the buildings are destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Like it does look like a bomb hit. What are they? There should be there should be a lot more tall buildings there. Yeah, all of the tall buildings. Surrounded by farms and foliage. maybe it was Godzilla that did it. Trees and <laughs> oh, Godzilla's in this people. universe. Hold on, I've got a uh, comparison here. I'm posting in chat. Yeah, it's just like oh my god, it's like looking at a. Uh... Wow, it's like looking at. Jeez. I mean, this yeah, it's is like Tatooine. What do they do to my boy? And this is like, <laughs> it's like Moss Eisley. Yeah. The this first time you see Moss Eisley in episode four, you're like, oh, okay. You know, and then they it's... just changed it. No, it's all just dunes. It's just sandy dunes. It's, this is like, uh, that's key art. And this is actual like gameplay footage, but it's like, it's like happening. It's kind of a pop in town. There's like neon signs and stuff like that. Wow. Like it's not, it doesn't look nearly the best lit. Yeah. Aren't you guys excited to see a death claw? Mm. Oh, God, no. Oh, boy, <laughs> yes. You know, Mola, the second season's actually pretty good. I know the first yeah. one wasn't great. But I'll be like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. You based Puck her up. The end for you. Yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. No, 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 no. It's no. not. It's what, just horrible. They said it looked cool. Nope. Yes, it's horrifying. It, uh, it's the it, most it, it, boring it, kind of funny. post-apocalyptic. Like watching Halo, it's like, look, there's Halo. Is not that exciting? No, it's horrifying no. and terrifying. Yeah. yeah. What are they gonna Ugh. do to it? My soul is aching. Yeah. It's important to add that anticlimaxes, tragedies, and subverting expectations aren't <gasps> inherently good things. Just Obviously. doing that shit for its oh. own sake is no less shameless than packing a show with referential in-jokes for their own sake. It's all about okay. earning your payoffs or lack- <laughs> Earning your payoffs for the show's <laughs> this image. Are you serious? Oh no. Earning your payoffs. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Pretty oh, funny. Maximus de definitely earned all these payoffs, yeah. Oh, oh, fuck it, Al. All the amazing payoffs he got. He worked hard. He worked hard to do yeah, that. I love to become. He was in the refrigerator. <laughs> I love that they couldn't even just have him be in a sealed refrigerator. They had to put yep. a hole in the back. I don't <laughs> know why. <laughs> they so had complete breathe. control. Oh, <laughs> oh so you wanted him to be covered yeah. it up with something. Could have just put some cardboard on <laughs> Did it. Did not have a hole in the back? Uh, oh. Wow. You guys Pretty know cool. anything about refrigerators? <laughs> yeah that that hole in the back that's not even how refrigerators work like you need to seal it up that's how for the... that that's how the air gets <laughs> that's how the cold air gets in <laughs> there's fan the fan yeah, air a big tube connected there. i wonder about y'all bunch of barbarians <laughs> yep i i like, like slightly cool curtains <laughs> y'all never looked through the back hall of a refrigerator before and it shows I think the cold air is just magic. It just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> They're wrong, and I do believe for the reasons stated, plus the fact it's just a damn well written show. Fallout TV oh, has no. damn well it's written just, show. It's a That's damn right. well written show. Yeah, That's really funny. It's well it's written, written, written. Damn well written. I've seen some rather bad arguments in defense of the show, but those people usually say, "Eh, it's okay." You no, know, it's yeah. I, damn well I've written. Heard mixed things. Just... There are certain things that basically no one defends, though, in, in the show, yeah. Why did the inciting incident happen? Mm. Why did anything <laughs> that's, fucking happen? That's a good question. <laughs> Why did anything in episode one happen? That's a good place to start. Most yep. certainly earned what it did to Shady Sands, and will continue to it do so as Future Story builds toward a confrontation with the man who destroyed it. The biggest issue... Why? I don't care. We I already hope had everyone that. dies. I hope everyone dies. Well, yeah, I mean, the big confrontation. We already had he, that. He punched Maximus, and that was that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. It was pretty he funny. I enjoyed table. that punch. Yeah. And oh my god, it's so undermined by Maximus. Maximus he, he's the one who did it. He's the one who did Shady Sands. And then he looks at her and he goes, 
that sound, that sound effect of whoop, whoop. But then it just cuts back mm. to the fridge. You're like, I know! There's nothing in it. <laughs> We've seen this. I've seen yeah. this seven times already. Like, <laughs> many times. And then Kyle McLaughlin smacks him in the face. It's pretty funny. Yep. <laughs> issue I have oh. with some of the backlash I've seen is the suggestion that Shady Sands couldn't be fucked with at all. Who the fuck said that? I, who? Name who them. Who said it Where did you see this? Who the twinkle toe cockfucker who said that? Give me that. a screenshot, you fuck. <laughs> I've not seen a single person. Liar! <laughs> yeah, I don't liar. believe you at all. You're a liar! liar. It's like a binary choice between couldn't be fucked with at all and shouldn't be nuked entirely. Mm hmm there's no. no, yeah, there's, it's not a spectrum. There's no imagination here. It's either completely one way or completely the other. It's no binary. Ground. Yeah, complete and total binary. And so now we get a section of how, you know what? Here's my counter argument for how Shady Sands should be able to move from being frozen in time. It's just like nobody cares, but nobody fucking asked for that. The one big scene about it has been isolated outside the context of the show's themes and very much outside the context of how it fits into the storyline. None of that matters in the face of Fallout. I, I genuinely want to acknowledge that the way it fits into the storyline is some guy was mad. That's it. Some guy was mad that his wife that, turned out uh, to be a lesbian what is and the... was made terrible decisions with parenting. What I don't know what the writers were trying to say. What is the damn great this? story editing weaving happening there? What's well, like that? Would it, did that take them days to come up with? Was that some kind of? Oh, we gotta make sure we get everything. And set how? That. Moral Just of the story: Adding is on to that, gay. <laughs> adding on to that is that how they discover it is just they stumble on it on a on their way to something else. You know, it's not especially meaningful how they discover that Shady Sa or how Lucy discovers Shady Sands was nuked. She just passes by it, and there it is. And then they go, okay, I, I guess we better keep walking. Yeah, like there's nothing, there's nothing meaningful. I guess there. what's being said here is that if you if you were forced to have Shady Sands nuked and you have to address it, it's like there are there are ways you could have done it that would have been way more meaningful than what they did. Exactly. Yeah. It's also presented in such a kind of fucked up way because in a way, the fact that it was nuke nuked is almost meant to be comforting to Lucy because like, oh, at least you still have a job. Like you still have you still have to like repopulate the earth and make society work again because yeah at the time we tried it we explodes. messed up <laughs> yeah it's just it's like such a weird way of doing it that's all you know. tv daring to not revisit familiar locales and show us more things we recognize from the video games the very concept of shady sands not being preserved for our pleasure is treated as offensive there's nothing wrong with Preserve the surface of fan pleasure. service there's loads of it in our media now endless crossovers and shared universes and events and products full of stuff that you recognize and are familiar with and well not to open the fucking conversation on fan service but the notion of a fallout tv show could be considered fan service on its own um mm -hmm. yeah, like doing and if this you're gonna, if, you, if you're gonna so, denigrate the idea of like showing familiar locations and stuff like that why aren't you denigrating the show for taking place in the exact same location where it can revisit all of these iconic and, locations and uh, the big trouble in little china is one thing it's one movie it's not a franchise and uh, and, and the, the shot of new vegas being like oh so fucking good it's like well, that is, that is just a shot of new. Vi that's not even anything. That's not. There's no substance there. That's not even. Uh, no. But like and you, you approve moments. of it massively. So like, don't even go there to the to the place of like you guys just want fads. It was like you too too. You fucking love it. <laughs> yeah, so many, you ate so it up. You gobbled it up. And also, if that's yeah. your attitude, why wouldn't you recommend the show just take place somewhere like I don't know, New Orleans or somewhere they've never been before? If this is the attitude you actually genuinely exactly. believed loved and will always love because it'll never change well war may never change but fallout does when it's allowed to and it's so rare to it's so funny to hear you say this when the showrunner said they are not allowing fallout to change to a certain point yeah, they will exactly. prevent it yeah. let's regress it, all it of it so it's <laughs> fucking annoying you don't know it's what ironic. you're talking about you think you do uh -huh. but you don't it makes you wonder how humans built civilization in the first place <laughs> <laughs> to see an like, adaptation that now that actually moves a universe's story forward from... I'm sorry, it moves it forward it's just by wiping forward. it off the map. It's not about progressing right. the state of Shady Sands. It's not progression at all. It's Mario removing it. Mario well, we'll find forward. out in a sec, but like the, it's, it's yeah. infinitely frustrating <laughs> that of all the things that could have happened to Shady Sands, we got a full stop. And that's, that's the, the one that we're getting categorized as progression. Yeah, yeah it's done, it's funny. over, it ended.
It's like if you what, die, he's like, well, their life has progressed. What did what did the Super Mario <laughs> Brothers movie, which is of better quality in terms of its writing than the full Easily. last show? Let's see. <laughs> and it's allowed to. Easily. And it's so rare to see an adaptation now that actually moves a universe's story forward rather than reboot it, retell it, and ask you to remember it. For oh, so, um, okay, so it's because it's an adaptation, basically. We well, yeah, the I guess the like, better, it's though. It's it actually is better, though. It respects I mean, its, its source it's more. Than Fallout, so yeah, it's got a more coherent story. Like, it's not even a meme. Like, it has nope. a story where the characters go on an arc that makes sense and is kind of meaningful. Yeah. And it plays so, well yeah. off the games. It was of, It's difficult to turn any particular Mario game into a strict movie, but they, they did this. Well, Super Mario Galaxy feels like it would have been pretty prime contender, I think. Well, I mean, I you, think, uh, you, the, the, there's Mario prime Mario contenders, Mario. but I still think that with the amount, the sheer amount of gameplay, it's like, how do you translate that into movie scenes? Like, we're going to be dealing yeah, with a lot more well, talking. In the Mario movie, it certainly could have been better, could have been worse. Oh, absolutely <laughs> could be better, yeah. I mean, Mario I Sunshine being okay, is ready to be a movie as well. way better than Fallout, yeah. It's better than Fallout because, again, it's it's coherent. It's, you know, it's generally coherent. So, I was going to say, like, yeah. even even slight coherence kind of puts it above Fallout, because Fallout is fucking yeah, disaster. Right. Remember it. Fallout TV has its callbacks, and they're great. But I why are they great? Why are they great? Why are the Mario ones bad? There's a Pip Boy bobblehead in the game Rage. Like that, having a, a Pip Boy bobblehead in something is not like that. I don't know. Right? It makes, it makes being, the story amazing uh, if you have a bobble, I'm bobblehead. Being reminded again of like, oh yeah, no, that was all the Mario movie was was Easter eggs. It was all Easter eggs that have. No impact on the pace of the story at all. It's just stuff in the background for you to notice. And like, it got shit on for that. <laughs> I just find that so funny. Yeah, wasn't it like it's Grace a... Randolph? It was like, I don't understand those references. Like, what? The little thing on the well, TV in one scene that nobody I mean, cares about? Like, what the fuck? It was, it's like, ah, uh, <laughs> yes. The story was really, it was really uh, dragged down by its references. It's like, how was the movie dragged down by there being an R Wing model on Mario's <laughs> TV? How was it dragged down by like a duck hunt store in the background? And also, oh. if you're not familiar with the games, how do you know that any of these things are Easter eggs? Why wouldn't the R Wing just be a toy? Or is it because you heard other reviewers say that it had Easter eggs, so you just regurgitated that argument? Sorry, it's just mm -hmm. reminding me. That was fucking annoying. Like people saying, oh, yeah, well, it's, it's brought down by its Easter eggs. The equivalent of that would be like when I started watching Fallout, she like tapped some bobblehead thing, and I didn't know what that was, so it kind of ruined it for me because I, did, I didn't know what that was. What, what is that? Some reference? <laughs> Exactly. It's like, what are you talking about? It's just a bobblehead, dude. You can be, you'll yeah. be fine. They even really interrupt believe. the story for references, like, like you pointed out in your video, like uh, when she when she says, like, well, war, comma, you know, period, period, yeah. period, yeah, period, period, the, period, war never changes. Mean. Like that's obviously <laughs> referencing oh. that line from the intros. That's, that's one of the funniest gaps in anything ever. Is is <laughs> <laughs> so long. <laughs> has its callbacks, and they're oh. great. But I truly believe it's the first bit of media to genuinely advance Fallout's world building since Obsidian's narrative Jesus updates in the Apple. Fucking how? How? <laughs> this is like, this is shill level code. God, I, this is so fucking annoying. How the fuck are you progressing the world by destroying the biggest faction in the fucking franchise? Like, well, it's like how would the Brotherhood been advanced from the game? The world... Would you rather have the Brotherhood from the games or from the... <laughs> Show. Like how how have you taken them and progressed them in a positive way? The important thing is they've set it in stone that Vault Tech, the capitalists, are the reason all of this happened. <laughs> oh, they shrunk the I will really oh. like that. and removed factions. Good. Corporation Amazon said that capitalism bad. Therefore, I am going to defend That's Amazon. Just so unbelievable, <laughs> isn't it? I was gonna say that, like the, the the what did the what the Fallout world? What what is it? You know, pre and post the show, and it's just like well, post just like everything is smaller and there's less things. Yeah, like, there you go. You've moved I it forward. Like, okay, well, wait, wait, because it remember, it's not just Amazon. It's Amazon and Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft owns Fallout. <laughs> So it's Amazon and Microsoft together, the defense force. Oh, well, running. if it's for long, <laughs> well, you know. Well. well, if it's Microsoft, I can believe that they're running their IP into the ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. It, actually, this that makes yeah. more sense. Getting it's all coming together. For that it's all coming together. And New Vegas. Too. It's, uh...
exactly what the Fallout fans wanted. It's in the aforementioned New Vegas. Compared to Bethesda, whose Fallout games can be very, very good, I like them, but they're not conceptually ambitious in the least. The television show is far, far, far oh closer God, to the spirit so of the, the series of original that's creators. So funny. Uh, uh, this, so funny. Is, this is really insane. insane. This is With insane. With the image of Mr. House right there. Just to be clear, words. yeah, for anyone who didn't catch that, oh. the statement was the show is much, much, much closer to the original, like, intentions and spirit of the original games than they are the Bethesda games. Um, yeah, then... Uh, he were made by the same people. And, yeah. yeah, and having oh, this oh, image attached to that oh, statement oh, is extra hilarious. Oh yeah. my that god! That is a bold claim. I feel and like well, that's I... not even an argument that um, fans of the show would even make. I think mm -hmm. it's pretty yeah. obvious that it's much more derived from the Bethesda Fallout what's... games. Yeah, than what's the happened is original ones. Fans Canadian. will say, and and people in chat at the beginning of the stream were saying, so some of some of them saying this. They already left, left by now, but they were like, uh, oh, the ninety percent of the people mad at this show are, are Fallout New Vegas fans. And it's like. You mean like normal people? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people who actually can recognize that good writing can exist. Like, like the good games, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah. just so funny to to see the notion that like, yeah, actually, this is a this this spiritually continues Fallout One, Two, and New Vegas. Like, okay. Like, does it? Shouldn't that set off alarm bells if you're like, man, how come all the people who hate this are fans of the good game? Hmm. It took me like two oh. minutes for that that stupidity to kind of sink into what he was saying, but like, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah Jim no, has a, it has an effect. <laughs> yeah, the original so funny. Go ahead. Sorry, good. Uh, I was just about there to say go. the the intro text for Fallout One. Uh, a war, a war never changes. The Romans waged war to gather slaves and wealth. Spain built an empire for its lust of gold, uh, for gold and territory. Hitler shaped a battered Germany into an economic superpower. But war never changes. In the 21st century, war was still waged over the resources that could be acquired. Only this time, the spoils of war were also its weapons, petroleum and uranium. For these resources, China would invade Alaska. The U.S. would annex Canada and the European Commonwealth would dissolve into quarreling, bickering nation states, bent on controlling the last remaining resources on Earth. In 20, uh, 2077, the storm of, of World War would come again in two brief hours. Most of the planet was reduced to cinders. And from the ashes of nuclear devastation, a new civilization would struggle to arise. Like, that's the very first text of the very first game. Little, Clearly outlining had, the, uh, the, yeah. the war over resources. You left, to... <laughs> you left out the part of the end where it said, but they would all be doomed to be destroyed by a nuclear bomb in their cities. Yeah, and that actually. And then came the cuck bombs. bombs. It's the only, it's <laughs> the only logical way for their <laughs> cuck tech, new cuck civilization. Cuck <laughs> but yeah, so no, it, really it could be further away. Really, Spoltek wanted to make more money in the end. It, it's yeah. funny to me that that Jim has decided to declare that the Bethesda games are like conceptually vacuous. Meanwhile, the show isn't. Yep. Like, what is the big idea in the show other than capitalism bad? I think like, truthfully, good. like. What is the, what is the big idea here? The yeah, communism good is the big idea. That there's like, two like, type of people in the world: the type that are in range of Hank's nukes, and the type of people <laughs> who are not. <laughs> people who are on live. Go. Uh, yeah. I no mean, seasons Legion. We got the NCR well, that have that... been blown off the map, and then remaining factions, including the Cucks. The Cucks should just be a faction now. Fuck well, it. Yeah, Hank's, yeah. Uh, Hank's range is apparently very, very big. If he just fucking walked to Las Vegas from the yeah, observatory, the, that's something that uh, I did decide to throw into the video, but I was considering it. Was like, how the fuck did he get there? Because yeah, that fusion Fast core cut. flew him all the way to New Vegas. <laughs> like, that is well, smart. Fusion core is without a helmet as well, so he would have had all the bugs and shit in his face, the dust and everything. As he <laughs> that's a funny. He got a, he got a bike man. a helmet he picked up off some dead guy. Sorry. Yeah. So you see, Mahler, if you paid attention to the show, you would know that fusion cores basically last forever, and you can run an entire vault on thus, one for being they, 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 I mean, old fusion fucking for, irrelevant <laughs> like, they, they do actually last for a really long time in the original games uh like in yeah. the well, description of them they're basically infinite in the original games but they made them limited for fallout 4 because yeah. they wanted to give a mechanic to yeah. It. But yeah yeah exactly that's... they wanted it to be a limited resource you had to gather and, they wanted to buff and power so if that's crazy. the case it was a mistake to have it be that like oh if you take away their one fusion core you're dooming them forever 
Well, if they're when... super infinite, then how come we're fighting over like exactly? This, this is what I mean. Yes. This is what I was saying in the beginning. <laughs> Pick your poison. What is the problem? Yeah. Because it's all over the fucking place. They need to figure out yeah. what the actual narrative is, so that I can actually say, right, that doesn't make sex. Oh, uh... Sex, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't yeah. make sex. <laughs> Real <laughs> intel <laughs> shit. Uh, Real. It's just like a video shit. game. Who's the Brotherhood of Steel or a one-hit melee kill from behind? So I, I've I've been to I used to go running in Griffith Park, which is right next to the uh, L.A. Uh, Observatory. So it's pretty much in the center, the center of Los Angeles, or right outside Los Angeles. It is two hundred and seventy-five miles away from Las Vegas. I don't know is is New Vegas right on top of Las Vegas, or is it off to the side? It, it's the ruins of Las Vegas, isn't it? It's, it's right by Hoover Dam. Yeah. yeah. So that's 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 a hundred and one hour walk. <laughs> Maybe you'd be a little bit faster with this power armor and you got and, a little jetpack. You know, jet so you go, it's, a, it's a 12 boom. minute flight. It's really no big deal. <laughs> you know, the ones who changed things from every single game, every single time they did one. It's so unreal well, that you're like highlighting that about limits. those are the fans right now who are most upset with the show, yet you're establishing like, yeah, but it's in spirit, it's the same thing. So you shouldn't be mad. It's like, so why are they? <laughs> Why are they mad? Yeah, maybe. Well, no, it's just because they're all idiots, and I'm the correct one. It's it's like refusing to actually Adam. understand. And if you find yourself well, thinking like them, you're also probably an idiot. So agree with Jim. It, 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 it does feel too. like a uh, a refusal to actually in the in the sense you know you can see it reflected in why is all of your arguments in favor of the show so like weird and vague and often contradictory? You don't want to engage with the frustration because. You want to paint it as a caricature. It's insane. It's irrational. There's no reason why anybody would be mad. Uh, so I have to, and and, and that's that's silly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. he, he, he literally called them Nazis. Like everyone, I don't like his Hitler. It's the fucking meme. It's really fucking stupid. Sorry, just to make sure, did he just say that Bethesda has been shitting on it for years? So it's in line that the show is shitting on the established floor. <laughs> I think Maybe. so. Yes. Because that's an argument I've actually been seeing people say, oh, Bethesda has owned it longer, and they've made more games than the original developers, so this is what it Fallout is now. And I just hate that line of reasoning, that something good can be taken by a different company and ruined for years, and it's just like, oh, this is the way it is now. This is what Fallout is now. I mean, have I they made it. more games? Depends on how you count New Vegas, I guess. Uh... Or what it you is, count as uh, games. If you count mobile shelter, games, it's actual games. Guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And technically, there's two Fallout shelters. New Vegas, or, yeah, New Vegas. They don't count there's yeah, Fallout yeah. shelters. I, I don't count it as a Bethesda game either. Yeah, they tried to rush that uh, shit out, too. Uh, uh, Fallout yes. Fall Shelter was actually made by an external dev. They uh, they yeah. outsourced that one. It was. Well, and uh, there's another. There's also Fallout Shelter Online that's like a Chinese only, even more Skinner Box version of Fallout yeah. Shelter. Yeah. So, how many games have Bethesda made games. free? uh i guess three and then three, the show yeah. if you want to count well, like their impact yeah. on the lore four so they have they haven't made more games than obsidian then yeah It'd be the same amount unless you if you count the vr version of fallout 4 which is a separate product it's, but it's, it's still for it's still the same I've, game I, i've played it it's the same exact game uh yeah i mean technically interplay made two um well no actually no 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 interplay made one two three Four games. Four, yeah, brother. Yeah. So they yeah. are the legitimate. <laughs> yeah, Interplay made four games, and and before you say a and it isn't canon, I think that the the PlayStation Two Xbox game was not super canon, but Fallout Tactics is considered semi canon. I don't know what the hell that means, but there are references to to Fallout Tactics in the later games, so it is yeah. somewhat canon. It's and the Brotherhood then... of Steel one who's been decanonized, right? Yeah, it's not, that's not really considered one, canon. Which, yeah, yeah, none of that footage ended up in my shots because it was not very good. It's kind of I a dumb game. played a bit game. of it, though, yeah. recently. <laughs> it's actually kind of fun, but it's super, super dumb. Yeah. Fallout but... changes. Things rise, things fall. Well, things get nuked by a cock. It's just as simple as that, isn't yeah. it? That's just something that can <laughs> yeah, fucking things, happen yeah, randomly. Things rise, things fall. So, I mean, why bother thinking about it? Why it's such, it's such a really great way. Things, yeah, like... There is no things decision happen. you could ever make in any story that can't just be covered with, yeah, things change. Things happen. Yeah, Events occur. At this point, things if they actually got... Like, if Shady Sands got hit with a protective bubble freezing laser that made it so that they were stuck out of time and no one can affect them in any way, shape, or form by an alien <laughs> force, you'd be like, well, 
that's a change. And then you, I think everyone will be like, what the fuck is happening? Be like, oh, isn't it what you wanted? That they're protected you forever? You didn't know they were aliens when the game is smaller? Oh, I know. Mothership uh, <laughs> Beta? Zeta? No, I was naming. Zeta. Oh, Zeta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obsidian reminded us that the world moved on from bottle caps in Fallout 2 and introduced new currencies before Fallout 3 resurrected them because familiar content. It reminded us that when factions fall, they can be gone or altered so dramatically as to be unrecognizable. These are the things. This has nothing to do with what happens in the show. Unrecognizable again. This is just also isn't. Not a defense. This just has nothing to do with what happens in the show. Defense. Talk about Hank and his specific <laughs> weird <laughs> shit. Once again forgotten, until we had an entire video game dedicated to reinforcing the idea Fallout was a static playground in which Fallout never changes, it just gets more in-app purchases. That's... Why is, and that's not good! But... Nobody, no how, how is that? that? How are we, have to do with that? Are we yeah, how is that being equated or... with the disdain for the nuking of Shady Sands? How are you connecting those two like that? That's insane. Also, Fallout did change quite a lot during the... Well, it's, also, it's, the creators it's, it's of the show said they don't want it to change. It's a very <laughs> difficult thing to reconcile. A big part of why people like 1-2 and New Vegas, as far as I understand it, is that those games actually meaningfully change the world of yes. Fallout. How can exactly. it be that those same people dislike what happened if Shady Shan... Uh, <laughs> damn, alliterate... <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> tongue twister. Shady Shan... How could those people dislike what happens in Shady Sands if they're the people who like that things change? How are you going to reconcile that? Why would they like change except for this one? If you can't. The reason I is think that they the don't argument, like change. I think Sterling's argument would be you only like change if it's good. If it's change that makes everything happier because you can't handle when stories are real. That's not what he said, though. Oh, yeah, no, obviously, but it, like, it, 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 I believe is the intention of the point. I, I don't know if it is, actually. I think it's just saying nonsense. But, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> that's a take. Unintended <laughs> nonsense? Like, didn't even have a plan, Safe just bad, started with... saying I'm just like, To go this hard in defense of a show whose creators said that it can't be Fallout unless we nuke every civilization that advances to a certain point, like, it's amazing to me that you'd want to defend the people saying that. Like, it doesn't matter if it matches the story at all. We just not there, there's a filter, and the writer instead of it being some alien force or the universe, it's just the writers. They've they've drawn a line. Any civilization that naturally progresses toward this line will be nuked. Doesn't matter if it's Hank or anyone else. Something will drop on them, and they will be sent back to the Stone Age every time. Something will drop on them. How it <laughs> hippopotamus <laughs> could be an elephant. <laughs> could be a nuclear missile. Concrete could donkey. Be a Ooh, yeah, worms reference. Yeah. Uh, Not to worry, we'll just, probably, we'll just yeah. scatter it out by yeah, play yeah. pausing. That's how you do it. Yeah. Uh, to the play. Well, I think this. I think you might be safe this, with this one because this is the game one. Not worth risking though. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, it's, it's not, not worth. It's, not it's not worth probably risking, still copyrighted. But... I think yeah. it might still be a cover. Play the Mark Strong version from Kingsman Two. Yeah, it's the, it's a cover of the song, so it would still be copyrighted. Oh, I will say one thing for Fallout 76 song, that it's actually the backs up the TV mm. show. I will say something for Fallout 76 that will back up the TV show. What? Okay. What does that even mean? Okay. I think it's it's for as much as I think that Fallout 76 is bad, I will Excuse use it to defend the show oh. slash Fallout 76. Yeah, yeah. Given half a chance, a bunch of you wankers would nuke Shady Sands. Um, no, I wouldn't. Why? It's Why? A, it's a horrific what? thing. That's the murder of thirty thousand people. Why though? What? I would. Is, I don't. We, is it an appeal to like the, an the megaton this, thing? It, like, like yeah, the fact that people we, would we choose to nuke megaton. In, uh, yeah. But that's Most just. People did not. Uh, that's not. That's, kind of, that's, that's not an game. interest in the definitive canon progressing. That's just gamers messing around, which everyone does. Yeah. That too. Yes. And even, just, well, even there, like most people lives. did not nuke it. Yeah, yeah I mean, most well, people it's... don't play evil most characters. People, most people play Paragon. I think it was like, wasn't yeah. it in Mass Effect that like ninety percent of people played Paragon? Yeah, yeah. At, at least for the like first playthrough, and then they might yeah. fuck around in the second most or third playthrough. Most people will play Paragon. Funnily enough, when you put it in a game where ultimately the consequences are contained within the game, people will still mm -hmm. choose to play as good guys mostly. Yeah. Because it's, Ink you know, was generally more satisfying playthrough, all right? Generally, it's more satisfying. Listen, you unlock more things in Bioshock when you're a good guy, so. Mm -hmm. 
No point in being a bad guy. They should have made being a bad guy way better in Bioshock. Yes, it's, 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 it's a flaw of the first Bioshock uh, game. Yeah. yeah, you get this, like less. Who is you get less Adam or something, yeah. right? Who is this is from uh, He Man, I assume, right? I thought it was, uh, yeah. uh, right. who, this who is one of he? Jim's costumes. It's who uh, is this character? It's the Boninator. He's, he's a funny looking <laughs> character. I'll you. I like it. They didn't have to destroy Shady Sands. But the way they did it was brilliant, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, why? Oh, why is it brilliant? Oh, brilliant? What the fuck? A, a cuck got mad and then mysteriously was it's... able to set off a nuclear device in Shady Sands after the it is Fucking Just brilliant. Like in real life. It is like one yep. step adjacent to it got nuked and we don't know why. <laughs> like, it's, mm -hmm. it's about yep. that. Like, what? Yep. We barely understand why this happened. And the reasons were equally so. Obviously, you may disagree on the subjective matter the of good visual. storytelling, but let's... Well, what's the, the point of this whole matter fucking matter video, of then? Just be like, mm -hmm. just say, I disagree. <laughs> like, just be, we're gonna make reasons or not. I disagree. <laughs> let us at least say that the destruction of any location in a story set years after the last visit to a violent wasteland is at least on the table. No, it isn't. Uh, it's... So, you would have to start inventing bizarre... Like, hypothetical situations to get me to blow up a city of 30,000 people. Well, how do you go from saying this is a really, really awesome, good choice that I'm fully informed with, and then you go to, it's on the table? Like, I of mean, the I could options. Have said something like, a fa like, maybe a faction of the Legion got a hand on, got a, hand on a nuke or something and then choose the nuke. Well, that's sense. kind of, that's the thing, like isn't something it? Something like that, but it would, yeah. If it's uh, a really, really, really good decision, you'd think there'd be countless things to say about the quality of this decision, the substance, yeah. the nature of the characters involved, and the mechanics, and the you know, all kinds of civilizations that may have been involved in all of this. There's so much yeah. to say about it. It's like, no, no, it's just they it got nuked. And it's like, okay, well then, I, you know, it's like, it's on the table. It's like, you, you're telling me it's, yeah. it's not impossible. It's like, fine, I can concede that, but like, why was this the choice? And you've given me nothing. Yeah. Basically, because things uh, happen. It's a wasteland. Bad things happen in a wasteland. Sometimes you... you you wake up, go to work, and the city blows up. You know it happens. <laughs> you know, also, I want to. I want to. Um, you just want to yeah, say the yeah. same all the time. Yeah. Loser. Yeah, I, I just want to yeah. clarify. By the way, I don't think the Legion would actually do that. Like maybe a faction within the Legion, the who don't follow Caesar or like or wants to overthrow, well, C thing, overthrow right? Caesar, gets a hand of it, and yeah. We were talking about it earlier, like, but the, if the show began with Lucy escaping, then she discovers this has happened, and then the rest of the season is an investigation as to how this happened. It, let's say it happened, like, recent-ishly. I don't know how she's here, if you know, the radiation. We'd find a way to write around that, but if you have to, and then, you know, the more you discover about all of the nature of everyone who was involved, and we get flashbacks and stuff, it's like, you could probably make it a lot better and more interesting than episode 8, Hank did it. Why? Mm -hmm. He was mad. Yeah. There's yeah. seeds. There's seeds all over too. Like pretty much any line from uh, New Vegas, or especially the DLCs, are way more thoughtful and kind of more thought provoking. Yeah. Than anything in the show. Like there's actually conversations about how Shady Sands was kind of hypocritical. Like even uh, Kaiser, the leader of the Caesar's Legion, he even talks about how as much as they're kind of a, a democracy and trying to bring the old world back, and you know people have a have a share of voice and everything in the in society. He also pointed out that Tandy was basically president for 60 plus years. She was basically a dictator after after creating this society that's supposed to be a republic, right? So there was definitely some things you could pick at. Maybe mm -hmm. it was a really good idea that turned out to be basically kind of corrupt or there was other issues or something like that. Like you can you can bring up all these different things. And, and one of the yeah. LCs, I think you have uh, Ulysses brings up a bunch of interesting things about how these different factions were carved out from the old world but you can't really address this new world with the old world solutions this is a completely different ball game basically he said a lot more interestingly than that but there are a lot of different angles you could attack this just to make shady sands universally good but it was bombed by universally bad guys just the most boring way you could do it yeah the the ncr wasn't really perfect in the in the earlier games they certainly had a bunch of problems but probably the best option out of what you had in the in the universe yeah, I just, I just, I'm still stuck on the fact that Hank blew them up, but no one else. Yeah, like, like the Brotherhood, yeah. right? Brotherhood's yeah. a much bigger threat. Than the them. the ostensible reason is like, no, we need to keep it a blank slate. But it's like that's you haven't accomplished that even a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's hey, also he, incredibly 
frustrating if you know the lore of the games because they equip a lot of the vaults with gex which are basically like yeah the yeah, garden they... of eden creation kit which is basically uh, is all everything you need to basically recreate the crops the the landscape and terrain and resources you'd need to restart civilization that's how it's yeah. described so creating factions and groups of people that aren't yours they'll mm -hmm. be against you that you're gonna have to fucking nuke again yep it's so <laughs> exactly. stupid i hate it yeah, like I mentioned before, they have hundreds of vaults all over the US. And they will all split into different factions after, you know, they Listen, get out. Guys, we gotta win the game of capitalism yeah. by eliminating factions. And then the way we're gonna do that is through, through the spirit oh. through the spirit oh, no. of competition, we're gonna throw every idea at the wall for a vault and see what sticks. Oh, yeah. seen, no, um, I just I'm very smart. I've seen the suggestion right. that that's why Sterling's so in favor of the show, regardless of how shit it is. It's just the the call message being so anti-capitalist. <laughs> I don't even yes. think you could call it anti-capitalist as opposed to anti-something that they made up that was insane. <laughs> like it was, I mean, that's that's, that's what they think right. capitalism is. Yeah, that's what it's they not think. Accurate, but... <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes for a certain kind of person. Yeah, I just realized how another stupid thing the show did. I'm looking at the wiki on the Garden of Eden creation, Garden of Eden creation kit. Uh, in reality, <laughs> it was a more modest tool. The kit included seed and soil supplements, a cold fusion power generator, oh. matter energy replicators, <laughs> atmospheric chemical stabilizers, and water purifiers. So nice. I guess I know what this means. Moldaver created the Gex. <laughs> you know, know for a fucking fact, the, the writers were... Remember that quote where the, um, uh, the showrunner said, you know... I think we were just guileless, uh, guileless enough. Like we were, we would, we were just unaware enough of what kind of job we were taking on to take it on. Like that's some honest shit yeah. right there. Like yeah. we, we didn't know what we were dealing with, but we knew it was an opportunity. It's like, yes, it was. Thank you so much for taking it instead of letting someone else who's more, far more suitable for it take the job. <sighs> yeah it's it's completely the uh what is that the um dunning kruger effect where they didn't they didn't know enough to know that they know nothing well basically <laughs> what i'm trying to highlight with that is that he seemed to know that he was not quite right for it but fuck it <laughs> <laughs> why not right or maybe he already knew that once they'd completed the whole job which is like well better late than never eh let's agree that it's okay for things to move on yeah that's it but it's, it's okay for things to move on <laughs> why do you think they like Fallout 1, 2, New it. Vegas? Things move on in those. So why why are they like that and not the show if the show does that? The show doesn't do that. Fucking lie. It's just so they can have their perpetual wasteland bullshit. I... Oh my god. Exactly. Yeah. And we have to have it in California. We can't have it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. They should. It's absolutely ridiculous that in thousands of years, Tamriel hasn't changed. That has nothing to do with anything yeah. that we're currently totally talking irrelevant. about. <laughs> and in a way, it's a shame that the Elder Scrolls developers did get Fallout, because as soon as they did, shit... <laughs> Sorry, in a way, it's a shame. In a way. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I see. guess. Yeah. It stopped changing there too. I'm well aware I have axes to grind with Bethesda, some professional, some personal, but they do make good playgrounds. Genuinely, I don't mean that as it is. They make fun playgrounds. Yeah. I'm just happy they that the TV show play. remembers that Fallout is absolutely capable of more than that. Isn't this so weird? It's almost like a gas line of like, this is our point. What are you doing? Get out of here. Yeah, see? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah, the dog goes. <laughs> yeah, Down, Regs. Down. Just like the, <laughs> the video eventually progresses to say, you know, all our show's terrible. <laughs> and we're like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I, I think he's trolling here because uh, it's going to piss off a ton of Elder Scrolls people who know all the lore. I don't know the lore, but there is actually a very good reasoning why fantasy uh, settings don't progress the same way that realistic settings do. It's because magic is kind of like a, a substitute for technology. Why develop medicine when you have healing spells? Why develop uh, fusion or uh, combustion engines or electricity when you have, uh, you know, light magic or fireball or whatever, right? So there's actually kind of a supplementary. It, it almost kind of replaces technology in a way. 
and there's, there's another reason settings. there's another reason too is that a lot of fantasy settings are like medieval you know they're they're more ancient or archaic settings where the progression of technology was actually slower than it is today like it, yeah the progression of technology has accelerated quite a bit so like the change between like i don't know like a thousand ad and 1100 ad is quite a bit different than like 2000 and 2100 you know what i mean like, yeah, the only problem though it, is like there's been thousands and thousands of years in the Elder Scrolls timeline. There are a lot yeah. of years passage. So it, why it was okay, well, fair like, enough. Uh, yeah, the the low high fantasy settings, like in low fantasy, it does it's not much ma as much of an argument if like five people can use magic. But you know. and the Fallout world will also, progress faster sorry. because it has remnants of all kinds of technology and knowledge exactly. in it. Oh yeah, yeah. It uh, but, it's all over the place. Like the one of the things that they never want to acknowledge because basically because Bethesda didn't want to ever have to code vehicles, <laughs> but cars, for example, cars have fusion cores in them too. So they should be running mm -hmm. for pretty much indefinitely. I think in Fallout 2, you use them with, you use a uh, microfusion cells to load it up. But no cars. Yeah. In theory, <laughs> no cars. Yeah. You can't have cars, but like you should be able to, it'd be an extremely valuable thing to have a vehicle in mm -hmm. the wasteland. Because there's a bicycle. So spread out. You think so. Yeah. There are a bunch of like biker gangs and shit in the in the Fallout lore. So. I think the the That's Edna mode of bicycle, the like Fallout universe bike. is telling everybody no cars when you're designing your world. Not allowed. <laughs> yeah. So boring. Stephanie here again via the miracle of our award-winning ADR. Mm -hmm. With a point I've been saving for last, a point about retcons. I know some people for watching last. this video have been Thinking screaming, but the they retconned it um, throughout the whole thing. And my answer to that is, so? GG. <laughs> That's that then. Who cares about retcons? Why should you? As soon as you like find yourself saying this, just like, well, that's over then, isn't it? Why do you care about anything? Well, what's the point of even having a conversation? Why even make arguments if you don't care? Yeah, you should have just made a video about how continuity doesn't matter. Just you do should, that. You should have just said, I don't care about retcons, and then we don't have to waste our time with these fake arguments that don't mean anything at the end of the many, day. Many, many such cases. So many of these. The oh, like, oh, I don't, I don't really though. care if they retcon the lore. It's like, okay, well, then why are you arguing about it? <laughs> why are you saying actually the lore justifies it? Be all those it fucking efforts to say that like this was a meaningful progression of the story as it stood before the show happened. It's like, why do you care then? It doesn't matter if it adheres mm -hmm. to con uh, continuity or not. And if you ever want to reward it for adhering to con uh, con continuity, then you sh it should, in turn, be punished. When it doesn't, right? Yeah, Otherwise, exactly. what's the point of the praise? If you don't care about continuity and you praise continuity, you'll be like, but who cares, right? Doesn't matter. Sometimes retcons happen, especially in adaptations. You You've got to develop it for a new audience, possibly reset some things. And in order know. for the universe to just move forward in general, things have to change. And sometimes that clashes with continuity, and sometimes that's what? okay. Yeah, that's called the difference between no, good and bad no, writing. No, bad. When it clashes with continuity, that's <sighs> bad writing. Well, it's like what sometimes things 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 have to change. change. Do you think it's bad continuity? Do you think it's like bad continuity when events happen on Earth that change history? <laughs> well, by the way, it's never happened before on Earth, by the way. It, it is literally never happened on Earth that something has changed, that something and then the has continuity has changed. Yeah, there's no like, such it's thing literally as... not possible. Plot holes cannot exist in real life. In there's the a translation world. of this: was sometimes it? things are just shit, and sometimes they're good. That's what happens. It's like, okay, yeah. things have Thanks. to change, and sometimes uh, do you like it's the, terrible. This is the bonus golden thought that made it into the ADR re-recording. Like, I gotta get this in. I gotta make sure they know yeah, that I think I like, think continuity doesn't do matter. <laughs> it's also just kind of this kind of thing happens with all type of uh, movies and adaptations like whenever there's a historical movie that kind of touches on something that happened in and real life movie. and uh it gets things wrong people get pissed about that too and that's just because it's has a continuity error with reality with what actually happened so it's not it's not how do you know you weren't there all. yeah <laughs> that's true yeah. mr science man i am <laughs> so sick of the argument that Doesn't things matter. have to change and that's why it's going to be the same wasteland as the rest of the wasteland you Makes could sense. just make the change good it's not like these yeah. are forces at like natural forces or laws of logic that just exist regardless of our decisions and our personal wills you could just write it to be good and to yeah. be in continuity instead of throwing your hands up and saying well it's just out of our control sometimes stories are just shit
I mean, the game's never said everything like stayed the same forever. And one thing I absolutely will push back on is um, another memetic tweet or comment or whatever it was that said the writers retconned it out of spite. And I mean... They might have. <laughs> a lot of people... <laughs> only feel so that way. Argument against a that, lot Jim. of people are tossing the idea well, around I mean, that they are bitter against the game that everyone really loves that, that really they didn't make. Vegas it's, that they made yeah, totally yeah, in months. Meanwhile, <laughs> you know... But they like, haven't been able well, to escape the shadow I've seen, in a decade. I've Listen, I've seen Pete Hines chat shit. I've seen Emil chat shit. I mean... These seem yeah. to be fairly low IQ, spiteful we're, people. We're right? dealing with well, fundamentally. We're dealing with human beings, and if you come onto an IP and you make a series of games that are all looked at as the clown ones, and that everyone that came before you were the intellectual ones, and then someone in the middle of yours makes one that's considered awesome and yours aren't, well, I mean, it's, gonna, it's gonna it's gonna have an effect on you. You're gonna be like, hmm. basic jealousy, being like, well, yeah, they were the team, kind of like the B team. They're not us, Bethesda, and they don't have all the resources and time yeah. that we had. And despite mm -hmm. that, they made something that has way more of an enduring legacy. Yeah, that's gotta that's gotta be annoying. I feel like it would be silly yeah. for us to assume it wouldn't at least somewhat affect. I feel like it would affect anybody who adds to an IP and everyone of says course. your edition was fucking shit. You'd be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Words. <laughs> yeah. We will destroy it. According also, to Todd, by the way, it was the ideas of the showrunners to blow up Shady Sands, but they okayed it. So yeah, yeah, yeah they you know. said it was okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah, since I mean, Pete Hines was mentioned again, I did want to bring it up that he used the Space Wizards argument uh, before I posted in chat earlier, but uh, all right, someone was criticizing them for a few lore retcons on Twitter a few years ago. And after a small back and forth, he just says, not interested in discussing how realistic things are in an alternate universe post-apocalypse game with talking mutants and ghouls. Boring! Uh, boring! What a high uh, IQ thing. Boring! Boring! <laughs> boring. 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 boring! Space like wizards! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shit argument. Is... Shouldn't be made. Fuck you. Go away. Uh, yeah, it just yeah. so happens and... the shit argument means I don't have to do more work. You're boring. <laughs> You're boring. I hate it so much. It's the everywhere. Of it's a stupid in argument. This man's hands, and that terrifies. Oh, I see. Shouldn't be, you should be called out all the time. And it's like you can take Super Bad flying, but you can't take him killing a bunch of embryos. Two <laughs> 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 different things, man. Yeah. It's a cloud God, universe. Shut weird. up. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm even more confused by this show now that I know how it was where it was produced. I thought that there was might be a reason why they set it in LA because of the the TMZ. Like if a, if you're familiar with LA productions, you basically have to chart you have to pay more to people if you have to make them travel. So in the if you uh, film within the 10 mile zone around Hollywood, you get to pay them X not much. But if you have them travel outside of that, you pay them more. That's why a lot of similar locations are used in lots of movies because they're cheaper to film in. They filmed Fallout in Nevada, New Jersey, New York, Utah, and in Namibia. Mm -hmm. So, like, they had no limitation of where they could shoot or where where they could set things. They specifically decided that LA was the location. I, I'm not even sure even why you though, just like, even if you shot it in LA, you could just, it's post apocalypse, you can just green screen it to be any way you want, regardless yep. of what, like, no matter where it's set. I mean, Tons yeah, yeah. Like, so, like Vancouver, yeah. and that's not Vancouver. Yeah. It's meant to be like New York or Chicago yeah. and stuff. So my hometown yeah. has been a lot of American cities, and yeah, like yeah. they could literally make it anything that they want, regardless of where they shot or what yeah. incentives there were to shoot in those locations. Yeah, they they shot the the uh, gas station in Staten Island, New York. So, like, they had no limitation of where they could shoot, how they could shoot. They had a lot of money to work with. So whether, I, I, don't, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't even think it matters. Like, whether they shoot in L.A., it doesn't mean anything. Like, it's post-apocalypse, hundreds of millions of dollars, green screen. You can do whatever you want. Like, they could have yeah. shot anywhere. They chose especially, to do it here. Especially if you've been in California, you know that if you drive, like, 30 miles in any direction, you get running into, into desert. Things, so, yeah, yeah you, you can pretty much work with what you got there so they, yeah, they could maybe not have said it in like canada or something but, uh, and but even then like maybe canada, canada was america at that point <laughs> but but yeah like well, yeah, the, the idea would be, no. you could even do that uh, theoretically because in the fallout universe we've suffered a nuclear apocalypse so you'd be in a nuclear summer so there the climate would be warmer because of mm. all the bombs so maybe i Canada's, mean i think it's just safe uh, to say that they wanted to set it in la because they wanted to leverage things that already existed in the fallout yes. world 
remember they wanted the NCR. That yeah, exactly. They wanted to be able to say, "Do you remember this? You remember that?" Um, also, because the they live in LA and they know LA, that's the other part of it. What yeah. you know? What, what write what you know? Post apocalypse. <laughs> <LA. laughs> <laughs> Is that some social commentary for you? That'd be pretty funny, like a, a twist where like, oh my God, what happened here? It's like, you know, people on the ground, you know, corpses, skulls, you, you know, like a weird mutants crawling around and like, you know, completely destroyed dilapidated buildings. It's like, oh, no, well, nothing happened. This is Los Angeles. It's like, yeah. no bombs here. <laughs> <laughs> I write what I know. That's just, it's just sad. But I mean, hey, we're uh, coming close to the end of this video now. Are we? Oh, thank oh, God. Boy. And, um... No, grow up. Not everything is about you. And that really hammers home the point about people that is, sort of... It's not even, like... It feels like there's something ironic in that, you know? Yeah. You grow up. This isn't about you. It's not <laughs> even about whether it's about me. Right it's, now, Jim. it's looking at the broad... So someone actually just super chatted saying, regarding the spike point, Avalon did propose the idea of Obsidian making more Fallout games to Bethesda, and they declined. FNV was very popular and successful, so why do you reckon they did that? This is what I mean. We'll never know, even if they explicitly stated, we were spiteful, like, you, you can never know it because you're not inside their heads. But looking at all the information, feels like they probably but, were, yeah. somewhat. Well, yeah, why would, you, uh, why would you just turn down an opportunity to release more games that will make more money and be well-liked? And why it's not about, like, turn that down? there's nothing to do with me. I'm not, it's not about me at all. I'm just, I'm just thinking about, like, the nature of how this all came to be. It's a very interesting scenario. Mm -hmm. We were so lucky to get New Vegas, considering the, the timeline of events. And it's so cool, oh, because I, it's like I, an exploration of a hypothetical. Like the, the retort to this is, uh, talking about how the Fallout show sucks has nothing to do with you either. Yeah. So what, yeah, it's not all about you when we're talking about the Fallout show and what we think about the writing. Not only is it not about you, but it might not be about your weird, like, obsessions and things that personally make you <laughs> pissed off. Did, about the person, world, like about, a... so, you know, political commentary in, in media analysis or things like that. Like, sometimes it is just as simple as people want to have a conversation that you're not interested in, that you're kind of not, that you're not really ready to even seemingly have the conversation about, like, writing and consistency and coherency. And that's fine, but chill out. The, this person, though, is attacking the maturity of other people in a room surrounded by Sonic the Hedgehog toys, wearing a Vault Boy mask and a dog Well, hence color. the irony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look at the consumerism on display. Like in the, there, there are no mirrors in this room. The rampant, I, uh... utter appreciation for this Amazon, Microsoft, Fallout show that's absolute piss as well. It's just funny. <laughs> I cannot express my individuality in any way other than uh, merchandising other than from pricing, products. Yeah, yeah. From, Am from the joint production between Amazon and Microsoft. That's <laughs> like two of the largest corporations in the world. I do find that so funny. Ugh. Like, uh, ah, yeah. yes, the the Fallout show with its, its scathing social commentary on capitalism as created by the biggest companies in the world yeah. by way of market capitalization. It goes, it goes to show how amazing capitalism is that you can make a lot of fucking money by criti criticizing capitalism. <laughs> Obsessed with the story behind the show as a product? Of course we're obsessed with the story behind it. We want to know how the fuck this happened. Same with the games yeah, that go like, to shafts like people of shit. Are, uh, and just like some people are interested when it's good shit. Like why people want to know mm -hmm. how Lord of the Rings came together. You can't exactly. fault people for being interested in how things are made. It's a point of marketing for a lot of media to sell people on. Hey, you want to buy like the DVD so you can get the behind the scenes on the making of and everything? Yeah, Can't some of those are really amazing, and that. they give a lot of insight to like how how these things exactly. Are made. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we want to know how it happened because we don't want it to happen again. And then when we see the same people are hired <laughs> to do all the same shit again, we're like, great. So we're getting another one, and then it comes out, and you go, oh look, it's shit. What a huge shock. As opposed to a story, which is what the writers actually did it for for their story. Um, it, it, like, you, 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 the implication here, of course, being that we wouldn't have taken this for what it was at first, which is, I feel so unique in this situation, being so utterly untethered to any notion of any particular thing with Fallout. I think Cap feels similarly on this, like, just watching it as a TV show and being utterly, like, disappointed. Because I was told how, how good yeah. it was, you know, and just being like, well, and then the more and more that I find out, the worse and worse it gets. It's just funny to be like, you didn't go in neutrally hoping for a story. It's like, stop talking about me. You don't know me. <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>
not to get under your skin. The arrogance of that is off the charts. Uh -oh. Speaking of which, oh, are, are, we the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> are we arrogant? Are we arrogant? Okay. The oh, irony, is off you, the could, you, could bottle it. you could bottle it and sell it in little bottles and then spread it on toast. <laughs> oh no. I like to think it, that yeah. irony, irony is like, I don't know, a yellowish, a greenish yellowish kind of like color. Paste. You know? <laughs> I don't yeah, want to use anything like coming out know. of Jim. Thank you very much. Is it, a, no, it, is it it's, like a it's, goo it's, yeah. sort of consistency, or is it? A... I, I think it, I think it is viscous. It's not. It's not like my goo. Uh, my goo is not ironic. Ah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a different type <laughs> of goo. Ernest goo. He's wanting to make sure. <laughs> yes, that's a very fun statement in isolation. It my is, goo is not it ironic. Is <laughs> it's not. It's Ernest. It's pretty good. <laughs> to get under your skin. The arrogance of that is off the charts. Speaking of which, thank God for me. Oh, okay, right. Oh, you, yeah. <laughs> That's you're, that. You're oh. really talented yeah. at stuff. I don't know, what a worthless video. <laughs> like, pretty much. Some... so bizarre. I think it's interesting value right? only yeah. in the sense that it can be a bad example. Well, yeah, interesting in representation of the others. absolute cope that's happening. Like, first of all, yes. finding some of the worst and most crazy arguments that no one's fucking making. Way simpler and way easier to break down the Fallout show how f fucked up it is. And then the, um... I don't think I saw many people defending the the nuking of Shady Sands as like this amazing story choice that everyone should appreciate for the, the substantive depth of storytelling that they achieved here. It's like, what are you talking about? Bold, gripping, emotional change that you didn't appreciate that they talk about in past tense a couple times and then say it happened because some guy got pissed off at his wife. And then just the, uh, the desperation. And a lot of the arguments being... Uh, a sort of defenses that are actually just positions that I would say people on this side of the aisle hold, rather than, you know, being like, you guys just didn't want anything to change, which is explicitly the goal of the people who made this show, and that nuking Shady Sands is indicative of not wanting anything to change. You're pushing it yeah, back. Yeah, because everything the needs to stay as a chaotic, um, never evil, like, a, a perpetually chaotic, uh, apocalyptic landscape with raiders. That and and like mutants and ghouls and stuff running around. No, no evolution of the. It's it's just crazy. I think what was the most fascinating about the video was the is the fact that um Sterling felt compelled to make like real arguments for how you could see the destruction of the NCR play out and how that would be meaningful, but the fundamentally irreconcilable with what actually happened, which was a guy got big mad because he got cucked and he blew it up. And we, and yet the arguments were still along the lines of well you know the NCR was stretched thin and they and they were struggling <laughs> to govern their own territory and stuff like that. No, no, it wasn't that. It was the that the yeah the political climate and the destabilization of the things happening and stuff isn't fine. Because I mean, I feel like it's pretty straightforward. It is incredibly lame for a, a a place that existed in the Fallout universe that was kind of like the epicenter of um of a of a faction that invites a lot of interesting questions and saw saw the progression of the world that the appearance that they get to have in the big budget Fallout show is a hole in the ground because somebody got mad and and maybe somebody in real life got mad as well about about people <laughs> liking the old games in New Vegas more, you know? It's just it's just it's so lame. It's so obviously lame. Yeah. And that is the saga of the Fallout show for now. The apocalyptic fallout of its reception. Uh, I think I've been viewing plenty of it, like, falling apart pretty quickly from a lot of people's perspective. I think I by the time... I kind to this show. Yeah, by the time the second season rolls around, I don't know if, how many people are going to be as positive about the show as they were with the first season, and then I feel like third season's just going to push it way too far. I don't know how fast they're going to be bringing these out either, but... Um, I, I can't see season two being better than season one. Like it's It'll be interesting to see what happens first. to the budgets, too, to see if they keep them as high, or if because most of the entertainment industry is kind of going through some turmoil right now, they might want to start tightening up Fallout. the belt a little. It was really successful, which makes me... I mean, I think... Dude, I don't think Halos... Halos has not been renewed yet for Season 3. You know, it's like, Still. yeah, that's a case. Oh, yeah, good good luck. I, I don't mean that. I, I don't want a third season, but, you know, like, good Ooh. luck on getting a... Good, whereas in this case, it got renewed straight away. They're probably going to get, like, a comparable budget, maybe even more money. But, you know, it has happened that successful shows have gotten less money. I mean, you know, The Walking Dead, right? Season 2. 
on a per episode basis, those episodes had a lower budget. Yeah. Um, then season one, even though it was the most successful show that the network had ever had. So, you know, I got Frank Darabont to walk away too. Uh, no, he two. tried, no, he got fired. Uh, he tried to make oh, it really? work and then they, yeah, he got fired. So huh, I, yeah, I thought he was gone it. at the end of season one. He was working on season two. Yes. He wanted to try oh. and make it work despite all of the difficulties. Uh, and then he it was got his fired. baby somewhat, right? Cause um, he pulled in so many favors. Yeah, he pulled in so many people from, uh, f- crew members, former cast members, got them all together. Um, I remember it was, it was a Sam Witwer was doing like an interview and explaining, he basically got together a crew that would make the show for a lot cheaper than it would be made typically, but it was because everybody wanted to work with Frank Darabond. Yeah, and Sam, yeah, yeah. Sam yeah. Witwer and a bunch of the people in Walking Dead were all in the mist too. That's right. Yeah, and yeah a whole bunch of people. Um, I suppose the point being that, yeah, you know, just because you get renewed for a second season because you're really successful doesn't mean you'll get more money. Though, I mean, it feels like there's got to be, I don't know, how, how can so much money be spent on, on things that are not like Fallout that don't get the kind of traction it gets? Like, how much money gets spent on, um, well, I mean, Halo, right? Like, how much money got spent on the show? Too much. The only, uh, it's too much. much. The, the only reason I, I see, like, maybe a, that they wouldn't get as much money is because there's, a like, a broad contraction happening in the entertainment yeah. industry yeah, right now. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. It also happens when you kind of use the first season of a big new franchise as like a kind of like getting your foot in the door. Like that happened with the uh, Daredevil on the end of the Fenders. Apparently they spent more on Daredevil season one than like any of the other shows by a long, by a big margin. By the time it got to like Luke Cage and uh, uh, what was the Iron, the Iron Fist, Iron Fist. And, and that they had like no money at all. <laughs> they had like a fraction of the original budgets that they were giving to Daredevil. They were like, you could tell that they were really lame compared to even uh, if you watched uh, the Punisher. Just the you could tell that they were their budget was not nearly as big. They were oh, kind absolutely. of stretching footage out and and cutting corners and a lot of conversations in empty warehouses for some reason. It's like, huh? I wonder. I wonder why that is. The Batwoman, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So many so many empty warehouses in Vancouver. <laughs> oh boy, a gravel pits. <laughs> Oh, those gravel yeah. pits, man. You can just drive out. Oh, you dude, just remember drive, at just the end of there. Crisis on Infinite Earths where they had to yeah. find a construction site like in downtown Vancouver? <laughs> remember the, the quarry just, in Obi-Wan Kenobi that felt like a fucking battle? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. It, it is, it is uh, a little bit surreal, the amount of money that's getting thrown around on some of these, some of these projects, and yet, and yet the results... Crazy. Just a friendly reminder that whatever the reported budget is, it's almost always more than that. Yeah, marketing. Yeah. Marketing is a huge factor. No, not so, even not even just the marketing. You can you can tell this if you go if you go look at the uh, leaked Sony documents from the hack back in whatever year that was. Um, if you you look at the reported budgets and the actual budgets for every movie they made, basically the actual budget was almost always more by at least like a million. Uh, creative so. accounting is really tricky that way. That always almost costs more to make than they say because they don't want to make it look like a flop but they always write things around in a way to make a movie as little like uh as far as their counting is concerned as least profitable as possible wasn't it i think i saw a tweet from james gunn saying that uh one of his like indie films was one of his most uh popular most successful movies including the guardians of the galaxy because of creative accounting i want to i want to say that was james gunn maybe slither or super Something like that, because because basically the accountants at Marvel were like, oh, well, this, 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 that, that, and that happened, and therefore, oh, we didn't make any money. Oopsie, I guess we don't have to pay royalties. So I think that was, I think I, I could probably find that tweet somewhere, but yeah, it's 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 really slimy. <laughs> Ugh. Well, um, the original intention was to actually have a, a cap on this stream that was going to be pretty close to what we're at now. I just didn't realize that that first video would take us to four hours. Uh, it was only 13 I minutes. I had a feeling it might. So um, it never a, happens. We're probably not going to be able to reach subject. the uh, the second one, though. The second one was not going to be as, uh, as as spice ready. It was it was more so just a look into what the majority of people got out of the show, which, to be summarized relatively quickly, is more so a. Uh, it was fun. I had fun. It felt like the games that I play, and that's good enough for me. And leave it alone. The main thing that I thought was interesting was the there's a claim in the video that um, it's like it's there's not much story and there's loads of references, which is absolute bullshit. And it's like, well, but that is what it is. And the 
I was going to open up a conversation of the nature of like fan service recognizable things that when you have them and you have a really good story, it like you wouldn't say it's just jangling keys as much. But if you have them and the story is there, but it's really bad, it feels much more like it is fan service trying to deflect. Um, but then you have something like Mandalorian yeah. that feels like it's there in lieu of the fact that they have no fucking story to tell. Because the Fallout show is trying to tell somewhat of a story. It's very thin. It happens, yeah, it's thin you know, and slowly. Terrible, but yeah. it is a story. So, like, would you say that the Fallout show is a good example of trying to key jangle to keep you distracted? Or would you say that's just a byproduct of the fact that they didn't know they were writing something so horribly bad? I think it's bad? a byproduct. Yeah. It doesn't seem specifically constructed to distract from a story. It just thinks that it has a story that was worth telling. And they were I, mistaken. I think... Yeah, I think the people writing this were trying to write a Fallout story, whereas the, the Halo show seems to me like it was never supposed to be a Halo show, and they it begrudgingly had Halo references. In. Yeah, so like they said, some of the guys down in whatever that they play some Halo games, they can do some Halo stuff. Just make and sure you can put tell that our green story armor for adults. in there, and it'll be fine. <laughs> A lot of the references in the Fallout show feel a bit more like, oh, this is just going to be a fun detail for people to notice if they care. But in the final episode with the Death Claw and New Vegas, that felt like, please, please be interested in where season two goes. <laughs> that felt a little desperate to me. Whereas Maybe. like seeing an Assault Tron in episode two or whatever didn't feel the same sort of, <laughs> didn't have the same sort of cloying desperation. I still find that funny, though. Like, look at that. It's like, yep, that's that. <laughs> yeah, there it yep. is. Uh, that's a thing from the yeah. game. I'm looking at, I, I looked at it on my screen when I play the game. Now I'm looking at it on my screen when I'm watching a show. Well, I mean, I Arcane... Right. This thing I know, hooray. Arcane and Edge Runners, I think, did that very well in two very different ways. Whereas there was a lot of reference to League of Legends stuff in Arcane, but it very distinctly took place in its own universe that wasn't specifically the game universe. Whereas Edge Runners could easily be, or I mean, it is because it's referenced in some side quests, could easily be Cyberpunk 2077 canon. There's a lot of direct references to even tech working the same way it does in the game. But both of those things still have a story that they're telling. So, like, I, I don't know why people think that if you jangle keys, you can't also write something good. It's impossible, yeah. It, yeah, it feels <laughs> like, um, uh, it kind of reminds me, I, I don't know how this show is written, but it kind of feels like they just put placeholder insert game reference here kind of things like we'll figure it out later. It kind of reminds me a little bit of this actually happened. The, uh, the latest, uh, well, not the latest song movie, but the one they made before then spiral. They actually, uh, famously, I think, I think, uh, YMS covered this one. They actually, uh, wrote in placeholder insert trap here into the script, like for the actual, sh uh, shooting script, they didn't actually have a, a, a trap that was actually figured out they just said oh just just figure out some sort of trap here not even considering the idea that traps are actually should have should be thematically tied into the story in any way they're just like they're just a gory scene that people like to see and we've got to put them in there it almost felt like that they probably just kept that sort of thing like oh we're, we're telling a story at a bobblehead you know show a robot broken down here oh maybe the skull down here is a death claw that's enough like just as long as you paste those references throughout the show, it'll feel enough like Fallout to trick people into thinking it is. Well, it worked at least for now. But well, yeah. even now it's diminishing returns hardcore. But we'll see. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us. We'll uh, start with Mr. Kretosis. What are you up to? Where are you? Where can you be found? What videos are you making? Possibly on the Fallout show. <laughs> uh, well, my uh, main channel is Kretosis. Um... I do gaming streams on there because uh, I'm a VTuber, but I also do scripted videos, of course. I'm doing at least two videos on the Fallout show, one talking about uh, the retcons and somewhat the state of the fandom where you've got a lot of people excusing bullshit with dumb arguments like, oh, there was a, a reference in Fallout 1, a, an Easter egg with talking Brahmin. Therefore, Fallout has never been grounded or serious. Uh, I'm doing a, a full breakdown video of the Fallout show, and yeah, I'm working on several other projects that need to be finished as well. Beautiful. Um, you're gonna conclude at the end of it that the, you maybe were too harsh on the Fallout show. <laughs> it's like a hit. <laughs> yes. 
Your hissing says more than I... real words ever could. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this show so much. Well, don't worry. They're making a second season. It's going to be great. <laughs> Kill me. Capital opinions. What are you up to? What are you? What are you doing? What's happening? Is it devs? Oh, uh, you see, I'm working on uh, the next episode of re- of a review of a show that everyone is just clamoring to see more of, and that is Alex Garland's Devs from like five <laughs> years ago. So, should be fun. It's a fun show to talk about, not a fun show to watch. But uh, stay tuned for episode five review eventually. It still feels surreal that me and Rags watched hey. that. I can't. Yeah, yeah it's like. Has, what a fever dream looking back on it. God, I fucking hate that show. Yeah, what we hate it. From the first episode, we were like, oh. Yeah, yeah it's terrible. terrible. It's terrible. So if you if you want to go like see a breakdown of a show you've never seen, but it's really bad and fun to talk about, go check out the devs reviews on my channel. It's Alrighty. like no other. That's, that's for certain. Very it unique, is like yes. no other. Very true. I do feel like you have an interest, similarly to me, somewhat of uh, chronicling the fall of Alex Garland and the, the huge reveal at the end is yes. apparently he never fell. He was just terrible. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just exactly. Well, he has, he's had a couple hits. I like well, here and there. Gotta give him those. It's making me think, do I need to go, do I need to rewatch Ex Machina? Is it no. actually really shitty? And I just didn't notice. It's not. It's still no, pretty it's good. it's really good. It's I a really good movie. movie. I yeah, it holds Ex Machina, up. and I, I really like Dread, too. Um, I read but... the book Blend, at the um... beach when I was in high school, and I liked it. What else did he direct? Did I forget. Like Wasn't there someone else? Uh, uh, Annihilation. Uh, Annihilation. No, I mean the good ones, yeah. not the bad ones. There's someone else. That was <laughs> no, he, the only, the only <laughs> thing he directed that's any it. good is Ex Machina. The other ones he wrote but didn't direct. Right, right that's true. Okay. So that would be 28 Days Later and Dread uh, and Sunshine. Hmm. And is he doing, he's connected to uh, 28 Years Later? I believe so. Well, that's going to be a thing when that comes out. I don't know what the fuck. Anyway. Yeah, sure, it will be a thing. Um, Goga, what, are, what's, uh, what can people find about you getting up to in this day and age? You want to give them a bit more information about, because uh, you, you've been around for a long time, but I don't know if you've been on an episode to talk about what you get up to on your channel, so to speak. Well, I don't really do much on my channel anymore. I used to do EFAP memes and <laughs> a few other memes as well. And uh, now I do it professionally for for you instead in yeah. the different movies. So I'm uh, I'm working on that. Um, the war movie arc is uh, is coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you want to mention what the uh, what happened with the with the, what the next one's going to be or not. Oh yeah, what? That's going to be a surprise. Remind me because I I mixed it up on the fucking trailer. It's yep. I said did I say that it was going to uh, be? You... I think you said it's going to be King Arthur next, and it's going to be Sorrow instead. That's gonna yeah, be it's actually Zorro right? next. So. Which, yeah. by the Yay. way, it's going to be fun to see any of these. They're all brilliantly edited uh, and, and wonderfully funny and, and engaging. And, and and you know what? Wacky, right. considering you'd be like, oh, they're covering the new Fallout show. Oh, they're covering this new thing. Oh, this is It's like they're covering Mask of Zorro. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. So, and if um, you haven't seen the trailer for that, I also recommend going back and watching that because there was a lot of fun to do and I'm yeah. very happy with how it turned out. Remind yourself of the schedule. It's all coming. Because there's still people oh, yeah. in the comments being like, I hope they cover this. this, this. It's like, the trailers. Yeah, it's, all of the ones. It's coming. Really good. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, it's lots to look forward to. Still, still not finished, by the way, but almost. almost We're going to get there before the deadline. <laughs> we got this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's uh, it's all going to be done before, before the last one comes out. Uh, almost finished with the Gladiator at the moment. Sweet. Indigo yeah. Gaming, what about you? What are you up to? Are you making a big retrospective about how the Fallout show is awesome? Uh, how'd you guess? Uh-huh. Uh, Traitor. <laughs> actually, funnily enough, because you, you pinged me on uh, on this thing, I actually downloaded some footage for myself as well. I'm going to be, I am going to be covering Fallout, I think, in the next few weeks, hopefully uh, shorter videos. are going to be less than an hour long, which, you know, get your get your booze over with now, I guess. But mm-hmm. uh, I kind of there's there's so much coverage out there that i kind of tried to find a niche that was interesting my niche is just uh talking about the business angle of why the fallout uh franchise failed in its original um ip holders like in, why interplay basically fumbled the fallout franchise before they had to sell it and there are some crazy stories like business like business decisions um french uh companies taking over um losing oh, the rights french. to uh, 
And, and like basically all it culminated in canceling Baldur's Gate 3 and Fallout 3 in the same year, which is hmm. in retrospect truly insane, but that actually happened. So things like that. Um basically just kind of exploring the business angle of that. So it's gonna be kind of called uh, I think how bad business vaulted the Fallout franchise. I might come up with a better title, but that's kind of probably gonna be coming in the next month or so. And I'm still working on my finale of my Cyberpunk TV show or TV sorry cyberpunk miniseries documentary miniseries which will probably come out maybe at the end of the year probably next year that's going to probably be about like three hours long and tons and tons of editing so that's a pretty big one but probably a fallout related video in the next in the near future sweet good stuff you've also got um that video about like how fallout isn't fallout which is uh quite engaging quite good fun if anyone you know, sometimes I like to try and direct people to a sort of particular video that would likely interest them if they were, they were interested by this stream, and I figure that would be one. Very well researched and explained. And of course, uh, with all the lads here, great work in terms of helping me get the, the video made. The uh, Fallout, A World on mm -hmm. Fire. For anybody who doesn't even know it exists, because there are people who watch EFAB who don't hear necessarily about what happens on the other channels, but I do have a video Weirdos. that's all about kind of the stuff we were covering today um so oh yes if it you're interested a, it's um, very good video it's good it's good knowledge to have handy uh for if if you ever talk about fallout or people talk about fallout around you and you can ask them simple basic questions like why did wilzig betray the enclave <laughs> why did moldave <laughs> <You'll> find <laughs> out in <laughs> season 17 <laughs> you know basic underlying foundational plot elements that are completely mysterious and absurd um, you know, it's a mark of good writing to just keep you wanting more, more answers, more later, explanations. No, so it will be great. Mark the cyborg. What are you up to? What have you been well, doing lately? I've been playing a hell of a lot of Stellar Blade, and tomorrow on Metal Commander's channel, we're gonna have Short Fat Otaku Dev as well as Weekend Warrior come on to talk mm. about it. I think Swolepool mm. might be there, there as well. And um, yeah, we've. I think all of us have finished the game at least once. Um, I was a good chunk of the way through a hard mode playthrough, but then I got kind of drawn into Hades. So. But you couldn't. I might you also couldn't be do it. Hades. Couldn't beat it. It was too difficult. Well, Your no, I'll, skills I'll get, weren't up to snuff. <laughs> no, I honestly, I, I autistically started looking for a bunch of different cans, like collectible cans that you can find, not butts, like soda cans and oh. stuff. But in the interest of seeing mm. butts, because you get a really sexy outfit. Wait, I thought, find wait, I thought cans Can, were Cans of boobies, yeah. <laughs> cans are boobies. Yeah. What? Are you no? a virgin? Oh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they feel like a bag of if sand. Right? If your girlfriend goes up to you and says, Mark, no, I okay, need your hands no, on my cans right now. Got it, got it, and then okay, you tell so her to turn around, I, and she's like, I fucked what? Okay, <laughs> okay I, I guess. So cans, cans plural, are breasts, but a can is a butt. Is it? If a, it's a can? Singer. Yeah, she's got a nice can. I don't. That's some Canadian. I don't know. About I was going to say. I don't think yeah, I've ever heard that. I've heard about that. Yeah. This. <laughs> this is why we need to annex. Canada. That's a trunk, not a can. Well, I mean, trunk in yeah. the trunk. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't well, actually, say it's the only remember, slang for a butt. Well, yeah. <laughs> Mark, that we all learned this from the famous episode of The Simpsons where they they fuck with his interview and they make him say, "Her sweet can." I wanted to grab her <laughs> yeah, sweet. Like, can. You admit you grabbed her. It's Jamal. Jamal. What you say in your defense? Mr. Simpson, your silence will only incriminate you further. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't take your anger out on me. Get back. Get back. <laughs> Mr. Simpson, no. You know what? <laughs> may not have happened. The fucking, one of the best quotes of that episode that aged gloriously was when they're interviewing the, the lady who was affected by it. She says, your, 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 cry, your tears could, says more than real evidence ever could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Legendary part, uh, though. Ben the bear. And then, and then yeah. like, I have a no, question. Ben. Goes over to... <laughs> no, Ben. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the uh, oh, and then they have the, the movie as well. <laughs> Where it's just like, no, Mr. Simpson, a cat is a living creature. I, I don't, don't care. care. <laughs> 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 oh god oh, such god, a there was so many... bitch you know episode what, you know what was a really good joke in that episode though god damn the part when they they steal the uh the the gummy and then homer kicks the uh the vending machine to get the the, the buzz cola and then mixes it with the uh i can't remember what it was and then it creates like a massive bomb that he has to yeah it's like yeah. the it was uh, pop rocks pop rocks, pop rocks yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you in hell candy boys 
motion. That reference is Demolition Man, right? Yeah. It's so okay, we'll good. It's so funny. <laughs> that that is that is like uh, season six of The Simpsons, man. That is like taught that yeah. might be the best season. Um maybe. Yeah. I need to rewatch the, so many the good episodes. episodes again. And on that, that note. The clown. Subscribe uh, yeah, to sorry, Marco Cyborg, yeah. Indigo Gaming, <laughs> Go Go yeah, Capital Opinions, and Kritos. Come over, come over to my streams and shame me for being a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Friggy Rags, anything you guys wanted to say before we close out? Oh, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think so. I don't believe that I do have anything to say. So I will pass it over to Fringy the bird. You know the deal. Just working the away, car. working away. Okay, <laughs> be able to, yeah, yep. yeah, working away. Fun time into dungeons. Beautiful. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you guys got a, a two and a half hour video, or whatever, semi recently. You don't need any updates on things that are happening. However, uh, more than likely, you're getting the next War Arc in the next couple of days because uh, we're still figuring out the Halo show's release exactly. It's getting a little complicated because if we start releasing it, it would it would cross over with Acolyte, and I don't know if we should just save it for before. It's kind of confusing to figure out exactly because we don't want to spam the timeline you guys have. We got. Uh, loads of catch-ups mm. that are still coming out. They, they, we, we've got them all scheduled. They come, it, was, it was a gap this week, but the, they'll go back to normal next week. Um, things. Things, things, things. All stuff happening. All things coming out, and I'm continuing. What was funny is I, I got... I was, I was working on a lot of stuff, and then Fallout happened, and now Fallout has stopped happening, so I can go back to working on everything. <laughs> so You will get... Um, well, more stuff. More stuff is on the way. Many such things. Oh, boy. And... Uh, we look forward to you enjoying them all, hopefully. Um, oh my it god, thank you been. for reminding me. I completely forgot. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> also, the, uh, okay. you got you got an extended time for the uh, the plushies, the real BBC ones. I, I completely almost didn't remember. They are, um, they are still available for a little bit of time. If you didn't grab them and wanted to, it, uh, it did get extended. I mentioned on the Stellar Blade stream, I wasn't even sure if they were. I don't know how it works exactly. That I don't get fully informed of all these crazy shenanigans. But um, there extended. will be a link in the description if you're interested. And um, yeah, you can buy them together for a discount. Or you could just pick up one of your preference. Whichever it may be. Uh, a really cute. Yeah, they were adorable. One of them being my apparently yeah. platonic wife. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> we're mainly friends. <laughs> oh, God. Um, we haven't yes. gone all the way yet. Fingers crossed, though. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to everybody who uh, joined us today in the, in the cast and the chat. We appreciate it. And, uh, well, have and a good... And remember, tomorrow is Mother's Day, so do something nice for your mother. Get yes. her a card. Buy her some flowers, you barbarians tell her she's neat <laughs> tell her she's good she said mama you're a don't call her hot just say like uh, you're really you're really nice Wait. why was that the first thing it's, in your i guess mind? it's a it's a good warning to not do that That's... it's not it's it's not yeah. the first thing that came to my mind it's a warning right right yeah, yeah. it's a it's an omen. what not to say yeah get well, her a card do something mom. nice See if she's been talking about something that she's, you know, wanted or been thinking about getting or just, you know, show that you are thinking about her. Yeah. So do that. Do it. Beautiful. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.